sisters help their mom and dad find love again 10 years after their breakup. This is the notorious photo that we were like, our parents like each other. A love story that just led to a second wedding and the entire family is here live to talk about all of it. And real life Caddyshack, a look at the video going viral for perfectly copying the comedy classic. Okay, I guess we're playing for keeps now. So we got that going for us, which is nice. Today, Friday, January 12th, 2024. From Tampa to today, it's my 10th birthday. Surprise, Mom, with a trip to the Today Show. From New Orleans. Shout out to Bacon and Charter School. In Georgia, go Blazers! Celebrating my sweet 16. Kicking off the weekend from Omaha, Nebraska. City Point, Wisconsin. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Aiken, South Carolina, and Starkville, Mississippi. It's Oliver's golden birthday. Turn 12 on the 12. Today's my mom's big day. Back in Camden, South Carolina. Wishing you a happy birthday on the Today Show, Grandma. Yeah! One, two, three. Okay, we're back. That's that <laughs> iconic scene from the 1998 version of The Parent Trap. You probably know the story. So twin sisters masterminding the reunion and eventual remarriage of their divorced parents. I've seen that 700 times. At Even least. more than Mean yeah. Girls. Okay, the script isn't just a Hollywood creation. Scott Gady and Julie Shore divorced nearly 10 years ago, but in 2021, their daughters noticed a little spark reignite and a new adventure began. So they're all here live. We're excited. Just two weeks after Scott and Julie celebrated their second wedding. We're going to chat with them in just a moment. But first, check out their incredible story. If you're new here, my parents are divorced, but they're getting remarried. Some might say you'd have to believe in magic if you ever thought Scott Gady and Julie Shore would ever get back together. I started this account in the phase of their divorce where they were very much like not friends, not pals, not vibing in any way. The couple's daughters, Rachel and Caroline, have racked up millions of views on TikTok. How did you meet? documenting their parents' second chance at love. Are you guys holding hands right now? Scott and Julie divorced nearly a decade ago, started new lives of their own while co-parenting. That changed during the pandemic while caring for elderly parents. The family of four found themselves in the same quarantine bubble. My parents were still like definitely separate, but it was, it was nice to see them like getting along. The sisters picked up on something their parents had not yet realized. This is the notorious photo that we call the parent trap photo. We were like, our parents like each other. So Rachel and Caroline began teasing their parents, joking with the mom that she still had deep feelings for their dad. Julie realized her daughters were right. After a trip away, Scott and Julie decided to move in together. One year later, with some consistent encouragement, Scott proposed to Julie once again. What are we doing? We're going to go shop for dresses, and we're going to go... What dresses? Oh, yeah, my wedding dress. And just like the movie's ending, sealing their everlasting love. We actually did it. Yeah, Caroline Aww. and Rachel actually did it. They're here with the newlyweds, Julie and Scott. Guys, this is such a beautiful story. Well, first, how's newlywed life? You guys have been married for how many weeks? Since You're the doing this? A couple no. of weeks. A couple of weeks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's it been going? I good. think really good. <laughs> <laughs> is this super weird, this yeah, whole situation? Yeah, it is a little bit weird. Yeah. But, you know, I think it's the girls just left after being home for like a bit of time. So like mm -hmm. literally we're just now like, OK, yeah, this is it. I took more Mary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is I kind of like how you guys had to be forced together because of COVID. And you guys, let's be honest, you weren't friends. You weren't you, you oh, weren't no. on good terms. <laughs> and yet here you guys found yourself in the COVID bubble together. Yeah. That was um, a super challenging time, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but for my mom, mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure we were staying safe. And she's actually watching right now. So, oh, oh, she <laughs> so she kind of brought you together. So yeah. you wanted to stay safe, be in one place. Mm -hmm. Scott, obviously, you want to be with your girls. So suddenly you're thrust together. Yeah. Rachel, when, like, how did you start noticing that there's like, 
maybe not even just, there's no more animosity. Yeah. Now there's yeah. a friendliness. Wait, is this romance yeah. we're detecting? It wasn't for a while. It wasn't until, I would say, almost a year after COVID. COVID was just when they became, like, friendly with each other, which was new enough in itself. Um, and I would say it wasn't until, like, 2021 that we were like, What's going on here? What, what's happening? Did yeah. you notice or were you kind of encouraging, Caroline? What was the what was happening here? I think if anything, they kind of parent trapped themselves. I think Rachel and I were better at highlighting the differences in the dynamic the second time around, but I think that they definitely got themselves in What this did situation. you notice? What were some of the first things you noticed? Well, I know there was one time where mom was getting all blushy and like school girly because <laughs> Rachel was like, You have a crush on dad, and I know it. And she ran into the other room. Now, <laughs> that was kind of the telling point where we knew. Oh my gosh. Well, Scott, I mean, look, it's, this is not a traditional nope. trajectory <laughs> at all. So from your perspective, what happened? How'd you fall back in love? So part of it, uh, right after COVID, within the next year, my parents had passed away. Rachel graduated from college. Caroline was graduating from high school. So in addition to COVID, right on the tail out, we just had this tremendous amount of time pressured together that kind of forged us into who we are now. I think you guys are probably different than you were back then. Have you noticed like why it works now and why it didn't work then, do you think? Um, that's a whole show, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, like, you know, we say that that divorce period, our separation period is really part of our marriage mm -hmm. and it's made us oh. into who we are today. And that's why it works today. We're, so we're much different now. There's no way we could have been the people we were five years ago. There's no way those two people could have gotten remarried. Mm -hmm. Can you believe what y'all did, by the way? <laughs> Your little social media thing really turned this into a huge sensation, didn't I know. it? It's, it's, been, it's been absolutely <laughs> crazy, but it's it's been so much fun. And it's fun. We have our, our little community of people like rooting for us. How which does is it cool. feel? I mean, it's like, you know, you can, there are all kinds of families. And a yeah. family of divorced parents is still a family. And it's mm -hmm. wonderful when they can get along. Mm -hmm. But your parents got back together and they're married. Yeah. How does that feel? <laughs> it's two awesome. And I mean, like, definitely when they first got divorced, obviously it's more sad at the beginning. But I think we definitely got to a point where they went their separate ways. We were all happy our separate ways. But coming back together, it was clear that they were even happier. And so it was just that's the better. How was that wedding, by the way? Was it pretty amazing? It was, perfect. Perfect. It was amazing. It was, really perfect. Wanted, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. exactly the right thing. Wow. Um, yeah. That's awesome. We we'll keep the videos coming. Scott, Please do. I think you were doing the running man and some yeah. of that video. People want more that. I don't even have TikTok on my phone. I have to go to her phone. <laughs> well, you're a TikTok star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're so happy for all Thanks, of you. Guys. Thank, Thank you so much. much. And I heard you're going to be in town for an extra night. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. We thought it'd be fun if you kind of recreated mm -hmm. the iconic parent trap picture while you're here. You know this one? So guess what? We reached okay. out to the folks at City Cruises. It's a, a kind of a fun experience right here around Manhattan. And we've got a table for four. It's a glass <laughs> enclosed boat. Dinner's on them. So you'll have your nice little dinner. Yes, please do the photo op. Please. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks thank so much you. for joining us. Many, many years of good times. We wish you the best. Thanks. Thanks. All right, it's a super wild card weekend. We started off with the Browns going into NRG Stadium, taking on the Houston Texans Saturday on the 3rd. It's sunny, mild at 3 p.m., 60 degrees. That doesn't stop there. Let's get with a wild card exclusive on Peacock. The Dolphins <laughs> going to Arrowhead Stadium. It's going to be frigid. Two degrees could be the coldest game ever. As the Chiefs take them on, we'll find out. And then let's go to Sunday night, football night in America. The Rams taking on the Lions. Snow showers, winds of up to 30 miles per hour, 12 degrees. That's your big Super Bowl Sunday. It's a wild car weekend, baby. Starts on NBC and Peacock. Peacock and then Nendy. We've got to do the big. Oh, here we go. Where are you guys from? Orlando! <laughs> guys, back to you. Oh, Somebody oh, take Oh, we're on. OK. Oh, yeah. Right. Selfie. We're just doing Andrew. selfies and selfies. Al, thank you so much. How about that? What a crowd. This is the best crowd, y'all. And happy birthday, specific. Happy birthday. Thank okay. you. Oh, oh, we're into it.
Well, we are back. It's like we have a theme show this morning. Yeah. Back with an Inside the Game series as we head into this huge weekend in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the playoffs are getting underway. There's definitely one thing that you are for sure to see on your TV, and that's the familiar yellow line for first downs. Our guy Harry Smith is here with a story behind that high-tech innovation. Hey, Harry. Do you remember TVs from 25 years ago? Absolutely. They were these huge, oh, yeah. big yeah. things, mm -hmm. and people started talking about high def flat screens <laughs> like what's that all about well 25 seasons ago an innovation a really groundbreaking innovation happened in the way we watch football games that changed the way we watch football forever football is a game of forward progress teams with the most first downs have the best records the first down marker is both impetus and impediment Hard to imagine a game on TV without that essential yellow line. If you had to watch a football game without the yellow line, uh, you would either drive yourself crazy or turn it off. Fred Gardelli is the executive producer of both Sunday Night Football on NBC and Thursday Night Football on Prime. 25 years ago, he was the lead producer for the Sunday Night Game on ESPN when the technology of the line was first pitched by a tech startup named Sport Vision. I remember my director was there and we left the meeting and we weren't 100% sold. ABC, CBS and Fox passed on the idea, but Fred and the producers at ESPN were impressed by a secret preseason test. When I went into their truck and saw the yellow line and saw it, you know, in real context of football and the game, it was a no brainer. This was going to be additive for the viewers. The yellow line made its debut in a regular season game week four between Baltimore and Cincinnati, a technological marvel. How hard was it? It was very difficult. Co-founder and CEO of Sport Vision, Bill Squadron. This was our first product out of the gate. And when we pitched it, the main reaction we got was, sounds great, but can you really do it? On the tech side was engineer and sports broadcasting hall of famer, Stan Honey. I've had the incredible good fortune my whole life of to working on really hard problems that nobody solved before. We had to preserve the illusion that the yellow line was on the field. We had to draw around the athletes. They did it by using a highly sophisticated system of chroma keying, you know, like the weather forecast or CGI in the movies. 25 years ago, that meant big technology, really big. In the early days, it was really hard. It took a 50-foot truck full of you know, SGI computers and a crew of seven people. Back then, how many trucks would you have to do a game in 1998? Max two. And there's one truck to do the yellow, the yellow line? line. <laughs> I mean, that's the sophistication you know, behind this innovation. Today, with the addition of high definition and far more camera angles and graphics, an NFL broadcast requires something like eight trucks of technology. But the yellow line graphic is now just this. Really, just this. A fraction of the space from 25 years ago. Bill, Stan, and Sport Vision went on to create the loved and loathed K-Zone for baseball games. And the eye-popping tracking graphics for NASCAR races. Final lap. But that simple yellow first down line on the TV screen remains. All of the successful systems that we did had three characteristics, which is they took something that was really important to the game and that happened a lot and was hard to see, and they made it easy to see. These days, graphic innovation is everywhere during football games. Line of scrimmage, field goal range, highlighting key players. But through it all, Fred Gardelli had one wish. We were sitting there one day and say, wow, if we got a snow game, we could put the lines on the field and people could still see the lines. And I prayed for a snow game. Like, I prayed for years for a snow game. That wish came true in November of 2015. Utilizing that same first down line technology, NBC Sports revealed the yard lines and yard markers. So cool. So our producer, Fred Gadelli, a.k.a. the boss, he thinks of everything. So it's time for virtual numbers. So you can't see him there, but now you can see him there. And that was a fun night. Wow. 
Oh, wow, that's, that's cool. That's amazing. Cool, cool stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's all chroma key. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, it just looks good, though. And, and one whole 50-foot truck is now just a computer. A computer. Stan Honey and said, you could do it on a good laptop. Yeah. Wow. It's such a huge innovation. It yeah, you really can. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Can't cool. imagine it. And for especially casual fans of football, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, that oath, third and five, mm -hmm. that all of a sudden, that means, I can see where it yes. goes. Mm -hmm. I know exactly where hard to see things that are important to the game. Yeah. Yeah. So what about hockey and golf? Oh, the balls are tiny. Hockey. Okay, so it was Stan Honey and it was mm -hmm. the, those guys who came up with the red dot around the yeah. hockey puck yeah. Yeah. all those years ago on yeah. Fox, yeah. Right. and people were like, stop it. Hockey yeah. fans hated it. Yeah. Yeah. Hated yeah. it. Yeah. Ratings went up, but hockey <laughs> fans <laughs> hated it. And now, especially with high def and everybody's <laughs> Got yeah. flat screens the yeah. size of the yeah. you know the, of the building. Yeah. Very cool. You can see, you see everything. those golf drives. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah. All yeah. Great. Oh, thank you. That was right. great. Love you, Harry. That was great. Thank, thank you, Harry. Woo. Behind the scenes in the game. Yeah. We are back, 846, your health. If you are taking part in dry January and have reached the point where you're struggling a little bit, we are here for you. Some motivation, five reasons to stick with it, and some tips to make saying no to that glass of wine just a little bit easier. Our guide is NBC medical contributor, Dr. Tara Narula. Are you doing dry January? I am not doing okay. it, but I heard you are. Well, I'm damp. doing drier, drier. January. <laughs> Trying to, no weekday drinking is the theory. Okay, so first of all, let's go through some reasons, because yes. sometimes you just need to be like, why am I doing this? Correct. Let's go back. Okay. First reason, you say your skin will be glowing. Glowing skin, Savannah. Uh, so we know that alcohol dehydrates. And so by abstaining, you're potentially preventing dry skin. You're increasing the elasticity. You may see less puffiness under your eyes. All of that better for the prevention of fine lines and wrinkles. We know that alcohol can cause dilation of those facial blood vessels, so that can cause flushing. Mm. Also, you can lose volume in your mid face. Um, none of these things are great. And if you have underlying skin conditions like rosacea, psoriasis, eczema, it can exacerbate that. And we know that alcohol is a carcinogen. It predisposes to cancer, and that includes things like skin cancer as well. Wow, okay. So Next, you say sleeping habits will be improved. That is for sure. Alcohol Absolutely. definitely affects the sleep. Correct. So a lot of people think that it's sedating. And yes, initially, it may help you fall asleep. But the problem is it can make your sleep fragmented and really low quality. And it affects the neurotransmitters in the brain, hormones like melatonin that kind of are part of your circadian rhythm and help you go to sleep. It can lead to insomnia. So even though you may fall asleep, you may wake up several times. It can uh, exacerbate underlying sleep disorders like sleep apnea. And it really just messes with the stages of sleep, including REM sleep, which is supposed to be your most deep re restorative part of sleep. Let's talk about mental health because, uh, frankly, a lot of people do reach for that drink to curb their anxiety right. or, you know, they're medicating something. 
but it's actually worse for your mental health. Can you explain how that works? Absolutely. So we know that alcohol affects our thinking, our cognition. And so by abstaining, you may be improving your memory, your ability to perform tasks and problem solve. But as you mentioned, it plays into mental health. So it can make things like depression and anxiety worse. So you may feel that your mood is better when you're off of alcohol. And really what it does this dry January is give you the opportunity to take a step back and see how am I using alcohol? What is my relationship with it? And what other more healthy ways can I do or things can I do to cope with stress, to socialize and relax? By the way, you could lose weight if you stop doing your drink. Uh that's, that's calories, you're not, empty calories you're Correct. not taking. So almost 150 calories for a standard drink. For some cocktails, we're talking like three, 400 calories. In addition, we know that alcohol changes the way you eat. So you may be eating out, you may be eating more impulsively, uh, not such healthy foods, yeah. and just eating more often. And skipping workouts. Let's say you're going to your bar after work instead of the gym. All of this can contribute to weight gain. Yeah, and it's good for your wallet, too. That's money you did it not is. spend at the bar, good doctor. Job. Oh, good job. great. Thank thanks, you. thanks, Carson. Classic. We literally are. Good have cheers. In there. Cheers. A lot of good stuff in there but for people to talk about. Do about. as we say, not as we do. Dr. Correct. Marula, thank you. Carson, All what right, you guys, got over there? We are talking food now. Let's get into it. Yes, chef right here. Game day. we got a menu. The one and only Wolfgang Puck. We've got Byron and his son here. They're going to help us prepare for the big weekend of uh, awesome food for awesome games. This recipe is super easy, and it's coming up next. But first, this is Today on NBC. with today food loves football this morning we're getting ready for the super wild card weekend including three huge games here on nbc and peacock legendary chef wolfgang puck is here his new restaurant karama las vegas opens up next month at mandalay bay he's brought along his superstar teammate and son byron lazaroff puck Byron, good to see you. You're, of course, the director of food and beverage for Wolfgang Puck Fine Dining, guys. Yeah. Uh, good morning. You've been here as I'm early in the morning back here helping Katie out. I know. Never seen a, yeah. arguably the biggest chef in the world cutting his own lettuce. <laughs> hey, I do everything. Yes, so you it's do. It's really simple. You know, if I would be a football player, I would be the quarterback and the defense. You'd be too. the whole offensive Yeah, player. yeah. yeah. <laughs> chef, tell me at home the significance of Karama, the new restaurant. Okay, Karama is really our newest restaurant opening next month in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay. And it's going to be an art to my mother. My mother, Maria, was a chef also. So cool? I thought really wow. to have her recipes and everything. Wow. And we have some Wonderful. pasta Carol from here. Carol means like, you know, a Dear mom. Dear wow. Mom. Yeah. That's cool. An homage. All right. Yeah. So we're going to exactly. start with chef. These are the sliders after the Golden Globes. And everybody's all liquored up in Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, they go, Wolfgang <laughs> gives them. These are the exact sliders. These are the ones. Uh, one. Everybody from uh, Lenny Kravitz to Kenny, Kevin Costner, they were all in my kitchen. And we were all eating uh, the, the, little, the little sliders. Yep. What's Okay. Let's start with the sauce. Let's start with the sauce for the slider. So we have a little mayo here. Yep. Put a little ketchup in here. Some finely diced onions, capers, fresh parsley or any herbs. Okay. A little touch of vinegar, not too much. Oh. And a little touch of sugar for a little oh, balance. Sugar, not salt. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's I'm going to mix that for you, Chef. Okay, mix it. Okay, don't make your expensive suit dirty. No, it's not. And, <laughs> and then we're going to... Rent the runway. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, very good. 
Perfect. You want a job? Yes. Yes. Okay. Speaking of jobs, Byron, you were obviously growing up in the legendary Puck family. You were at Spago. You were probably a teenager doing the dishes. What was that like? Exactly. I mean, it was amazing. And and what better mentor to have at the end of the day, right? I'm watching the bear right now thinking about how chaotic (laughs) it is. What did you learn as a kid in that environment? I learned to just kind of, you know, be quiet and do what I'm told, Smart. honestly. Smart. I hope the <laughs> watching. Which was a Jackson. good way to kind of fly under the radar that for a little like while. Me. That sounds like me and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever she <laughs> does, I, I do. How are you to have your son in the business now running things? And I think it is off. amazing. I wish my mother would still be alive to see that her generation, me, oh. and now the she next generation. Yeah. She sees it, chef. So you got the little, little mini sliders. So what, we have to make 80 20? What do you 80, like? 20. You, 80 20. 80 lean meat, 20% fat because you need the rich. If not, the burger is going to be dry. So then you can make them plain. You can make them with cheese. But the important part is then you have the buns. If you don't, can find little buns like that, like I have here. Little buns, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Little teeny buns. Look at the, the baby buns. Look at the baby yeah. buns. Look at the tiny pickles. Look at the little, look at the little pickles. The tiny no. pickles. Chef, where do like, you get these tiny it's little like pickles? It's like the Keebler house. house. Yeah. You can get them anywhere. So then the remoulade you have over here, yeah, I made a it. little bit. So you put a little bit of that on here. OK. Even I trust you, but I know. No, you. I'll watch the master. OK. <laughs> You'll so, get a hot one right off the grill. And, OK. And, up. Perfect. Put a little cheeseburger on Craig's there. coming in for seconds. Oh, there you okay. go. Oh, so small. Just... Okay, they're so small. All right. <laughs> for you, we're going to make a double one then. Yeah. Thank you. Load it up. Load it up. And then we put the little cornichons on here. How does Lenny Kravitz like his little mini slider, chef? Yeah, like medium rare. On medium rare. Yeah, he doesn't medium like a rare. lot of bread. Yeah. So we oh, only put it carbs. like that. But yeah. you can put a little sauce on yep. this one. All right, and Byron, we got to get you in on here. here. Yep, beautiful. We got about a minute. Let's get okay, this out of here. We got to So we're going to do the classic over here. This yep. is the chinois chicken salad. So I'm going to add in just a little bit Famous of tahini salad, yeah. here. Yep. Already going. I have some uh, rice wine vinegar. You got an egg. Oh, my God. Thank you. You're the best sous chef I could ask for. Just a little Look bit of this. honey, too, huh? Yeah, some pickled ginger. Okay. Beautiful. Oh, and that's get fine. Get this going. Okay. A little bit of Chinese mustard. You were right. Yep. Okay. A little oil. And a little oil, please, if you want to pour that all right in there. All of it? Yep. Yeah. Got it. Pinch Beautiful. Salt. Beautiful. Oh, okay. Beautiful. All right. And we'll get this going right away. How's the salad, Perfect. guys? That's not that really fun. Okay. Nice well, crunch. A little wonton. Yeah. We got the wontons. Yeah. Chef, we can't thank you enough, Byron. Excellent work. All these recipes, today.com slash food. Check out the NFL games, all the action on Peacock all weekend long. Browns, Texans, tomorrow at 3 no. Eastern. We're How back about, after how a little bit. How about the Rams? How about the Rams? How about the Rams? Yeah. yeah. This morning on the third hour of today, let's get wild. The NFL playoffs kicking off with Super Wild Card Weekend. Underdogs, grudge matches, and a deep freeze. Can't prepare for a game like that with that kind of weather. Our man in khaki, Steve Kornacki, here to dish out some cold, hard football facts. Then, a glimpse into the future. The coolest gadgets on display at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. This is wild. Robots, finally, the flying cars, and the cherry on top, ice cream. Plus, actor Maura Tierney is here live. We're going to look back on her classic roles and share her new movie with a star-studded oh, cast. Yeah. And in Superfood Friday, Joy Bauer answering our questions like how to kick those cravings and stick to that resolution. Today, Friday, January 12th, 2024. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, everybody. It is oh. Friday. Yay. Yeah. On the third hour of today, I'm it's out along with Janella, Craig, Dylan. Yeah. Oh, man. And you I, got me excited. I, well, you know what? Well, it's exciting. I mean, I'm not even that big a football fan, yeah. and I'm jazzed about this week. Really? It's, it's, yeah. it is the, because it's football and weather. And it's, it's one sure. of the biggest weekends of the it's, year. Yeah. The NFL playoffs kick off with the, with the super wild card weekend. Can I move this? Uh, <laughs> there are some intriguing matchups and one game that could go down in the record books because of the weather. You were ju- yes. just talking about oh, this yeah. a couple of days ago. NBC's Kaylee Hartung is in frigid Kansas City with more. Hey, Kaylee. 
Hey guys, players say this is the price you may have to pay for playoff football because if you are playing in January when it can get this cold, that means your hopes of winning a Super Bowl haven't been frozen yet. It's about 20 degrees right now, and if you can believe it, it's going to get about 30 degrees colder here during Saturday night's game. <laughs> the landscape in the NFL is shifting dramatically as we all try to brave the elements. The postseason is firing up in the bitter cold as 12 teams look to make it past Wild Card Weekend. And here we go. It all starts tomorrow as the Dolphins leave warm Miami for the icy gridiron in Kansas City. At kickoff, the temperature at Arrowhead expected to be just one degree. And with the wind chill, it's going to feel more like 17 below. That would make it the coldest game in Dolphins history and is sure to impact two of the league's high-flying offenses. Can't prepare for a game like that with that kind of weather, so it'll be new. Touchdown! The defending Super Bowl champs determined not to let the elements disrupt their rhythm. I just say, get ready for the game. Let's do that. I don't really care what goes on out here. You know, we're not having a snowball fight. Wide open. In Houston, a unique quarterback clash. Cleveland Browns' Joe Flacco looking to continue his resurgence, gunning for an NFL record eighth career postseason win on the road, just days before his 39th birthday, while Texans rookie C.J. Stroud aims to become the youngest quarterback to win an NFL playoff game at just 22 years old. I'm really excited to play my first playoff game, of course, and it's been a goal of mine since I've been a kid. But storylines on the field, no match for the shakeups on the sidelines. Just hours after Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll stepped aside after 14 seasons with the team, Patriots legendary head coach Bill Belichick announced he would hang up his hoodie. Robert and I, after a you know, series of discussions, have uh, mutually uh, agreed to um, part ways. Belichick built a dynasty in New England over 24 seasons winning six Super Bowl titles, all of them with Tom Brady under center. The quarterback writing, I'm incredibly grateful to have played for the best coach in the history of the NFL. We accomplished some amazing things over a long period of time. I could never have been the player I was without you, Coach Belichick. While Belichick still has the third best record in league history, his departure comes after the worst season of his career. Still, the future Hall of Famer says he's excited for the future. It's with um, just so many fond memories and, and uh, thoughts that I you know, think about the Patriots and, and uh, I'll always be a Patriot. What an unbelievable 24 hours it was in the NFL with all of those changes. But guys, back to the brutal weather here in Kansas City because that's all I can think about. As much as the players have to prepare for it, doing everything from wearing wetsuits beneath their uniforms to rubbing their bodies down with Vaseline, you know, the fans here, they've got to protect themselves too. Here at Arrowhead, at the home of the defending Super Bowl champions, their attendance has been better than ever this season. But we were told you might expect a few thousand seats to be empty <laughs> as fans aren't ready to be out here with us. And you know we'll be looking for Taylor Swift in the comfort of the suite we typically see her in to see if she's ready to cheer on Travis, guys. Yeah. Wow. She'll be nice sweet. and warm. Thank uh, you. One year I went to a really cold game as like a, a shoot for the weekend today show, mm -hmm. and I tried the Vaseline trick Did it work? where the, the idea is to like trap in your body and heat. then put clothes yeah. over on top no, of it. No, you just wear the Vaseline some of the players do. Oh. oh. Work. Did it, work? it doesn't work. And then trying to put a jacket on after that, I'm like, oh, that, yeah. You saw that jacket. episode of Friends with the leather, <laughs> leather pants. I could do that with these pants. There you go. All right, Kaylee, thank you for that. And that right now sets us up perfectly to talk about all of the playoff matchups. To do that, what do you say we take a little walk? Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Do it. We are going right. over to the big board where yes. we find NBC News go. national political correspondent Steve Kornacki in that. his signature Kornacki. khakis, never heard of course. Never the trick before. Yeah, yeah, I had neither. I know. Well, I tried it. I don't okay. recommend it. <laughs> Kick off with Kornacki. I like that. So let's, I mean, let's start. Let's go chrono chronologically here, Steve. Let's start with the Saturday matchups. What are they looking like? Yeah, no, big week. Weekend, big long weekend here of football and start on Saturday. We will kick off the weekend with the Browns and Texans. You just heard really interesting matchup there between the rookie quarterback, very yes. possibly the rookie of the year, C.J. Stroud. The Texans had no expectations whatsoever this year. They win the AFC South. They will host the Cleveland Browns with the aging veteran who was out of the game, Black came back. Oh. The Browns have had a quarterback odyssey this year. Four different quarterbacks have won the games. But then prime time on Peacock, it is. 
You were just teeing it up. In fact, we've got a special effect. Watch this. Ooh. Okay. The ice oh. balls. Funny. Will it even be above zero for That's kickoff insane. at Arrow yeah. Stadium? Put this in perspective because we've been talking about this for the past couple of days of how cold it's really going to be. I think people underestimate it, but let's talk about, I guess, in the grand scheme of things, how does it rank? Yeah, so that's it here. Uh, Dolphins, obviously a warm weather team going into this. Yeah. Let's see how they handle it. But there have been colder games. Really? There have been four where the game time temperature was under zero degrees. The mm. wind chill oh. even worse. Now, you probably remember the most recent. 2008, the NFC title game at Lambeau Field. The Giants, the big underdogs, mm. the Green Bay Packers, they looked unbeatable. This is the iconic shot of the Giants coach Tom, Tom Coughlin. Coughlin. Looked like he got frostburned oh, during yeah. the game there. But it was worth it, Coughlin said, because the Giants won it uh, in overtime, yeah. made it to the Super Bowl. And, of course, this crushes me as a New Englander to say, beat the unbeaten mm. New England That's Patriots right. <laughs> ended the perfect season. Number three, this was a wild card game in Minnesota 2016. The Seahawks came in there and won. Number two, you got to go back the 82. Wow. San Diego, Cincinnati, AFC title game. They called this one the Freezer Bowl, oh, yeah. which is that not to one. be confused okay. with the famous and iconic Ice, Ice Bowl. Bowl. Yes. 1967, the Packers and the Cowboys for the oh. NFC Championship Crazy. game. The and that frozen was the first, tundra. The original, there it is. Lambo yep. Field. Yeah. All right, what's next? So you take a look. That's Saturday. I mean, oh, I pressed the wrong button there. Let's get to Sunday here. So okay. we got a triple header coming up Sunday. Okay. You got the Steelers. You got the Bills. Two iconic franchises there. Both ending the season. Three straight wins for the Steelers. Five straight wins for Josh Allen and the Bills to make it in. Very intriguing massive. We just talked about mm -hmm. Packers, Cowboys, and the Ice Bowl. Yeah. It won't be too icy yeah. down in Dallas this weekend. But interesting here, the Packers facing their former coach, Mike McCarthy, who is now with the Dallas Cowboys. A lot of pressure on McCarthy to deliver in this postseason, which he hasn't done so far. And then fascinating NBC primetime matchup here. A lot of drama, yeah. a lot of backstory. The L.A. Rams going to Detroit. We don't see Detroit in the playoffs yeah. that much, but this is a fascinating game. Could be a blizzard going on in Buffalo during this game. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, we got a couple of uh, interesting yeah, weather possibilities here. <laughs> and gotta... uh, you mentioned some of the, the drama that could exist in the Rams-Lions game. What about the quarterback matchup there? That, that's exactly it. So let's just take a look here. Rams and Lions, this is the drama. It's the quarterback. It's Matthew Stafford uh, for the Rams now, and it's Jared Goff for the Lions. But the story, of course, was Goff used to be the Rams quarterback. Oh. And the Rams decided you know what? We can't win the big one with Goff. And meanwhile, Matthew Stafford was the Lions quarterback. And quarterback Stafford yes. said, oh, wow, I'm with the Lions. We're never going to win a title here. I want to go to a contender. So they engineered a trade a few years ago. Stafford's won a Super Bowl in L.A. Goff, though, has the Lions. This could be their best season ever, one yep. of their best seasons ever. And he was asked this week about facing at home in the playoffs the team that dumped him. And he said there's not a day that goes by. He doesn't think about oh, it. He's oh, taking yeah. it personal. Oh, he's taking it personal. There's I love that. Drama. All right, so that's we got Saturday, we've got Sunday, the Monday night game. Those skidding eagles. What do we think? <laughs> exactly. And that's the big question here heading into. So you got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They win the NFC South. They have a worse record by two games than the Eagles, but because they win their division, they're gonna host the game. We're not talking about cold temperatures here. But as you say, Craig, the Eagles, they've lost five of their last six. This was a team that looked like it was primed to make a Super Bowl run. And their quarterback, Jalen Hurts, got a little banged up on Sunday, a yep. finger injury, hasn't thrown the ball this week. So big question mark there. And, of course, the Bucs with Baker Mayfield as the quarterback, bit unpredictable. Of the Browns. Yeah, he's been around too. That's yep. right. And they're going to have showers and thunderstorms. <laughs> okay. you got them all figured out. Of course he does. Always. <laughs> Steve, it's always great Thank to see you. Thanks Steve. so much. Thanks, guys. Really hey, good. don't forget, watch wa Super Wild Card Weekend starting tomorrow. Browns, Texans, 3 p.m. Eastern here on NBC, followed by the Chiefs and Dolphins exclusively on Peacock. And on Sunday night, catch the Rams and Lions on NBC and Peacock starting at 7.30 Eastern. First time any network has had three playoff games in one weekend. Wow. I'm glad we're at that number. There yes. you go. Very nice. All right, coming up, some of the best gadgets and tech that's on display at the CES in Vegas. Hologram robots, and we've even got some flying cars. Ooh, we'll Jackson. be right back. <laughs>
We are back with a look at the latest cutting edge gadgets, tech, and so much more. The annual Consumer Electronics Show taking place right now in Las Vegas, drawing 130,000 visitors, visitors all hoping for a glimpse into the future. NBC's Steve Patterson has come back from the future, and he is here <laughs> with the latest. So, Steve, what Hi. was some of the cool stuff? Hi, guys. You know, tech is being much more recognized as a fundamental need. So for my money, the themes this year were mobility and sustainability, all by harnessing the power, of course, of artificial intelligence. But none of that means we didn't have a lot of fun. Take a look. From futuristic flying cars to AI-powered baristas. Perfect for a serene break in time to talking to someone in Amsterdam using holographic presentation tools. This is wild. One of the biggest tech shows on the planet offers a glimpse into the future. I feel lighter. Wearable robotics like these, helping people with difficulty walking, go the distance. It is a mouse for your mouth. The team at Augmental also opening new doors with their technology hands-free. Our primary folks we're working with right now are people with disabilities, particularly severe hand impairments. Just pop in the mouth pad and use your tongue to navigate a smartphone or tablet, allowing you to type a message, even play a game of chess. Much smarter than the night guard I wear every night to bed. With so much new tech giving us a preview of our future, the question is, what will be the next big thing to take off? Hyundai and Supernal unveiling their electric air taxi. The dream is vertical liftoff, allowing customers to skip traffic by calling it up just like an Uber. This is just a mock-up and it's gonna be ready in about 2028 or so, but when it is, get ready to fly around town. The future tastes pretty sweet. It's a Keurig for ice cream. Meet Cold Snap, delivering a customized frosty treat in just two minutes or less. This one is bourbon flavored. Wow, it's really good. Strangely enough, nutrition feels like the newest playground for artificial intelligence. AI is even coming for your plate of food. Forget the fries. NuviLab is using AI to serve up a side of data with your meal, letting you know your calorie intake in real time. And when it was finally time to relax. So it's been a long day at CES. Uh, I'm thinking about ordering a drink. AI bartender Mix Master Moody from South Korea's Dusan knows I like it shaken, not stirred, and on the rocks just by looking at me. It scans my face, reads my mood, happy, and starts mixing. In my lifetime, I'm going to walk into a bar and get in a drink served by an AI sure, robot. Of course. Actually, I think it takes less than five years. OK, you heard it here first. This is very delicious. And finally, the company Handwritten uses AI to copy your handwriting and a robot to pen your letters for you. Is there irony there, though, that people are here desperately mining for the next big thing? Uh, and the next big thing might be a handwritten note? <laughs> yeah. Of course, yes. What's old is new again. A bold statement from a show entirely focused on what's next. So again, about 130,000 people are expected to walk by nearly 4,000 exhibitors when it's all said and done. And it is all said and done as it wraps up tonight. That looked really cool. Wow. It's cool, cool to see what the future holds. Yeah. Flying cars, Although flying I feel like taxis. we've been talking about flying cars for I, a few it, decades. I mean, Did you I'll, see the Jetsons? Yeah. It's Come on. coming. It's coming. Eventually. <laughs> Jane, stop this crazy thing. Steve, <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you Steve. so much. Thanks, Appreciate it. Uh, oh, by the way, we're going to have some of those hot gadgets here in studio with our tech expert, Jen Jolly, oh, next week. Oh, that's cool. That's right. some of those things. All right, when we come back as we prepare to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we're sharing an important and revealing conversation about race with a group of college students. And then later, we can't wait to catch up with actor Moore Tierney. She's live to fill us in on her new drama, talk 30 years now since ER, and oh so much more when we come right back. Good morning.
As we prepare to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. next week, NBC News Now is set to air a special discussing the state of race in America. The National Day of Racial Hearing, Hear, Healing, it's sponsored by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, is an inspiring look at what individuals and communities can do to address racial inequities. So we have NBC News correspondent Shaquille Brewster. He sat in on an important conversation. Good morning to you, Shaq. Good morning. And, you know, since the start of the war in the Middle East, I've found it increasingly challenging to find students willing to talk on camera and share their perspectives. But I recently had dinner with a group who bravely opened up about their experiences around race and ethnicity on campus. From segregation. James Hood is the first of his race to become a University of Alabama student. To the war in Vietnam. To more recently, the Israel-Hamas war. College campuses have long been flashpoints for free speech. I had dinner with a group of five University of Michigan students from various backgrounds to learn about the general atmosphere on campus and their work to overcome divisions of every kind. If there was a word to describe the mood that you have, the feeling that you have being on campus right now, what would that word be? Anxious. Difficult. We're at a time where everyone, I think, needs to take a deep breath calm down, try to diffuse the situation, at least on campuses, and begin to facilitate dialogues because universities are supposed to be places of discussion and debate. I would say imbalance for me. There's a certain palatable blackness that is accepted by society, and when you don't fit into that, it's very easy to be neglected, pushed to the side. I've learned how to deal with it and build community to support me through it. Exhausted, yet hopeful. Being Native American, we are fighting for different things on campus. You're hoping once your four years are up, you set it up better for the people who are coming in, and you hope to give them like a road map on how to make it even better for the next generations. It's been a combination of anxiety and both determination. Raise your hand if you have felt on campus a concern about your words or your feelings being misconstrued. Everyone. I feel like every day you have to watch your words on whatever you do. You can be labeled something if you just misspeak once. Does this feel new or has it always been this way? Well, I would say it kind of really started election season when I first was a freshman. Me and my roommate had differing opinions on political candidates and sometimes I'd hear him say stuff and I'd say stuff and we'd both look at each other and be like, what are you really think? A lot of times when we are advocating Palestinian liberation in particular, um, it's misconstrued as us like stating that we want to like completely eradicate like the Jewish population. And I'm like, no, like our safety comes with the safety of the Jewish population hand in hand. You both used anxiety at the beginning of this conversation. What's the feeling that you get knowing that there's someone else who feels that same level of anxiety as you? Just knowing that we do come from like the same shared values of like love and respect and empathy and humanity. It's assuring and it's 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 also disheartening because it's become such a polarized issue. I think that is a great way for us to start, you know, a conversation like that shared grief, the shared fear of what the future holds. And I do hope that that is what paves the path for people to have these conversations with other individuals. We need to be more intentional about the way we engage across identity groups. Conversations like these make me more optimistic um, about what college campuses could be and what you know the future could hold for not just our democracy, but democracies across the globe. And that was just a sample of our much larger conversation, which wasn't one where students were looking to solve every problem or ignore very real divisions, but instead they were looking to work and working to understand each other's perspectives in a way that seems to be happening far less in these spaces. Guys? That's exactly correct. We were just talking about that. In fact, let's follow up Thanks, on that. Jack. Thank you, Shaq. We now have NBC News Daily anchor Zinkley Esamoa joining us to share more about this special that will be airing tonight. Happy you're on the show today. Me too. Thank you so much for having me. So I think it's one thing to have this conversation with college students and the yeah. goal to kind of talk about racial healing. It's another to try to get just everyday folks and adults 
to try to have these kinds of conversations. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think when people hear racial healing, they can get skeptical it or does. even it cynical, like, right? Because oh. we cover so many incidents right. of racial violence or yeah. trauma. Our goal with this special was to dig into racial healing, which we believe is looking at the harms of the past and having hope that things can get better in the future. So in this special, you'll hear, hear from groups like we heard with Shaq talking with these students. Guad Venegas takes us to Albuquerque, New Mexico, where a police department is working with communities of color to bridge the the gap, specifically Latino communities, after an incident of police violence. Antonia Hilton takes us to rural Kentucky, where a nonprofit is working with a white community in extreme poverty, connecting them with resources. And really, the goal across this special is to show groups around the country, indigenous, Asian American, yeah. black, Latino, you know, there are divisions, but there is work being done. And we're trying to highlight some of that work that's highlight happening. Highlight some of the solutions instead of just focusing constantly on the problems. problems. You know, and also to offer for people a toolkit because like you said I think talking about race can get awkward yeah, for yeah. people right a lot of people don't know how to have the conversation right. and so our goal is to say you know enter with humility we want to create a space that is safe for people to talk and I always say we got two ears and one mouth right so listen <laughs> oh. listen like a little that. more than you yeah, talk good. when you're entering and that's what we're aiming to do tonight myself and Kate Snow as well oh, good thank you Zinclay and you. As she just mentioned don't miss the National Day of Racial Healing it's an NBC News Now special sponsored by the W.K. Kellogg Fund tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. All right. Yeah, thanks for Thank being you. here, Zinclair. Really love that. Okay, coming up, we've got actor Mara Turney here live. We're going to talk to her about her new film and look back on some of those classic roles, including one of my faves, uh. News Radio. Uh, and then later, we're going to share some of the biggest beauty trends in 2024, including an easy way to add a of color. Third hour of the day, I'll be <laughs> right back. There she is. Hi, dude. <laughs> Our next guest has quite the impressive resume. Maura Tierney spent 10 years saving lives as Dr. Abby Lockhart on the NBC hit drama ER. Well, then she took home a Golden Globe Award for one of my favorites uh, for her role as Helen in The Affair. Well, now Maura is playing the matriarch of the real-life Von Erich family in The Iron Claw. The film follows the dramatic highs and lows of the prominent wrestling dynasty in the early 80s. So in this family, brotherly bonds run deep. Take a look. Hey, I've been thinking. Can I talk to you about something? Baby, that's what your brothers are for. I know, but... I don't want to be late. Dad's too tough on Mike, Ma. You gotta say something. Please? Kevin, that's between them. Now go, get ready. Within 15 minutes. Oh, oh, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. What nice a terrific to see role. That's, mm. uh, so you're playing mom to these two these two wrestlers. It's on you know, on camera. Zach Efron and Jeremy Allen White. White. Do you find yourself uh, when you're playing a mom? Were you kind of a mom figure to them during the the, the filming? Or? I th a little bit, I think. I mean, uh, the. Or not. I mean, I'm, I am that much older than all of them, so that's just a, I can't help but be like that. <laughs> but. We were also, the character's sort of not a very, I won't call her cold, but let's say not warm person. She wasn't very sort of nurturing. The yeah. dad was in charge of all that. So a lot of times the boys were, they would work out constantly. Mm. So on set, in between takes, they'd all go to the gym on set and I would sort of just 
hang out and <laughs> ate a carrot. <laughs> it's nice that you didn't have to like transform your it body the not, way they had to. Very nice, but I was jealous because I, I've said this before. They ate constantly all really? day, whatever they wanted, uh, all day, sandwich, snacks, oh. Cheetos, and I had a carrot or whatever. Carrot. <laughs> yeah. But we, I didn't get to sort of hang out with them as much because they were always working out. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, time. you can see it. You can see it. Yeah, it shows. So, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's, like, it's well, Dylan's turn. Oh, okay. No, I asked if she enjoyed being able to sit back and not have to. Oh, okay. You know, put I it. did. Yes. Yes. I mean, yeah. I did. All right. I so, wouldn't have been able to do. It. Was but I could feel that. It's a Friday, you know, boy. I right. saved. I saved Zac Efron's life on ER. What? Yes. I don't remember not that. Really? But he was a patient. Uh huh. Yes. He was like I don't know, fifty. Really? I'm surprised we was. didn't. I, I forgot to mention it in the thing. Yes. Yeah. He is a gunshot victim, and he staggers into nice. the ambulance bay, and Nurse Abby runs out and saves him. That Nurse Abby. Yeah. That, that, that Nurse Abby. Abby. <laughs> wow. And can you imagine that? And I think he said he maybe got his SAG card doing that. So. Wow. And, did, and he remembered, too? No, I'm serious. I, was I remember. didn't remember. He you remembered. didn't. I mean, everybody was on that show. That's yeah. true. So, we but we were talking funny. about it. I learned this morning. Listen, there's still, I mean, it's been, what did I look, yeah. 30 years since its premiere, ER. Mm -hmm. um, but there are still new fans and people still discovering mm -hmm. now thanks to streaming and other platforms. You know, and I heard during COVID especially, people went back to it. It was like. Yeah. Well, I wasn't on 30 years well, ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Six but seasons just, in. Right. But just right. the fact it that like, the show has just. Yeah. It's remained. Yes. During COVID. Yes. Uh, it had a whole new audience. And, and from the beginning, people watched it with their families watched mm -hmm. it. Parents right. and children watched it. And then that happened again during COVID. And yeah. I think that's. I'm very proud that that's a show mm -hmm. families can watch Absolutely. together. Absolutely. But yeah. bef and before ER, the career game changer for you was one of my favorite shows, News Radio. It was yeah. this, this quirky comedy yeah. about a, a news radio station with Phil Hartman and all these great cast members. That was a great show. Yeah. What was that like? We had a blast. I mean, the, I mean, really a blast. Like, everybody was so young. Not that youth is so all important, but everybody, mm -hmm. I think, was under 30, including mm -hmm. the show creator. Like, we were just all... Well, this is you. I got to I got to interview you. Uh, uh, yeah. and Dave Foley. I made a good a... joke in that. <laughs> you remember that? I Wait, look. Wow. Oh, this is so funny. And you're in it. That's, That's right. You're I getting did. a I note. Got to do a, I got to do a cameo. It was a one I of the press conference. A hundred yeah, and done. What year was that? Chironis. 1996, I think. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I heard yes. that, like a lot of us, you, you know, you make New Year's resolutions. Yes. I heard that you resolved yes. to try to keep a house plant alive. Is that? Yes. Two. <laughs> Little tiny plans. Uh -huh. Those are, oh, wait, look oh, at the picture. There. there are my plans. Oh, those are, like those the are ones that don't lovely. even take any effort. Supposedly, right? <laughs> no, so, I've killed those also. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Well, I killed the su succulents. The succulents. Those yes. are succulents. Yes. yes. So, so we, we wanted to help you. Oh, get out. We got you a gift. Oh, wow. <laughs> it is. But how do I not kill it? Well, you, you water, it. water it. So I think this one, you this is the one that's that so Hilton said that you put like an ice cube in once a week. Yes. Oh, that yeah. I doesn't need so a lot of water. Ice cubes. How cool is that? Once a week. And that's it. And that's Low it. Maintenance. And I love walk it. Away. It's a hearty plant. Thank you. This is so nice. So we're going to check in with you next year. I'll take pictures. If okay. that plant's yeah, dead, Mara. I can buy one that looks just like it. <laughs> there you go. Mara Attorney, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's so nice. And make sure you check out Iron Claw in theaters right now. I love that. An ice cube? You can do that. Yeah. All right. Up next, a clean sweep for your beauty and skincare routine. Hot trends in 2024 from head to toe. Ooh. We'll be right back.
This morning, we are giving your beauty and skin routine a clean sweep with a peek at the new trends for 2024. And there is something for everyone, men included. Here to help us is Julie Wilson, Cosmopolitan Beauty Editor at Large. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Hi. How are we you happy New Year. Successfully sampled everything on the table <laughs> as have. we do, but what are we starting with? I have, okay, big trend colored mascara. Mm. Eyeshadow can't have all the fun. I am wearing I've some right now. Years. This pink oh. mascara. Oh, okay. It's like enough. It's subtle enough, oh, but yeah, like really nice. great. These are from Ashunta Sharif, who is a celebrity makeup artist. Okay. Great. They also glow in the dark under what? UV light. Oh, oh, so wow. if you find yourself fun. in the club, Ooh. you know, wow. you will have a moment with these. Oh, so all of these is. neon. Oh, yes. my gosh. You put black mascara underneath or just You can use, use a white primer okay. oh, in so order really to pop. make it pop. What was but that? like, I don't know if you can see See, but like I have the pink on. It's I love really that. great. It looks okay. Yeah. All right. This is so really fun. Okay. The head massage. So mm. what's big in hair care is scalp care. So like you're gonna see more and more companies coming out with scalp focus things. Here's a great tool from oh, Curl nice. Mix. It is a scalp massager. Nice. The little silicone legs like oscillate. It's moving your whole Yes, yeah, so it, it helps. Because he has no hair. <laughs> it helps promote circulation from like, for blood to get to the, well, the follicles. Can it for, regrow hair? It cannot regrow hair, yeah. but it, it feels stimulate. great. It can stimulate blood yeah. flow there. I also How love the know? fact, <laughs> I also love the fact that you can use it in the shower. So I use this to help break up oh. the buildup of product on my scalp. Oh, so idea. it's really, just... really smart and it feels good. And like, nice. Al and Craig got quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's a way you guys, don't disturb I, us. I thought you would be minutes. like, your mouth yeah. would be running during this. That's like, so scalp. funny. This is nice. Okay. Okay. Something for me. I keep out real quiet. What's the, what's, what's the, the, the body wash here? Okay, so and this body wash. Serums in it now? This is you serum. These are, serum. These are Dove, co-created by dermatologists. I need to tell y'all, this is like super exclusive. These are launching now, like oh. today, like right now Smells for the nice. Today Show. Yay. They pushed up their launch date because of this amazing moment. Mm, okay. These are really great. Only They're $10. They all have different, there's nine different ones for all oh, different, this um, serum. if you want Deeply vitamin nourishes. C, if you want hyaluronic acid what? for moisturization. Is that for boys and girls? Ceramides. Yeah. yeah. Everyone. Everybody. It is for every, all, all humans. Like Anybody wants to be clean. This is all a humans. game changer. You know game why? Changer. Because, you know, body wash can be drying or and then you put your serum on when you get out all the things. Yes. To have this. This is amazing. So we can't just keep skincare to our face. Yeah. yeah. Like we have to start thinking about Especially our bodies. So that's a huge uh -huh. trend. I've been saying start thinking years. about your body more than just your that's face. That's a win. Which what also is. brings what us makes this brush special. Yes. So this is from Alicia Keys Beauty Company. Oh, yeah. Keys Soul Care. The brush is for dry brushing. So you use this before you get into the shower or whatever and it, ex it gently exfoliates like oh, dead skin cells. Skin. Oh. Very slowly oh. always towards your heart. So on your legs, up towards your heart, on your arms, down. So like okay. really amazing. So wow. exfoliating for your body. I'm okay. excited about okay. this. So I, I Pantone's am. color of the year is Peach Fuzz. This Ooh, is, these are from Olive and June. Color. You know, really universal color, amazing. Love Pop it. on the manis. I, I mean, I try to. Love to are, Press on nails like better than they were when I was. They kid. are. They are. They stay put. They're okay. really safe and they look fabulous. So I, I, need, I need to work, to work on that. It's peach fuzz. Peach fuzz. What does that we mean? announced that, that a few weeks ago. Did we? Yes. So what in clothes and in everything? Yeah. Just, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to here? show it in nails. I love it. Then we have relevant beauty, which I love. Everything's about gloss. High gloss lips. We used to want matte, matte, matte. Yeah. Right. Now it's glossy. Glass skin. Glossy hair. Glossy Ooh. lips. Relevant Beauty, this is amazing because it also moisturizes your skin. So it's, I mean, your lips. So yeah. it's not just about the vanity of the gloss. It? I'm wearing it right now. Yeah, it looks great. Okay. Oh, that's it smells like These are good things. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that scalp massager, I still feel it. That's fantastic. It is nice, right? <laughs> Thank you, Julie, as always. All right, for more on these products, head to today.com slash shop. And just a reminder, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through the links on today.com. Coming up next, Joy Bowers answering your superfood questions to help us stay on that healthy track this year, uh, like a sneaky way to get more veggies in. Al can't focus. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I, I really like can't. That. I can't. It's so good. So good. Oh, so good. Mama. <laughs>
if it's Friday, it is Superfood Friday, and a lot of us setting, you know, some health goals for the year right now. So we brought in today nutrition health expert Joy Bauer to answer your questions about how to reach those goals. We always hey Joy. enjoy hey, these things. Joy. I love Fridays. We take these viewer questions and we get real-time responses. So let's start with this one here. This is a, a, our first viewer uh, wants to jumpstart into a healthy new year. Let's take a look. Hi, Joy. This is Christine from Long Island. I want to start eating better this year, but I'm feeling overwhelmed. If I'm only able to make one food change, which should that be? Ooh, so she's only okay. letting me give one tip. So I want to make it manageable yet powerful. Okay. So here goes. Incorporate vegetables with each and every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And here's why. First, vegetables are high volume. They're low in calories, so they help with weight management, right? They fill us up instead of filling us out. Most importantly, they are loaded with the good stuff, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and fiber. So they shower our bodies mm. with everything we need yeah. to reduce disease, to ease inflammation, and just make us feel great. So what I'm showing here is think out of the box. Mm. When it comes to vegetables, no humdrum, you know, the average everyday stuff. We want to incorporate them into frittatas and scrambled yeah. eggs. That is a caprese avocado toast Ooh. with layers of creamy avocado, juicy tomatoes, uh, mozzarella cheese, balsamic Make vinaigrette. Me hungry, Joy. For lunch, a <laughs> colorful salad screens, mm. lots of vegetables. Stuff your sandwich with as many veggies as possible. And for dinner, I'm showing really the sky's the limit. But this is my spinach turkey burgers. And instead of regular pasta, swap over to the spaghetti squash because it twirls up just like spaghetti. Yep. And it gives you that sort of carby comfort food feel. I love that. All right, this next one, also on the topic of vegetables. This is from Elise in Chicago. She says, my seven-year-old son hates vegetables. He can spot one a mile away and won't touch it. <laughs> How do you feel about sneaking one. veggies into other foods? I am completely on board with being yes. a sneak. Yeah. Okay. Whatever it takes to get our kids, our finicky spouses, friends, and family eating more vegetables, like go to it. It's a win in my book. But at the same time, you want to continue to serve vegetables and make them very visible and also be a vegetable-loving role model. And I'm telling you, even the finicky of kids will eventually cave. Mm -hmm. um, I have a few ideas, though, when it okay. comes to being a sneak. The Tell first, me more. <laughs> okay, the first is Dylan. Add a handful of either kale or um, spinach mm -hmm. into a fruit smoothie. They will never detect it. I'm telling you. Another thing I love to do has to do with mashed potatoes. Okay. So when it comes to making your mashed potatoes, you're going to go half and half. You do half white spuds mm -hmm. and you mix it with half cauliflower. Oh. White and white and it ends up to be velvety. There it goes into the pot. I'm idea. boiling it yeah. together. I left the skin on the potatoes for extra fiber, but you can certainly peel them beforehand and it is velvety oh. and you could add a little butter or whole milk salt mm -hmm. and pepper and it's perfect another thing that you could do is add a can of either pumpkin puree butternut squash puree yam or sweet potato right into your chili or oh. marinara oh. sauce oh. and again i i think and it you actually taste it or you do taste it it boldens yeah. up the yeah. flavor they're not going to taste it and the same thing goes you could do it in your cheese sauce before mm. you add in for mac and cheese as well okay. well you're pretty good at doing that yeah about i try to hide some veggies in there yeah okay finally lisa from florida asks and I, i'm sure craig echoes this i'm aiming to reduce my alcohol intake this year. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Any tips to make the process easy? It is so smart to cut yeah. back. You guys know I love my glass of wine and yeah. don't take away my tequila. Yeah. <laughs> but you want to be selective and thoughtful because you will reduce the risk for a slew of different mm -hmm. diseases. You're going to sleep better too and you're going to ease inflammation. So I think the best way to do it, I am the queen of flavorful mocktails and I'm going to show you a few. So first I have my cranberry Cosmo and all I'm doing is I'm adding cranberry juice with lime juice mm -hmm. and then I'm garnishing it with some fresh cranberries. I also have a um, spicy margarita mocktail and all I do, well this is another cranberry one. Let's let's see which one this one is. Yummy. So this is, this is um, the margarita okay. spicy mocktail, jalapenos, lime oh. juice, and orange juice. Yep. And the key is put them in fancy glasses. Oh, oh, it's, it's, all it's, all it's all about the attitude. Thank you. Joy, yes. thank you. Thank For you more for nutrition this. information, you know where to go. Today.com slash food. Third hour of today, right back after this. Like these folks have been waiting. Hi.
All right, next week on the third hour of today, actor Lucy Hale is live in Studio 1A. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, motivational speaker Mel Robbins. And please catch Dylan and me tomorrow on Earth Odyssey and Wild Child. Those are great, great shows. Weekend, everybody. <laughs> great. That's a look at the weather across the country. Now here's a peek out your window. I just want quiet. <laughs> this is truly a pinch me moment right here at Fenway Park. Sweet, but I like you. Very much like your show. Today, best-selling author and motivational speaker Mel Robbins shows us how to get more out of 2024. And matchmaker Devin Simone is back to solve your relationship dilemmas. Plus, Hollywood hotshot Ryan Gosling revealing his secret talent. And we're talking about it. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. Hey, 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 welcome. Friday, 12th day of January. Let's go. Here we are. We're two weeks in barely. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're here. We're right here in the middle of it, and it feels good. It does feel good. Okay, so Margot Robbie recently sat down with her Barbie co-star, Ryan Gosling. Uh, they did an interview for W Magazine, and those interviews are often very revealing they sure are yeah so ryan actually revealed he's got a secret talent in the kitchen mm. take a look i make a hell of a pie what? you do yeah what kind i go raspberry i feel hurt that you've never my made mom a pie. used to bake as a side hustle growing up so i'm just lucky enough to get the pie gene good crust yeah and i flute my crust too so don't let anyone tell you that i don't <laughs> You what? I <laughs> flute them. It's where you thumb the edges and you oh, make wow. a nice little, like, almost like a braid. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm stuck at a very strange part that you're not going to understand, but I've never had a raspberry pie. I'm a pie connoisseur. Pie is one of my favorite foods. And a raspberry pie is not one that I've, what is in the inside of a raspberry pie? The Probably ra pureed raspberries. Oh. Pureed, just like a blueberry pie. Oh, is this when we won, when I won? See, I'm fluting, okay. if you okay. notice. Flute. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, I did like it with a fork. Uh, what's a fork? What, what if you do it with a fork? What's that called? Yeah. What? Crimping? Crimping. Oh, like Sean. crimping our hair. Sean, crimping. I mean, I think there's something. I remember when I first moved to New Orleans. And all the sexiest, yeah. most like cool, sought after guys were chefs. Yes. And it was the first time I'd ever encountered that in a town because they were like, oh my God, he's a chef. Yes. It's like he's the guy because you want to date. Food is king. Food right? is king. And there was something very yeah. like uh, about a guy making food. <laughs> yes. And I remember they were like, the, the objects of everyone's Wait, now maybe affection. Maybe that's where we should look in 2024. Oh. For you, down not the chef down route. the chef route. This just opened a whole new lane in my brain. I need to think about that. Do you remember the chef? Bam. Do you remember him? What's his name? <laughs> just making sure, y'all. God. <laughs> Emeril Lagasse was a New Orleans like he was. He kind of got that ball rolling yes. down there with all that. Well, and that's why you haven't seen the bear yet. But Jeremy bear Allen White is. Fine. And he's done this Calvin Klein. Really? Oh, I've seen the ad. Are you kidding? I have too, but I have to watch it in privacy just because I don't want Henry to know how much I love By him. By the way, it's everywhere, that ad. Yeah, it yeah. is. And it can be everywhere on your phone because you can Google it. Yes. <laughs> just have it. <laughs> All you have to do is have your phone nearby. Um, okay, well, maybe Ryan will make a pie with us. I'm never, he probably won't. But he might. You never know. Ryan, uh, we've never had a straw. Have you had a strawberry pie? Raspberry? Oh, no. raspberry. No, I've never had a raspberry pie. But, but I is my brain on? <laughs> no. You just want, you know what you are right now? You're feeling a little, you got under, a little yeah, bit a of little the under the weather. And you know what? We have to give ourselves some grace. I know, but I, am I turned on or off? No, you're just slow motion. Okay, that's, that's good. But you're good, you're good. All right, so okay. Annette Benning. 
sat down with another one of these cool uh, Hollywood roundtables from the Hollywood Reporters. They do an actress roundtable, and the group included Carrie Mulligan, Lily Gladstone, Margot Robbie, Greta Lee, and Ooh, Emma Stone. I love Stone. Greta Lee. So Annette spoke about this. She's in Nyad. She plays the famous swimmer Diana, Diana Nyad. Nyad. Yeah. So she had to, well, she realized that she was going to be spending a lot of this show in her bathing suit. At on the camera. Age, she's 65. Mm -hmm. So she said this I didn't really think about the swimming. And then I realized wait a minute, bathing suit. I am 60 something. I mean, you know what's funny? First of all, she looks fantastic. Amazing. A. And B, I mean, I think there are people who are like, don't care yes. about what they feel like in a bathing suit. Yes, that's you. Yeah, you know why? My, uh, for my whole life, my mom wore a two piece. Yeah. And Never, ever cared. Yeah. Or spoke about or it. Or spoke about it. It was just like Like normal. you could tell she felt it, good. Yes. It wasn't like, oh, does this? Oh, yeah. No, Ooh. she was like, let's go to the beach. Let's go. And that's how we saw it as kids. That's how we saw it as grown-ups. How grown lucky ups. is that for And that's you. how we saw it, I mean, until yeah. really. I mean, we just, this is the beach this past yeah. uh, summer. And this is just the way it is. So I think it gives you a sense of, oh, that's how we behave. Yeah. And sometimes we don't realize, like, what we're showing our kids. If yes. we're like, oh, this one's too yes. tight. Or is this too tight? Like, we don't realize it. Remember yeah. when we did the cold plunge? Yeah. Oh, we did a cold plunge. That's yeah. us. That's in a bathing suit. Yes, it that. is. I'm so glad we did that. I am too. We sat across from each other. We were staring. I kept staring in Jenna's eyes looking for security and safety. It was very but, interestingly intimate. But I don't think we, you know what's funny about, it really was. It was. It was kind of it weird. Was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The type of thing you should do with a partner. <laughs> Which we did. I mean, we are partners. Which but there was something about I it where know. you were like, it was we very weird. It. it was super weird. But here's okay, the thing good, about we you. We can admit that. Yeah. Here's the thing about both you and me. We didn't care about no, the bathing suit. No, we didn't talk one thing no, about we the didn't. bathing suit. We didn't care. Except when you said you had to pee, pee. and I said. And you said, move it to the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she Not said. In the tub. No, she said. She said before. I have to go real quick, and you go, go in the bath. Don't take it, because you know why? They were contraptions. And when, you couldn't get out of it. Buttoned. And, and we I didn't said, have time. She said, she goes, I'm move just not going to gonna go. I'm just going to wait. And, and I knew we were getting in knew. that tub together. And then you said, move it to the side. <laughs> and you know you've done it. Don't act like you haven't done it. There's not a br living, breathing person who hasn't at one point no, it's moved it to the side. Taking the whole thing off? Sometimes you just don't have the patience, the time, or no. someone to help when it's all. You remember how we had both yes. needed someone to un. I had to get out of that thing. It was very difficult. But we definitely have more body confidence now than we did. Yeah, back I mean, in the day. if you think of your body as a home, as a place yeah. where you've had children, yeah. you know, some of us, or a place where your well, health is there, right, carries your, your spirit around, is. yeah. Then it's just, yeah. why am I complaining? Why am I complaining? Because and you've got such a short life. There's that great poem that's like, would you rather worry about how walking to jump in the ocean feels or just jump in the ocean? Yes. Yes. Except yes. For, we wanted to make sure that you don't ruin your hair while you jump in exactly. the ocean. Exactly. <laughs> that's important. There are some stipulations. <laughs> Up next, when she talks, millions of people listen. Mel Robbins shares her strategies for making the most out of the new year. That's after this. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Back, here we go. Well, sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. Happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all. There is nobody, and we do mean nobody, better <laughs> to help us make 2024 our best year yet. And this lady sitting right here, New York Times bestselling author and our good friend Mel Robbins. We adore her. She has 12 million followers online and her podcast was ranked 
as one, if not the most followed podcast in the world. Take that, Travis Kelsey. <laughs> Girl, you know what? I just feel like Jenna and I have been talking about this year is not a year of change, but of transformation, of being something that isn't about dropping 10 pounds or doing all yeah. the usual stuff that people do this time of year, but taking a kind of deeper step. And that's that's your alley right here. Yeah, I'm so glad that you said that because I think this time of year, we all want to just jump ahead yeah. and get a clean slate. Yeah. And so often, at least I've found in my life, I'm making these goals that I have no connection to. If you don't understand why you want something, like deeply, personally want something, you will never make it happen because change is so hard. Mm. And one of the mistakes that I would make all the time is like I'd get to the new year and I'd be like, that's it. It's the new me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yet I didn't even know who I was. Oh. And if you can't answer the question, right. where am I yeah. and who am I right now, you cannot answer the question you also need, which is what do I actually want? And I think that's why so many of us spend years of our lives feeling stuck or unfulfilled yeah. because we can't answer the question, what do I actually want? Not what do I want for my kids? What do I want for my spouse? What do I want for my parents? What do I want? Yeah. So what are the questions? Yes. You have six questions. I do, I do. Them. The first questions are, and here's the big tip, everybody. Do not do this up here. Yeah, write it down. I want you to actually take out your phone, mm. get your camera roll out, oh. because you have forgotten what happened to you this year? Oh, that's a that's good, a good that's point. a really good point. When you take out your camera roll or your social media stories or whatever, and you go back month by month by month, like when I do this every year, you audit good the point. year, you will forget all the things well, that happened. And what you that's do, because point. my daughter made me a little end of the year video, you know, Mila, how oh, she do. She and I'm like, wow, all we that. did a lot this year and I kind of had forgotten. So, yes. okay, we'll get yes. our camera out. We're going to get some Question notes. number one, yes. what were the highlights? Okay. And so here's the thing. You're going to remember the big stuff. So obviously I remember being one of the, named one of the top ranked podcasts in the world. That was a huge one. Yeah. Uh, another thing that we did that I kind of forgot because we're already in the space is at the age of 55, I took a risk and we've opened up studios in Boston. Oh, I can't really? believe it. Yeah, like Ew. something How I never awesome thought I would that? do. Cool. Correct. I forgot that a good friend of mine died in February. Yeah. And right when that happens, when you go to somebody's funeral, you have this kind of moment where you're in touch with your mortality, but you probably forgot about some moments like that. I forgot that my daughter graduated this year from college. Like, no, it's just it's been a huge milestone. You are so right, though, with a wave of things. And sometimes we were like, was this this year or last year? Totally. This was this year? Yes. So take yes. stock of what yes, happened. Yes, take stock. And okay. the small things, too, like how many sunsets? Were you with friends or not? And you'll start to notice, oh, wow, there were highs, there were lows. Second question you're going to ask yourself, what were the hardest things of this year? Mm. What were the hardest things? And for me, the hardest thing for sure was menopause. Mm -hmm. Like the things that I used to do in my life no longer worked from the brain fog to the bloating to the crabbiness. Mm -hmm. I just felt out of control and uncomfortable. And you will see those moments where you are struggling. The other thing that happened for me is that, you know, the success of everything that happened mm -hmm. buried me alive. Mm -hmm. I should. And this gets me to question mean? number three. That's well, good. here here's the third question. Great mm -hmm. instinct, Soda, is that what did you learn? Yeah. Uh, and you will learn, this is why this is important, you learn from the hardest things. You don't learn anything from the stuff that's easy mm -hmm. and from the wins. That's so you true. learn from the struggles. Mm -hmm. And it is so important for you to capture what you learned because it informs you of who am I today? See, you're not the same person you were a year ago. Yeah. And you need to give yourself more credit for the things that you survived this year, for the things that you made happen, for the little things that you allowed yourself to enjoy. And that brings us to question number four. Mm -hmm. Super simple. What are we going to stop doing next year? That's yeah. Good. And <laughs> trust me, when you look through that camera yeah. roll, you'll see. <laughs> you'll see. Pattern. Like some what? patterns. Like what is well, I need to you? stop complaining about menopause because it's not helping. <laughs> I, I but complain are you about trying it. to do something besides complain about it or no? Well, that Take brings us to question oh, number four. That's See, well, you guys are so five. smart. We're on question it. number five is what are you going to continue doing? Yeah. I love this question, and here's why. Yes. You don't give yourself credit for the things you're doing right. Totally. 
whether it's I'm going to continue my morning routine, I'm going to continue listening to Hoda's podcast, I'm going to continue reading the books that Jenna picks, I'm going to continue my morning routine, mm. I'm going to mm. continue my meditation. Yeah, practice. Exactly. that's mine. On. What, no. what was yours? No. Yeah. Was your, did you think of one for this one? Yeah, for the things I'm going to continue. Yeah, continue. Yeah, it's my morning routine. I love my, my morning yes. routine is my most sacred time of day. Without it, and you my have day's it whack. Down. I and mean, I love it. Yeah. And if I miss it, I'm like, Ouch. Yes. I, I feel it. Yes. And then the final question is, what are you going to start doing? And one of the things for me, and this gets to the why. See, you can't make another adult do anything they don't want to do. Totally. Mm -hmm. And you can't. That applies to yourself, by the way. Mm. And so, like I said earlier, I was never motivated to do the work to get six-pack abs because yeah. I don't care about yeah, them. exactly. So I'm not going to do the things that are hard, yeah. right? But I do care about getting my hormones in balance. Yeah. So now I'm going to start weightlifting three times a week because that's what the experts say. Yeah. And my why of wanting to feel good and to live a longer life and to feel at home in my body yes. again is the reason why. It's not to look good in a bathing suit. Yeah. It is so that I have a deeply personal reason. And so when you answer these six questions, here's what's important about this, everybody. Think about the creating the best year of your life, mm -hmm. like programming a GPS. So you're sitting in your car. And in order for you to get a set of directions for where you're going to go next in your life, you have to know where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So looking back, answering those six questions gives you the knowledge and the wisdom from your own life to give you a sense of direction about where you're headed next. Where are you going to continue? What are you going to stop? What are you going to start? Mm -hmm. But you also need another coordinate, which is where am I? Yeah, look yeah. back. You cannot get yeah. directions unless you know where you are and where, and where you want to go. And that is exactly those six questions, the thing that you're going to slow down and do that will give you both of those things. It's so smart. Hopefully, we'll put those on our website. Well, don't move. Yeah, you're not we definitely. Anymore. Sorry, people have a lot of questions for you, yes. and we're going to take a break coming up awesome. right after this. Those are so smart. We're celebrating our girl, Jenna Bush Hager. Go so, read me. It's so good. Are y'all so happy your daddy's home? Daddy. There's Jenna. She's not afraid to be herself. <laughs> love you, Jenna. I love you. I love you. I love you. All right, we are back with best-selling author and mom <laughs> of three who we love, Mel Robbins. Mm -hmm. She wants to make 2024 your best year yet, and now she's going to answer some of our viewers' questions. Oh, we've got some. Here's a question from Jamie. Take a look. Hi Mel, I'm Jamie. As mom to a toddler, I set a resolution to reclaim 15 minutes of every day for myself. Whether that's to go on a walk or do yoga, I just wanna feel strong. However, I'm at about a 50% success rate so far, so I need your help revamping my resolution without totally giving up on it to make it attainable. Okay, so first of all, can we just say 50% is a win? You're not yeah. a robot, you're not a Navy SEAL, you're a mom <laughs> of a toddler. If you can have a 50% rate yeah. at sticking to something, you're actually winning. And this is a huge, important part. You're not cheering for yourself enough. You're looking at what you're not doing instead of celebrating what you are doing. So number one, claim the win. Number two, the fact that you are revising the goals is one of the most important things that you can do in terms of the skill of changing your life. Because when you set goals, you think it's going to work 
work a certain way. Yeah. But if you start to have the self-awareness that I'm not getting it in as much as I want, then you just got to change how you're doing it. And mm. so quick recommendations. You're going to hate this, but this always works. Get up 30 yes. minutes earlier. Yeah. Get it done before they get awake. Yeah. That's Hoda's favorite. Yep. I like there it. That's hers to and everybody. It's a hard thing for, for, to do. Try it, it for a week. And if you can do it for a week, yep. then maybe but you remember can do it for But remember what somebody said is it changes mm. hard. So yeah. your body may be like, I need more sleep. This isn't worth it. But once you get, that's get, the routine. Get rolling. Yep. It may be true. All right, yep. let's go. We have another question. Yeah, we? we have our social media producer, Dana, on following through. Hi, I'm Dana, and my 2024 goal is to stick to things that I start. I find that there's so much I want to do or try for the first time, like relearning languages, new hobbies, going to different activities, but the thought of trying to pursue them all is really daunting. So where should I begin? You should begin by picking one thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The kiss of death is picking too many things to work on at once. Pick one thing, and then the second thing I want everybody to do is stop managing it up here. I want you to make change easier for yourself. Mm. And the way that I make things easier for myself is the same way that you might make something easier if you have little kids. If you want to drink more water, set out your water bottle next to the coffee yeah, maker so smart. Right. filled. Why? You don't have to think about it. Yeah. If right. you're trying to exercise, lay out your yes. clothes the night before yeah. just yeah. like you would for little kids. Yes. Why? You don't have to think about yeah. it. Yeah. If you're trying not to drink for the month of January, for the rest of the year, or the rest of your life, Get the booze out of your house. Yeah, yes. Put it in the basement. Because if it's out of sight, it's likely yeah. out of mind. So if you were coaching a friend, I love post-it notes. Yeah. yeah. I love prepping things the night before. Yeah, yes. yeah. Little hacks Tiny that make things. you make take yes. the work out so of good. it. Yes. Yes. Okay, it's so smart. Finally, a question from Lauren about juggling life. Take a look. Hi, Mel. My name's Lauren, and I'm a mom to seven-year-old twins. And since becoming a mom, I have sacrificed my career. But in 2024, I'm ready to reclaim my professional identity. However, I fear that this will come at the sacrifice of being the present parent that I also want to be. So do you have any tips on how to be a working mother and have it all? Absolutely. You can be a working mother and have it all, but not all at the same time. And so you want to stop thinking about balance between these things and think about boundaries. Mm -hmm. And my favorite boundary that I set, and again, boundaries are not for work or family, it's for you, mm -hmm. is number one, be where your feet are. Mm -hmm. If you are at work, be at work. I love that. Do not be worried about your kids. If you are at home, mm -hmm. be at home and do not be working. And the second boundary that has been huge for me is I never have my phone on my person when I am home. It is always yeah, plugged in in the kitchen. One. That's good. It is always because otherwise you will not be where your feet is. And here's the thing. At work with your phone, you can just tell people to call you. So that way you don't have to check the texts. Tell them if you really need me, call me because then you will be notified if there's an emergency and you don't have to be distracted checking your and phone she all the time. Want the guilt of, of work. Yeah. You feel that because I think a yes. lot of women feel that. But here's what I want to say about guilt. If you want your kids to learn how to put themselves first, to learn how to pursue both a full family life and things that they care about, who the heck is going to teach them? Yeah. <laughs> right. So you going and pursuing your own identity and your own passion and your own sense of purpose, purpose actually is part of being a great parent. It's so because true. Because you are modeling right. the behavior of somebody who has boundaries between those things and who mm -hmm. finds room for those things. Because if you kind of try to balance it all, that means that your family is competing with work. Yeah. Mm. Or work is competing That's with family and, and you're that, setting up yeah. resentment. But also yeah. it's so yeah. your desire. So if you're following your dreams, yes. right. then your kids are going to be proud. Yes. Okay. Don't we love that? Yeah, Mel, can you just <laughs> move in, guys? Mel, can you move in? We have a little love studio we do. apartment well, upstairs. Yeah, can we do. In my <laughs> you can check out new episodes of the Mel Robbins podcast, <laughs> and we know you're already doing it every Monday and Thursday. Thanks, right. Mel. Thank I you, love thank you, guys. you, Mel. Up next, what are they talking about? Jenna and I face off in a fun game after this.
you so much for being with us. Yeah, We're just right. getting started, folks. Your questions are almost better than mine. <laughs> what can fans expect? Us forgetting lyrics. <laughs> Greg loves to say Friday. There it is. Friday. We love discovering the next big TikTok talent. We really do. <laughs> we look around and try to do it all the time, but we love a little friendly competition as well. So what we did is we mashed them together in a game. It's a game that we like to call, What, what Are They, they talking, talking About? Get it? Get the pun in here to host is our associate producer, Sean. Hi. Hi. How does it work, Sean? So you here's great, Sean. Oh, are you wearing pleather? I am. You the, look very nice. The pleather is all mine. Yes. <laughs> here's how the game works. I'll show you a photo of a TikTok creator, and you have to guess based on multiple choices what they are known for doing on the app. We'll go one at a time. If you get it wrong, the other can steal. And at the end, the loser has to record a dancing TikTok live on Don't air. Don't say loser. Yeah. Okay. The, loser. the person with the least amount of points. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, we're ready. Let's start it. Jenna, what does Joe talk about? Is he, uh, he plays every character in a made up 90s sitcom? He reviews potato chips from around the world, or he writes songs from the perspective of historical figures. I mean, this is just like throwing, yes, a, throw throwing it. a thing Give it a at go. the dark. Take a guess. I think he looks like a person that would like a 90s sitcom. Let's take a look. Jenna is correct. What? So some of some of Joe Thomas Carter's TikToks have over two million views, wow. which would make it. Nice guess. I know it would make it an actually nice guess. on the talk, but I don't. There you go. What's next, baby? What Hoda? What does Smack talk about? She is covering her entire home in disco ball mirrors. She races people on pogo sticks, or she impersonates objects being crushed by a hydraulic press. What's her name? Smack. Oh, Smack. Smack McCreener. Smack. Smack. She does see. She's the hydraulic smasher. You got it. Let's that's go. Go. Go, girl. Smack, Smack. McCreener does this series on TikTok. She actually has a dance background, which is how she moves like that. Oh, my God. And wow. this whole series has over a billion views and is being displayed in an Australian art gallery right now. Wow. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Is she okay? Is she popping? <laughs> All right. We're All right, Jenna, more. up next, Come what on, does Christopher talk about? He's a trick unicyclist, he makes candy sculptures, or he's an opera singing drag queen. Hmm. Does he make candy sculptures? He does not. Hoda, do you want to steal? He's a unicyclist. He is not. Oh. Let's see this opera singing drag queen in action. When you're singing, makes people cry. Wow. 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 Congrats. From the House of LaBeja, that is Jasmine Rice LaBeja, Juilliard trained, performed at Lincoln Center, also just hilarious at a bar or brunch. I've seen her multiple <laughs> times myself, and she makes almost everything she wears. Wow, so amazing. Cool, cool. Talent. Talented. All right, Hoda, mm -hmm. what does Hassan talk about? He's a world champion arm wrestler, he's a cartoonist, or he's reviewing every wooden roller coaster Ooh. in America. Huh. <laughs> He's reviewing the roller coasters. He is not, unfortunately. Uh, Jenna? Um, is he a world champion arm wrestler? He is not. He's oh, a cartoonist. Oh my gosh, he's a cartoonist. Let's cartoonist. roll that tape. You love a cartoonist. I love yeah, he goes by Hostile Art on TikTok. He says his family doesn't even know he goes by that. Um, he's but, so good. And he's so calm. His narration is almost very Bob Ross. So yeah, if you want him to put you at ease. Therapeutic. Yeah, take a I look. I like him. Okay. All right, Jenna, what does Allison talk about? She impersonates Vice President Kamala Harris. She interviews children about fashion and pop culture, or she makes recipes from 1950s cookbooks. She? Does she interview children? She doesn't. Oh, I know she does. She makes recipes from the 50s. She doesn't. Kamala! Kamala, let's, let's take a look. I'm Kamala Harris. <laughs> I am here with Representative, okay, Charlotte. You're a very great representative. I want to stress bipartisanship. Charlie here is a Republican. Okay. Well, I 
I'm a Democrat. She goes by Alien Reese on TikTok, and she told me she hopes Lauren Michaels is watching because her dream is to be on Saturday yeah, Night she's Live. Very one day. It might happen. Possibly. All right, this yeah. is the last one. It's the tiebreaker. Oh, we have so to. So whoever buzzes in first oh, can wait, answer. Buzz in. What does Cavante talk about? He impersonates celebrities while working at a grocery store. He vogues while working at an airport, or he beatboxes <laughs> while working in a hospital. Jenna. He vogues while working at an airport. You are correct. Let's that take a guess. look at Cavante. So in addition, oh my gosh, that's yeah. There you go. That's Cavante Tatum. In addition to being a self-described slaviation superstar, he and his twin brother dance professionally on the side when he's not working at the airport. How amazing! It is amazing. You talented. know what else is amazing? What's amazing? Jenna won. So that means Hoda, Hoda. you oh, have no, to no, dance join me. in a TikTok. Jenna's gonna join. But you know what? It's a song you both know. Can we play it? Carefree Christmas? No. Come on, Jenna. Oh, I mean, is this what you do at the top? Yeah, exactly. Come on, come on. Yeah, get that food. Oh, 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 oh. Get up. Oh, gosh. You can be making a viral TikTok dance right now. We don't even know. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Love you, Sean. Coming up next, Devin Simone solves your relationship dilemmas and tells us about new dating trends for 2024. That's right after this. Look at the weather across the country. Now here's a peek out your window. I just want quiet. <laughs> this is truly a pinch me moment right here at Fenway Park. Sweet, but I like you. Very much like yourself. Jenna's feeling a little under the weather, so I'm gonna take it from here. So I'm joined by Devin Simone from Three Day Rule Matchmaking, who's here to help out our viewers in our series, Hoda and Jenna's Relationship Dilemmas. Yes. What's hot right now? Well, Hoda, it's officially New Year, New Boo season. New Boo? Yes. Did you just make that up? No, it is yes, New Year. I did not, I okay. swear, Hoda. It's New Year, New, new, new boo, boo season. So that runs from January 1st to February 14th. No, there's not a date. <laughs> <laughs> new Year, New You, New Year, New Boo. Okay. And so we see a lot happening. So mm -hmm. um, what's cool is Tinder did a, a survey last year, and they like to kind of follow the trends and analyze, like, how dating is evolving. Yeah. And we really saw a shift towards main character energy last year in What's dating. That, what does that mean? So that means that people sort of um, utilized it to uh, connect more with themselves instead of like a chore, right? Like, oh, I got to go on these dates. Oh, oh I got to do it. It was more like, how am I feeling in this moment? Like, how do I feel with this person? Like, they were really connecting with themselves. Mm -hmm. And we expect to see more of that in 2024, which is really, really cool. Yeah, because I think the hard thing to get away from, no matter which way you meet someone, is the pleasing, mm -hmm. maybe I can make it work. I mean, relationships are supposed to, they do take some compromise and work, but they shouldn't feel like work. Yeah, it like shouldn't work. feel like you're constantly yeah. doing work, and you should feel like you can be unabashedly yourself, right? Yeah. Like, you should feel like you are loved or appreciated for who you are, and you don't have to shrink yourself down for that person, and you should be evaluating that when dating. And so we expect to see more of that going into 2024, mm -hmm. and Tinder did their year in swipe report, which oh, is great. Geez. So it pulls 
in a bunch of data. What did it say? And what we're seeing, too, is sort of two main themes, right? So one we're calling NATO, so not attached to the outcome. So instead of going on a first date. I love your, I love your acronyms. <laughs> so who cares how it ends? Yeah, who cares how it ends? Like, how, Live let's in the just moment. see what happens, right? Like, let's just see what happens and uh, see how I feel. Again, how I feel with this person. Not, do they like me? Did they call me for a second date? Are we going to be, you know, in an exclusive relationship? Yeah, in three weeks? stop like, it. Yes. Just, just be in the moment. Because I did this on a, on a date. It was a while ago, whatever it was, several months ago. And I remembered thinking, and I even said to him, I'm going to be 100% me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after the date was an hour and a half or so, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm leaving now. Yeah. It has nothing to do with you. Yeah. I like you. Yeah. But I'm totally exhausted. I woke up at three and I've got two kids. Mm -hmm. So thank you. But I wasn't like, usually you just, right. okay, I should wait another 20 yeah. minutes. Just be who you are. What's the other yeah. thing? Nature. Oh, you were doing main character energy right there. See? See? Main See? character you were, energy. You were doing main character and NATO. energy. And NATO. Okay. <laughs> the other one is dating for the plot. So that, admittedly, I did What's a lot that? of that when I was in my 20s. Uh, <laughs> no that is sort of saying, look, I'm out. I'm open to new experiences, right? So yeah. like... Sure, I'll go on that date with you because where are we going to go? Sh do we want to go do this activity oh, afterwards? So like, you just want to go for the thing. Well, you go, but the thing is, is you still can connect that way. It doesn't mean that you don't like the person, but instead of going beforehand, yeah. do they have everything on my list? Is no. this going to be my person? You're kind of like, Dave, what's, this is going to make a great story All one right. day. We want to get a viewer's question, and this one has to be anonymous mm -hmm. because this person does not want to be revealed. Okay. It's a very exhausted wife. At the end of the day, I am exhausted. I've handled the kids, worked a long day, made dinner, done the bedtime routine. I finally lay down and my partner wants to be intimate. At this point, I physically and mentally have negative desire. I don't mean it personally, but it starts a fight. So this to me is very textbook. Mm -hmm. You're tired at the end and your mm -hmm. partner wants to get frisky or yes. whatever you want to call it. And that's totally valid, right? Like, we, we all have only so much gas in our tank. Yeah. It's totally valid to be tired and exhausted, but you can't go on like this because what your partner is doing when they want to be intimate with you, you've t spoken about it, you and Jenna, yeah. before, they're do that's a bid for connection, right? Like, they're trying to connect with you, and it's important that you guys are able to meet somewhere. So, so if you're really you exhausted... First, ask yourself what can help take some things off your plate. Is it that your partner is not being helpful enough and you feel like you're carrying the load with the kids and work and yeah, all of sure, that? Sure. Um, or is it that maybe you stay up late scrolling at night and watching videos so you're mm -hmm. not getting as much sleep so mm -hmm. then you're tired? You've got to carve out time to prioritize this because mm -hmm. intimacy is really important. Mm -hmm. And then talk to your partner about it. Not in the moment, not when they're doing the tap. Mm -hmm. Say tonight. You, somebody gets a tap, tap. And yeah. You don't. Have, you haven't had time you to set up the time conversation. You don't have time to set it up. Yes. You can just say, "Babe, I love you. I am so excited. I am at a ten percent right now. And when we have fun, I want to give you at least seventy yeah. percent. So can we? Can we? You know, Seven. have a little bit of fun later this week, and then at a later time when it's not in the heat of the moment, just sit Talk down and have an it. honest conversation. Good. Good. Okay. Stay right there, Devin, because we're going to answer more viewer questions, including this one. This is very trendy right now. Is it okay to sleep in separate? beds. A lot of people, they call it sleep divorce, but we'll talk about that right after this. Devin.
good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, you deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. <laughs> We're back with matchmaker Devin Simone, who's helping out our viewers with their relationship dilemmas. Are you ready, girl? I am. Viewer question number one. Our associate producer, Kieran, from New York, is getting one too many restless nights of sleep. Let's listen. So my partner and I have been together 12 years, and we usually sleep in the same bed. But recently I realized I need to sleep on my own in a separate bed to get a really good night's sleep. But when I brought this up to him, he was bothered. What should I do? I think something that's important to remember is that you, when you're in your partner's life, you want to enhance their life, not limit it, right? Like mm -hmm. you want them to live their best life mm -hmm. and get the most out of it. And so sometimes we forget that when a partner says, hey, I need more sleep or hey, mm -hmm. I need a little space. We get, per we're like, yeah, like why? why? But instead me. think of it like, think of it as if it were your best friend. You would want your best friend to feel their best yes. or go for the big thing or do that. And so the same is here. And I, it sounds like he tried talking to his partner. His partner didn't understand. So I would come back um, and have another conversation. I know I emphasize communication a lot, yeah. but it's important. And just say, look, I want to give you my best. I love being with you, yeah. but I know when I am hungry, I'm sleepy or, you know, uncomfortable as a whole, I'm not a lot of fun. Okay, here's next. Jasmine from Manitoba, Canada wants to know if, being too, if she's being too controlling. Let's take a look. Uh, my name's Jasmine, and I'm wondering who is in the wrong here? So it's like 3 o'clock, and I'm making dinner for my boyfriend, who usually gets home shortly after. Next thing you know, it's five o'clock. I give him a call and he says, hey, I'm just out for a quick one with the boys. Be home soon. Flash forward to eight o'clock. I'm calling and texting him. No response. Then finally at 2 a.m. I wake up and he still isn't home. When I call him, he's at a party. People online are saying that I'm being too controlling. Am I? Okay, this one apparently went viral. Yeah. How about Bye. That yeah. was not good. Yeah. yeah, she's being too nice, not too controlled. Yeah. That's just a lack of communication. It's not like she's saying, hey, you have to be here, but it's respectful to let your partner know and give a heads up, hey, I'm going to be out tonight, right? Or, hey, I'll be home at this time, especially if you live together, she could be worried about you. And then he, he lied because he said, I'll be home in a few. A few is not six hours later. No. One suggestion I would give for couples yeah. in general is don't assume on either side. So it's always okay. great to do a check-in earlier in the day. If you know that you know like hey are you working late tonight or hey I was thinking of making dinner kind of whatever your plans that way wires don't get crossed even when someone's not intentionally By I the mean way, he, if he was this dishonest, is a one-off right? if this happened once and the rest of the days are okay that's yeah. one thing but I, I I'm a real punctual person mm -hmm. and I was dating someone who was showing up 15 minutes late a half an hour late and I literally said to him mm -hmm. this is not my jam yep I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and and that was, and and he was like, oh, okay, I didn't know that yeah. was your thing. Yeah. Cool. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm because his thing was to be a little late. Mm -hmm. But I think if you say it, and also it shows you like, this is how I expect to be treated. Absolutely, you're setting boundaries. Yeah, you can set those boundaries let's, and say what works. Let's get for you. one more. We got Andre uh, from Toronto, Canada, wants to cut back on the time together. Many restless nights of sleep, etc. Take a look. I've been dating someone for the past nine months now, and we see each other five days a week, but I'd like it to go down to three. I don't want to break up either. What should I do? Usually you want to spend more time with the person and that commitment grows. If you want to spend less time, I'd really sit with myself, <laughs> maybe in a light, nice steamy bath yeah, or a shower and, and just say, is, is this the person I want to be with, because maybe that's trying to but tell maybe you something. If, what if you have, play devil's advocate, you have a full life. Right. You have a busy job, yes. you have things, you've had friendships for a long, long time, and you like your girlfriend mm -hmm. or you like your boyfriend, mm -hmm. but that's not going to be always on that's on the fair. menu every day. Yeah. You know, that's like, oh, I, yeah, I thought we were, we we're dating. Yeah. We're not, yeah. we, you know. That's totally fair, but I feel like usually in that case, then you go, you express to your partner or you set boundaries around, hey, love to see you, love to do dinner, but I have plans with I've the guys plans. tonight. Yeah. I have plans. You don't go, mm, you, you specifically, specifically hit <laughs> three and a half days, maybe right. two extra hours yeah, on holidays, yeah, 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 and I that's it. I hear you. Yeah. Devin, thank you. Always great advice. If you have a relationship dilemma, tell us about it. Go to hodaandjetta.com. Hit the connect button. We will be back right after this. Devin, you're pro.
Welcome to the third hour of today. Yes. We're so proud of you. Cross that finish line in yeah. style. Our <laughs> Chanel. This is for you, too. I had news anchors on one wall <laughs> and you. I love this stuff. Coming up next week, we have two Oscar winners, Jamie Lee Curtis and Jodie Foster, plus Law & Order SBU's Mariska Hargitay. You guys have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is here to show us how to turn an easy sheet pan recipe into the ultimate reboot bowl. Good morning, Joy. Hey, Joy. Good morning, guys. Lindsay, it's so nice to be here with you. you the too. last time we were together, I think we were having a vegetarian feast oh, in Connecticut, yes, right? We were at the right. tavern. That's, That's right. right. Yes. That's right. So I'm going to show you how to transform the easiest one sheet recipe into an energizing reboot bowl that has literally layers and layers of yummy goodness. But the best part, it is very, very simple to put together. So I'm gonna start with the sheet, the sheet pan recipe. Here I have three heaping cups of broccoli. So the, the, the big uh, theme here is gonna be lots of plants. This is three heaping cups of uh, sweet potato that I cubed, or you can ap absolutely use any kind of acorn or winter squash as well. And now I have more cruciferous vegetables, so loads of fiber, and that is our cauliflorets. Now I have one can of rinsed and drained, and very important, it's padded dry chickpeas because I'm adding in a lot of fiber and some protein now. A little bit of olive oil. I have about two to three tablespoons in here because I want all the seasonings to stick. Now, I like to over season. So I'm going to put in, th uh, this is two teaspoons of garlic powder and two teaspoons of onion powder. And I had some fresh rosemary in my fridge. So I chopped up and I have about two tablespoons here. But it's eater's choice. You can put in whatever herbs that you want. And you're just going to mix this up mm -hmm. to evenly distribute everything. You pour it onto your sheet pan. Brilliant. I missed it with a little bit of olive oil spray. And then I just put this. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I, I forgot about my salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. But it goes in the oven, set at 425 on the middle rack, just for about 30 to 35 minutes. And I flip it halfway through. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because you are going to get these gorgeous char marks. Look at this. Oh. This just came out of the oven. Do you, can oh, you see great. this? Let that me say. Nice. So when you're building the yeah. bowl, Joy, what layer goes first? Okay. So now for the fun part. And you are the boss of your bowl because there's so many different directions that you can customize this bowl. So here's my bowl. Mm -hmm. And the first layer is going to be dark leafy greens. Mm -hmm. So it could be spinach, kale. It could be any lettuce that you want. Oh. The next is going to be a heaping mound of those delicious caramelized addictive veggies mm. that we roasted mm. then a little bit of fruit so i'm oh. using a pear because i don't think pear gets enough love guys and it actually has a little bit more fiber than apples oh, but you that. can also use an apple mm -hmm. you could also use pomegranate seeds or um even uh, dried cranberries mm. or cherries anything goes and then the protein is your choice so wow. i put out a question on instagram earlier this morning and I asked my followers, what should I put on? Lentils, salmon, black beans, shrimp. I have chicken. I have tofu. I'm going to tell you the so tofu exactly came in last I place. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and go for the salmon this time. And last but not least, we so have the this well, mellow. Shows the salmon to put in the leafy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and we have a mellow but mouthwatering tahini dressing that I'm going to show you how to make because everybody needs that. We're not going to have time We're going to put that. that on the website. We'll put it on the website. But okay, thank you, you so much. It. That looks fantastic. Look, All right. Look at this. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a drizzle Beauty. because you got to oh, see this. Drizzle. And for this recipe, <laughs> head to today.com <laughs> slash food. Today, nutritionist Joy Bowers here joining us with a corn chowder and a spiced 
chai tea. Mm, Good let's morning, start cooking. Laura. Good morning. Oh, my people. Hey, guys. So today is all about warming the bones with okay. healthy foods and beverages. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to make is, like you mentioned, a cozy, creamy corn chowder. And I'm telling you, this is scrumptiously slurpable. Mm. I'm going to take you over to my stove. Okay. So here um, I have what I'm calling my nutrition confetti. All I've done is I sauteed some carrots, celery, and onions. It mm. kind of looks like confetti, doesn't Carrot, it? Celery, onions. Okay. okay. Um, and, and now we build the soup. It's as easy as that. Because corn is not in season, I'm taking advantage of canned corn actually for a few reasons. One is because I get to use it. You notice I didn't drain it. The juice, I, yeah. I'm using the flavorful broth that normally oh. we just discard. Mm -hmm. I'm putting two cans in there. Then I'm putting in a full um, four cups of either a vegetable broth or a chicken broth. What did and you use there? I would, I'm using, uh, this is a chicken broth, and I'm using a reduced sodium because I'm controlling mm -hmm. the salt. Okay. So there we have that. And then just a little bit of cayenne because it really does give it a pop of flavor. Okay. And then last, one pound of small red potatoes. I leave the skin on for extra fiber. And um, I cut them up into bite-sized pieces right. because I'm going to put a lid on this. I'm going to simmer it for about 15 minutes just until those potatoes get fork tender. Okay. I'm going to put this over here, and then the fun begins. I want a lot of body in this soup, so I use an immersion blender. But you can also do this in um, small batches in either a food processor or that, a regular yeah. blender. Okay. And see what I'm doing there? I'm just yeah. blending it so they get a lot of richness and body within that soup. And if anybody doesn't have a blender right. or an immersion blender, you can leave it chunky. It's totally mm -hmm. okay. It's so good. now, yeah, it's really good. You could stop right there, but right. we're not going to stop. Oh, right. no, so then not. to finish it off, more no texture, corn. I'm mm -hmm. adding in drained corn. So this time it's two cans of drained mm -hmm. corn. Because I saw all these and, like, whole corn kernels in there. I was wondering when they Yes. Were. And before I actually pureed the whole thing, mm -hmm. I like to reserve some of the potatoes, so again, for a little bit of texture and, mm -hmm. like, surprises as you slurp through. That's really good. And yeah. a dash of salt, and it makes a great big batch. And I like to Very garnish simple. it with Isn't a little really bit terrific? of dill. It's really good, Joy. How about the tea, Joy? Yeah, we'll try that. that. The chai tea? This is fantastic. The chai tea. So here we go. I put mm. four cups of water in here. I love chai because my kitchen smells so unbelievably right now. It really infuses it with such aroma. And in the four cups of water, my combination is some cinnamon sticks, ginger, a little bit of nutmeg, fennel, peppercorns, oh. cloves, and cardamom. Okay. And I give you a recipe for a balanced base, but really you could ramp up any of these spices if you like a stronger flavor. And so a as those were um, uh, simmering in here for about 15 minutes, then you put in your tea. So I have four tea bags that I added in. They've been in here for just about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Stick this over here. And now we build it. I add in three to four cups of the milk. Truth be told, I tried this with an almond milk, and it came out a little bit too thin, so I'm yeah. using a 2% reduced fat. Okay. And Maybe an oat a milk. Little I was going to ask you about oat milk, yeah. Oat milk would be fabulous. And this is a little bit of vanilla and a little bit of honey. And then I'm going to bring mm. you over mm. to my finished product. Come back with me okay. over here. I'm and sure it smells good, here, yeah. You can't I oh, strain it through a colander, mm -hmm. and here's the cool part. I feel like if you're going to be putting in so much effort, because it's much more involved than just steeping regular tea, mm -hmm. I make a great big batch, and then I stash it in the fridge, and whenever a craving calls, mm -hmm. I just warm it in the microwave, Very and you nice. have about seven cups. All right, Joy. Well, thank you much. We're, we are ready for the weekend. I know, thank cozy. You. Yummy, we yummy, yummy. It. Thank you, Joy.
Joy Bauer is upgrading our lunchtime with two, not one, but two tasty sandwiches that she makes in a skillet. Hey, good morning, Joy. Good hey, Joy. Joy. Hey. Good morning, guys. I think I'm about to become your new favorite lunch lady because we are seriously <laughs> creating next level sandwiches. And like you said, in the skillet. So the first sandwich is a fun spin on a traditional and beloved PB&J, mm -hmm. but I'm calling this one a grilled PB and fruit. So here I have hearty, seedy, whole grain bread. We're actually making two because I want to show you the versatility of the fruit. Mm -hmm. And I just put a tablespoon of peanut butter on all of the slices. So you want this peanut butter going on the bottom slice and the top slice, and then you become the Picasso of your decor, mm -hmm. right? So I have all this fruit over here. The cool thing is when you don't use sugary jam and you use the whole fruit, you're getting a lot of texture, you're getting a lot of hardiness, and you're getting the vitamins, the minerals, the antioxidants that the fruit brings to the table. Um, you could stick with one fruit. A lot of people just like PB and bananas, oh, yeah. or you could yep. do what I've done. And when you see the great over here, I did slice them in half. I just want to show you because mm -hmm. otherwise they would be they a little around. bit too bulky. <laughs> exactly. So then what you do, I'll show you on one. You take your top slice mm -hmm. and you put it over your Sammy and you take olive oil spray and give it a nice liberal spray okay. on both Instead sides. Instead of butter. Instead of butter, exactly. And this goes in the skillet just for one minute on either side. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because you can't believe how easy it is. Oh, wow. Jill, I thought you, is... you could do this. <laughs> and Joy, by the way, the production values, camera's moving, you got an overhead camera. It's a, 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 unbelievable. He's never coming back to the studio that, to bring us any of this food. That this Ian is Bauer is a superstar <laughs> husband and photographer. Yeah. Now, and I keep saying, like, he needs a, a, a like, a what, what would we call it, a, a COVID Emmy or something like that. He has learned how to do all of this. Well, High I'm, five for I'm Ian sending for him sure. that. And I think you need an Emmy, too, because you're actually going to show us how to make a sandwich that I never thought you can make healthier, a Monte Cristo. Mm. Oh, my goodness. This has so many layers of scrumptiousness. So what I'm starting with here, so these this is whole grain bread also, but for mm. this one, because... Yeah, it has a French toast melt in your mouth feel. Mm -hmm. You want a softer bread. So it's a whole grain softer bread. I put mm -hmm. Dijon mustard on one slice and let the layering begin. So we have here, I'm using ham because that's classic, but truth be told, you I don't love slice ham. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I had some extra here. Now, normally they top the French toast with some powdered sugar. So instead for a little sweet something, I put in a crisp Fuji apple. Mm. Then we have our Swiss cheese on top. Take the second piece of bread, so but because we're melting. making French toast, we have here an egg mixed with a little bit of vanilla extract oh, whoa. and a dash of milk. That looks this really. And how long does that go into the, the griddle? Skillet. About four minutes, I'm gonna grab it. About four minutes on each side, and you cannot Whoa. believe this that is just yummy. like a masterpiece. Let me see if I can get a close yeah, up. I'm gonna grab through the screen, that, Joy. That is fantastic, <laughs> Joy. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And for you these recipes it. and more, head to today.com slash food.
Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is ripping up a barbecue salmon bowl mm. packed with flavor and nutrients. Good morning to you. Hey, Joy. Good morning, guys. So nice to see you. You too. too. Well, before we dig in here, can you talk about some good superfoods that all of us can incorporate um, into our diets? Definitely. So I put together a list of five superfoods. I mean, these are some of the best of the best foods that everyone should be eating, but I specifically designed this list for women. And the okay. first one is spinach. Spinach is basically nature's multivitamin. When I tell you, it has countless, countless vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and fiber. But interestingly enough, it has a unique combination of two potent antioxidants called lutein and zeaxanthin that help to promote sharp vision. And also, it's a great source of plant-based iron, which helps us to maintain our energy levels. The next on the list is salmon. I mean, this tops every single list. It has a lot of high quality protein. It also has all the essential amino acids. So that means it helps us to maintain our muscle mass. And as we get older, it keeps our metabolism revved. But of course, salmon is world famous for its omega-3 fats. And omega-3 fats are super important because first, they tame inflammation in the body. They also support heart health. They help to drive down triglycerides and they manage blood pressure. But they also help to regulate your mood. And one other thing I'm going to say about salmon, I could talk about salmon all day. But we don't, we don't have all day, Joyce. <laughs> we got we to move on here. So how are we going to start combining all these things? Well, three other foods we have are beans, we have for skin health, our tomatoes, and last but not least, I'm touting almonds. All, almond, all nuts are winners, but almonds have the added bonus of calcium. So okay. I'm going to take all of these foods and we're going to turn it into kind of like a boss lady bowl. This is okay. a barbecue salmon bowl that has everything. While so you're throwing I started, this all together, Joy, I still want to know what you were going to say about salmon. <laughs> Salmon has vitamin D, and vitamin okay. D helps to keep our immune system strong. There you go. And okay. also helps with bones, healthy bones and teeth. So okay. here we have all of our spinach, and I chopped this spinach up because it works better in the bowl. Okay. And now we take our award-winning salmon. That salmon and this is a little, delicious. Is it just salt and, and pepper on there? Salt and pepper and extra virgin olive oil. That's mm. it. And you mash it right up. It's the easiest thing. And you could do this with leftover salmon as well. So you already know that this bowl is packed with the good stuff. Now I'm adding in my beans. Before, what I was going to say about beans, they have a great combination of plant-based protein and fiber, which steadies your blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. Now we have our tomatoes. Tomatoes have lycopene and vitamin C, which protects our skin from the sun's harmful rays. This is just some extras because we want to make this bowl extra delicious. We've got some corn, Colorful super healthy. Too. Look at the um, the pop of color from the red onion. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, actually, I'm going to squeeze on a little bit of lime juice. Mm -hmm. And you could add a little bit of cumin or salt and pepper if you want. And here comes the barbecue sauce because this is a Wait, we're barbecue, allowed to have barbecue salmon sauce? bowl. You can, and there's a lot of great brands that are lower in sugar, but you're only using about two to three tablespoons, okay. and this is instead of dressing. Now, it's almost complete, but there was one last superfood that I touted, and that the was almonds? the almonds. Mm. So I'm going to add in mm. a sprinkle of almonds for some crunch, fun. and I love, whoops, I love scallions, and guys, this is a boss lady And that's one serving? It's no. <laughs> one Serving. No, no it's it one is. serving. That's one and serving. It's packed with oh, protein we thought you were just, and fiber. That's amazing. Yeah. No, guys, fill you up for a I while. Mean, yeah. This is uh, really yeah. good stuff. Joy Bauer is here with two dinner recipes that, that Joy, they we're just using one pan, right? One pan. Forget it's officially about all those bowls. sheet. No, sheet pan <laughs> superfood Friday. The best. And again, it is. There's so much to love about these recipes because, like you said, Craig, they're easy to make, they're packed with nutrition, and they're totally delicious. And we're starting with what I'm calling a sheet pan harissa salmon with vegetables. And step one is to roast those vegetables. So in the spirit of convenience, I'm using baby carrots. They're already cut and washed for you. And here, some cauliflower florets, mm. nice. a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, and a little bit of salt and pepper, and that's it. Now, I'm gonna mix this up. I preset the oven for 450. These are hearty vegetables, and I'm gonna lay them out on my baking sheet in a single file. And Joy, how do you make sure you don't burn the vegetables when you're roasting at such high heat? 
So I definitely keep a watch on them, but for these, I put them in for about 25 minutes, and I like to make sure that the carrots are fork tender. Again, mm -hmm. they're hearty, so they take a little bit of a little bit in that oven on high mm -hmm. heat. And I like that cauliflower to get oh, charred and slightly so burnt good. on top. It's like melt in your mm -hmm. mouth. It makes you scream for another bite. Now, <laughs> while these are in the oven, we're gonna do the magic sauce. So what happens here is in a bowl, I mix. Harissa is a chili paste. It's from, it's Middle Eastern and it's North African. And it has olive oil and a whole lot of warm, wonderful spices. I added some sweet citrus orange juice to sort of make it pop and a little bit of ground ginger. And I just mix this up. And again, guys, this is while the veggies are roasting in the oven. Now you take your salmon fillets and upside down, if you do have the skin on, you just sort of dunk it in, submerge it in that bowl and let them sit and marinate and soak up all the mm. yummy sauce while the veggies are in. Then when the veggies come out, you nestle the salmon nestle. slices, mm. uh, nestle this in between delicious. the veggies. Right, and you want to make sure that they're touching the heated pan. So get all four of those fillets in. Whoops, I did that upside down, Joy. I was going to say, <laughs> wait, which way are we putting? All right, so skin side no. down. Skin side down, or you could also buy fillets that don't have the skin, whichever mm -hmm. you prefer. Oh, and then the remaining sauce goes on top. And then this goes back in the oven again on 450. Keep the heat going for just 10 minutes. Ooh. And then you put some herbs on top, and you got oh, yourself a party. That's wow. all there is to it. Now you got a cheesy one it. for us, right? Okay. So now we're going to change directions, guys. We are making a sheet pan baked feta, sausage, and veggies. I needed mm, to jump on this trend. Everybody's talking about the baked feta yes. now. And this time I'm using very different vegetables. So these kind of scream summer. I have beautiful, vibrant tomatoes. I have sweet kernels of corn. I use canned corn. Mm -hmm. It works with frozen too. But corn. if you have fresh corn, of course. And we have some uh, zucchini, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. This time I'm adding in ground cumin and some crushed red pepper flakes some lime slices, and a little bit of salt. So this also will get all stirred up. It's gonna go on your baking sheet. This goes in the oven. These are a little bit more delicate, these vegetables. So the oven is set at 425 just for 20 minutes. Then you take it out and you're gonna put in pre-cooked sliced poultry sausage. Again, nestle it right in <laughs> with the vegetables. And then sticks of feta. You're going to, mm. there, there goes my sausage. And there's all types of pre-cooked varieties at the market. Mm -hmm. And I buy the block feta, cut it into strips. It never melts no. in the oven, but it sort of becomes softer and spreadable. Mm. And guys, I'm telling you, you take this out, you give it a squeeze with fresh lime juice oh, and some fantastic. herbs. And if you could get a bite with all three, the feta, the vegetables, and mm. the sausage, that's you that looks are amazing. Mm. Well, you know, Joy, halloumi so cheese would be probably great with that, too. Mm. Wow, wow that a, would be super. It's a, it's a Greek grilling cheese. Oh. So Joy, do. thank you. Joy, that was awesome. You thank you it. so much. Have a great weekend, Joy. Ooh, I want all bye of bye that. Guys. Folks, for those recipes, it's very simple. Today.com slash food.
our good pal today, nutritionist Joy Bauer, back with two easy, delicious ways to dress up a simple piece of toast. Mm. Mm. Happy New Year, everyone. Today, I am toasting a healthier 2021 with two scrumptious spins on toast. First, an addictive chocolate peanut butter spread. The secret ingredient is this peanut powder. And you can find this in uh, the grocery store or you could order it online. And it is packed with protein. Next, cocoa powder, which is filled with brain-boosting flavonoids some sugar, and a pinch of salt. And then I'm gonna add six to eight tablespoons of water. And this is going to mix together to create the creamiest, dreamiest chocolate peanut butter spread. Just keep stirring and look at this, guys. It transforms into a delicious, lick the spoon, addictive spread. And now we are ready to build our toast. Putting a nice generous amount of my chocolate peanut butter spread right on the toast. I'm gonna to top it with potassium packed bananas. And really you could put whatever fruit you want on top. And of course the bananas have potassium, they have fiber. And on this slice, I'm also gonna add some vitamin C rich strawberries for extra flavor and extra nutrition. And the best part, Guys, there is so much chocolate peanut butter sauce left over for dipping. <laughs> and now for some savory satisfaction. Caprese toast. It's a classic combo that is completely customizable. And I'm starting with the bottom base of mashed avocado. And avocado is great because it's loaded with heart healthy fat, it's got potassium, and it's got a lot of fiber too. So I'm just mashing this down as our first layer, and you probably know what comes next. Lycopene rich tomatoes. They also have vitamin C, which boosts the immune system. And I'm putting on mozzarella, which adds some calcium. And last but not least, just some torn basil leaves, which makes the kitchen smell so good. This is one layered tower of deliciousness. But one more thing. I like to drizzle on a balsamic glaze right over the top. And if you can't find balsamic glaze, you could also take regular balsamic vinegar and you can reduce it in a small saucepan over a low heat for about 10, 20 minutes and it will thicken right up. And that's what I call a toast to a healthy 2021. Mm. Welcome to today all day. All day? Today all day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things. Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, oh, oh. now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. Doesn't it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. There is new evidence this morning that the so-called Mediterranean diet, it can sharply reduce your chances of developing dementia, even if you have a genetic risk for it. NBC News medical contributor Dr. Natalie Azar here, is here to tell us about the new study, and that could have us eating healthier. 
What encouraging news. Yeah. I mean, yeah. anything can fight back against dementia and Alzheimer's, but this is a diet that a lot of people have been on or are on. Absolutely, Hoda. It is definitely another vote for the Mediterranean diet. So this study looked at over 60,000 individuals who were middle-aged um, and followed them for about nine years. Ooh. And there were close to 900 cases of dementia. People who followed strictly a Mediterranean diet had almost a quarter lower chance of developing dementia. And as you said in the lead, they actually took into account genetic risk, and that didn't even make a difference, which is really, really encouraging because you think that certain things are predetermined, mm -hmm. but this is the kind of thing that we can all actually implement in our lives. Can you remind everybody what the Mediterranean yeah. Yeah. diet is and, and then why it might have affected something to do with your brain health? Right. So, so the Mediterranean diet, think plant-based. Okay, Ooh. so we're talking about fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, seeds, legumes, things like that, fish, seafood, olive oil. You want to limit or eat in moderation mm -hmm. red meat, eggs, poultry, cheese, yogurt, and sweets. Why is it? Well, you know, some people have said maybe it's not a direct effect on the brain, but maybe because it's reducing inflammation, it's, mm -hmm. it has antioxidants, that it's helping your heart health, that helps the blood vessels in the brain. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know exactly why, but nonetheless, this is very compelling. It was such a large study. Besides the, the change of diet, are there yes. ways that, that folks might be able to reduce the likelihood that they develop Alzheimer's or, or dementia? Absolutely. And all of these things, again, are lifestyle changes, getting adequate sleep, controlling your blood mm -hmm. pressure, controlling cholesterol your blood glucose, staying physically and mentally active. These are all things that can help with cognitive decline and hopefully stave off the risk of dementia. Okay, okay. thank you, Dr. Dr. Natalie. Yeah. Diet can play a big part in our ability to stay sharp and may even reduce your risk of cognitive diseases such as Alzheimer's. Here's a look at how the foods we choose can impact our ability to focus and function. We have all felt that dreaded mid-afternoon slump, and it turns out there's a reason for it. What's happening in the brain when you feel this slump is it doesn't have the fuel it needs. The fuel that you're providing all have an impact on whether or not your brain will be as sharp as it humanly can be. That fuel comes in the form of food. 20% of the calories you consume go toward brain function, which needs specific nutrients to focus and function fully throughout the day. What goes into our bodies is almost certainly going to reflect itself in our brains. We're in an era now where we can get all kinds of processed, packaged foods that aren't necessarily what our bodies have evolved to deal with. To keep our health maximal, what you want to do is eat naturally. Research shows that people who eat a primarily plant-based diet are more likely to experience brain-boosting benefits both short-term and long-term. The clearest evidence of benefit and risk reduction revolves around the MIND diet and the Mediterranean diet, which have both been studied quite well and show good effects. MIND diet stands for Mediterranean Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay. It's broken down into a list of healthy foods like leafy greens, beans, nuts, whole grains, fatty fish, having about two servings of berries every day actually help to reduce cognitive decline by about two and a half years. Of course, there are foods to limit too. Things you want to avoid are going to be anything that is high in sugar, refined carbohydrates, so white pasta, white bread, obviously any sugary drinks. You want to limit the amount of overall saturated fat that's coming into your diet, typically coming from meat, animal products such as high fat dairy, things of that nature. 75% of the brain is made up of water, so what you drink is important too. Many times when people say they feel drained of energy or they're hungry, they're just dehydrated. Water is really critical as a drink. Coffee is great. Any kind of tea will have benefit. In the short term, there's no doubt that caffeine improves processing speed and helps with attention. A lifetime habit of caffeinated beverages may be protective against brain disorders later. Psychologically, people see the effects of a diet shift pretty rapidly. They start feeling better, they start having more energy, and this cascades into all sorts of other things in life, like how happy you are and how well you're sleeping at night. So when people shift their diets so that they're eating well, it really matters. A brain-healthy diet may also help prevent cognitive diseases, like Alzheimer's, which is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. 64-year-old Debbie Morden has a history of Alzheimer's in her family. My father had Alzheimer's for 12 years. 
His brother had Alzheimer's and three of his first cousins had Alzheimer's. Debbie has tested positive for an Alzheimer's gene and is taking a proactive approach. She's seen an Alzheimer's prevention specialist who recommended the MIND diet. That gene means I have a higher risk of Alzheimer's. I went on basically a vegan diet except for fish. I've cut out dairy and I'm eating more grains and more legumes, increasing olive oil and a daily intake of berries and also lowered alcohol to four ounces of red wine a couple times a week. After eight months, Debbie has significantly lowered her cholesterol and hopes her new diet will ward off cognitive deterioration. I watched my father for 12 years decline. The whole thing with, with Alzheimer's, it starts developing 10 to 20 years before you see signs of it. So you want to start preventing it as early as possible. I'm making the changes because I want to live a healthy life as long as I can and enjoy it. Whether you're 85 or you're eight, now is the time to start building that base. Diet can prevent certain things. And I never want to have a conversation with my patient where they've developed something and we didn't have the years to work into that prevention factor. It's something you have to commit to and do it for the long haul. We always say we want a brain span to match your lifespan. For more on the Mind Diet, head to hodaandjenna.com. with more is the author of This Is Your Brain on Food, Dr. Uma Naidu. Welcome, Dr. Naidu. Hi, Dr. Naidu. Uh, thank you so much, Jenna and Hoda. I'm a big fan, so oh. I'm excited to be here. That thank is so you. sweet. Okay, you know what? I I sort of like know in theory how this works because I know when I eat terrible food the night before, I wake up the next day and I feel even worse. And my goal in eating that terrible food is to soothe myself at night. For eating. So there's a real direct correlation between your gut and your brain. Exactly. You know, Hoda, you'd be surprised to know that some people call the gut the second brain. Mm. And here's why. They have a profound influence on one another, and they actually have the same origin in the body. So I think that's something useful for people to know when they, you know, when they're making a decision about what to eat. Mm. Okay. So w we wake up in the morning. Sometimes we have those days where we're feeling sluggish. Yeah. We're not motivated. Yeah. And I've noticed that if I eat certain things... I yeah. feel worse. Yeah. So, but what can we eat to make us start our day on the right path? Mm -hmm. That's a great question because I think we're all feeling a little bit of that these days. I like to add spices. So, you know, you could add things like black pepper, cinnamon, and ginger, which are actually ingredients of my grandmother's chai tea recipe, but mm. they're great to kind of liven things up. Also things like saffron, which can be added. It's a great aromatic. It can be added to a risotto or adding, you know, things like rosemary and sage to a roasted roasted veggies can help liven things up for you and make you because what you're trying to do is feel more alert and um, you know feel feel more energy as well what would you say is like the best breakfast if you want to start the day mm -hmm. right 
So I actually love uh, either something like a chia pudding or, you know, chia pudding, a little bit of coconut milk and topped with um, lots of different nuts. And my favorite go-to nuts that are great brain foods are either hazelnuts or macadamia. And, you know, a simple thing like that that you can even make ahead is mm -hmm. a great way to, you know, you can plan for the week, uh, set out your little chia puddings and you have them ready to go. So we have been talking all morning about how people are more anxious than ever. Mm -hmm. What are some foods that it can actually help soothe anxiety. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I think the uncertainty is what's so difficult for people, and this is where fiber is your friend. Mm. Um, so adding in fiber-rich foods that you get from, you know, vegetables, um, certain berries, uh, beans, nuts, seeds, and legumes, those help to sort of even out your, um, your blood sugar levels because they break down more slowly in the body. But it's also important to know things to avoid when you're feeling anxious. Yes. And what I like to remind people about here is that there's sometimes hidden sources of caffeine that we don't think about, um, such as, you know, sodas that have caffeine or other beverages, and then things like, um, you know, chocolate could have caffeine. And mm -hmm. um, some over-the-counter headache pills as well. Mm -hmm. So you want, you want to try to avoid these if you're feeling super anxious and you're feeling stressed. What if you're feeling just down? You don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's a funk or whatever. And usually in those yeah. moments, that's when you go for the comfort yes, food that like really the take you down the rabbit hole. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's a long rabbit hole. So, so I, I like to suggest things that people can do right now. You know, adding prebiotic or probiotic rich foods, which are fermented foods, um, into your diet even right now can really help you and start to make a difference. Um, but, you know, I also think the same thing with depression. Hold on, Jenna. I think that also knowing things to avoid becomes super important. And here's where I want people to know that there are actually a lot of studies that show that sugar is associated quite profoundly with levels of depression. Mm. And um, things like, you know, nitrates, which you find in processed meats, um, are also uh, linked to depression. So maybe cut back on those foods and add back, you know, prebiotic rich foods and probiotics, which are usually fermented foods, like, like kefir, unsweetened, and things like that. Like what, what were the pre or probiotic foods that are, we can try? So prebiotic foods are like garlic, leeks, onions, um, you know, it's different types of vegetables. And these feed the good bugs in your gut and help and really help you stave off symptoms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then probiotics are usually, usually a supplement, but fermented foods um, are rich in these active cultures and things like miso, kimchi, unsweetened kefir, sauerkraut, um, kombucha mm. are all good options for oh, you. Okay. So I think a lot of people are having a hard time sleeping. Mm -hmm. Some, I, I used to drink chamomile tea before mm -hmm. bed. Let's talk about things that are good for sleep and then mm -hmm. the benefits of chamomile tea. Absolutely. So chamomile, you know, the great aroma really helps us to de-stress and it's well known. I also have another tip about de-stressing, which is turmeric with black pepper, a pinch of black pepper. And you can add it to a soup or smoothie. And why turmeric with a pinch of black pepper? It hits the high notes on so many conditions in mental wellness. So that's that's one of my go-tos. Great. Okay. Dr. Naidu, thank you so thank much. You. We appreciate you. Okay, are you ready to feel your best yet? If the answer is yes, we've got some power foods to tell you about that can improve your overall health and wellness. We're talking about immunity, sleep, brain health, all the things max. So Lugavere is a health and science journalist. His recent book is called Genius, Genius Kitchen. Kitchen. First of all, I love the fact that the things we need are right in front of us, right in the fridge, right in the supermarket that can actually help us physically. We're always taking pills if we have yeah. a problem. We're not working the front food end. Food is medicine. It's such yeah. a cool way to think yeah. about life, right? It is. I mean, yeah, food is so powerful. I mean, with, with every bite you take, you are essentially either feeding or fighting disease. And so I'm here to pre present some of what I think are the most powerful foods available to most people in your average okay. supermarket. Okay. Mushrooms, yeah. they're all over the place. Yeah, so mushrooms can actually be used to balance immune function, to foster better immunity. Wow. So there are a few mechanisms here which are, are still being elucidated, yeah. but essentially some mushrooms create vitamin D, which can tamper down an overactive immune response. Mm -hmm. But I think most interestingly, mushrooms like lion's mushrooms, mane, so. which are typically pretty available, they actually create antioxidants that we produce in our own bodies, one of which is called glutathione. It's considered oh. the mother of all antioxidants. It helps to detox. Mm and reduce What's, oxidative which stress. Which one's lion's mane, this one? 
So that's oyster, right? Yeah. So oh, we have. Is that lion mane? That's not a lion's mane. No, lion's mane actually has like a. It has the consistency of crab, fresh crab. It's oh. really, really good. By the way, tasty. whatever this one is, it's really good. I want to keep eating it. Here's a tip. Actually, you don't want to rinse mushrooms. You just want to. You just oh, want eat to. A little dirty. dirty. Cook them. Yeah, eat them a little dirty with some nice uh, okay. butter or olive okay, oil. Okay, move on to kiwi. kiwi. So here we've got kiwi. Kiwi can be used to promote better digestion and good sleep. So we're seeing clinical trials Ooh, now wow. that two kiwi a day. Yeah, actually, in a head-to-head -head match against psyllium <laughs> husk, kiwi has been shown to to help uh, reduce constipation, which a lot oh. of people suffer from, and also, <laughs> yeah, can, can help fight constipation and also improve sleep too before Should bed. Should you skin on or off? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked. Eat the kiwi with the skin what? because skin the skin on. contains Skin's more good. vitamin E. Uh, and, I'm never yeah. eating a kiwi bite. with skin. Yeah, it's good. People think that it's weird, but it's, it's actually bad. really tart and delicious. Mm -hmm. You like it's it? Not bad. I don't it's know bad. that I could force my kids to eat. Wow, it's tart. It's good, tart. right? But it balances out the okay. sweet. But what, a, what if the kid done eat it? Is it okay, the middle stuff? Yeah, the middle is great, go. too. The middle is great, okay. too. Okay, let's get to these fruits. Okay, so here we have brain foods. So these foods are loaded with compounds called flavonoids, which are plant pigments that are usually in the outer skin. We've got apples, we've got citrus, we've got plums. Berries are a great mm. source of flavonoids. They've been shown to boost BDNF in the blood, which is a, a miracle grow protein that actually helps to support healthy neurons. BDNF, it's BDNF, called? BDNF, yeah. Okay. We produce it in our muscles when we work out. One of the reasons why exercise is so great, but this has actually been shown to boost it. So you never know. An apple a day might keep the neurologist doesn't, away. Doesn't matter red or green, whatever? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. High Got flavonoid it. foods. Okay, right. let's there go to go. strawberries mm. and almonds. Yeah, so these are anti-aging foods. Strawberries are rich in a compound called fisetin, which is known as a senolytic. So we have in our bodies, all of us, especially as we age, uh, cells called senescent cells okay. that secrete pro-inflammatory compounds that can make, make our skin look uh, more aged. And so these actually fight aging by helping to kill off those <laughs> zombie cells, yeah. You can actually no, thank you, zombie scouts. Mm. And actually, this is actually also very interesting. Strawberry leaves are rich in caffeic acid, which is a very powerful antioxidant. So eat the leaf? So when you yeah, eat you a eat strawberry, you eat the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, I do. And almonds are loaded with magnesium, which 50% of Americans don't consume adequate uh, amounts of. And magnesium can help fight DNA damage. Wow, so, this is crazy. Again, yeah. Okay, hit us with the last one. Okay, so here we've got dark chocolate and coffee. So this, I mean, people are probably at home rejoicing. I am. Loaded with compounds called flavanols. When you buy dark chocolate, you want to make sure that the cacao percentage is high, and it's not. it hasn't been processed with alkali, also known as Dutch processed, which greatly degrades oh. the health quality of the uh, chocolate. And then from, a, uh, from the standpoint of coffee, coffee's long been associated with better cardiovascular yeah. health, reduced risk for Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative conditions. And we now know that, there, that caffeine actually can help promote better lipids in the blood, so better, like, uh, healthier cholesterol levels. Wow.
Welcome back. It is Super Food Friday. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is back, and this week she has not one, not two, but three surprising superfoods that could help boost brain power and enhance your memory. This is exciting. First of all, the role that food plays in terms of our, our memory, in terms of our brain health and all that. Which is a great question. So there's a lot of studies that we have right. now that are showing that there are certain compounds within foods and beverages okay. that can help to slow cognitive decline and also boost memory, boost brain power, it's all good. And I'm gonna feature three today. Let's start with the blueberries. Blueberries, you can tell from their color, they are packed with antioxidants. And in fact, that they rank number one when the USDA did like a huge rally of all of the fruits and vegetables. Number one. Number okay. one. Hmm. And they get their blue color from something called anthocyanins. That's the name of the antioxidant. And we know that that helps to boost brain power. There's actually even a Harvard study that shows if these women, they ate one cup a week. That's not a lot. Mm -hmm. And they had significant increase in their smarts. They did mm -hmm. all sorts of tests and stuff. How easy is that, oh, right? Yeah. You could throw them in pancake batter and muffin yeah. batter on your oatmeal. But this is my favorite way. Classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Swap out the sugary jam oh, and just put whole blueberries. And this is so fun out. for your kids. Huh. No, they stick because of the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. And then um, for kids, you can make a tic-tac-toe board. Oh, this is like the ultimate pre-exam morning breakfast. I love that. <laughs> that's a great idea. So cocoa powder is the next superfood. Cocoa powder is like the king of dark chocolate because it's 100% dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. And they contain something called flavanols. It's another type of antioxidant that we know can keep your blood vessels healthy and elastic, which means a healthy heart. And a healthy heart equals a healthy brain, because when your blood vessels are open and elastic and healthy and happy, all of the nutrition goes right up to your brain. You get more oxygen, you get more nutrients. So what I'm going to show you that you can do is add, it's not sweet, cocoa powder is not sweet and indulgent like dark chocolate, but you could do a lot of things with it. Okay. If you take some and you mix it into, this is just a vanilla low-fat yogurt. Yogurt. Mm -hmm. Two ingredients, and you've now some. made a brain-boosting chocolate pudding. So my kids oh. will just think they're having chocolate pudding, just and really... Just it's chocolate pudding. Really? Oh, wow. Mm. Isn't that good? Two like ingredients. Now this Nothing get easier than that. This is the most right. surprising superfood to me. Work. Coffee? Coffee. Al, every single week we are hearing more and more studies showing that yeah. the benefits in terms of brain health for coffee. We used to think it was just the caffeine. We know yeah. that caffeine keeps you alert, it wakes you up, mm -hmm. but it's a combination of the caffeine and the antioxidants within coffee uh. that could help boost brain power. And that's really good news because a lot of people are caffeine sensitive. Mm -hmm. So that means decaf gives you these health perks as well. And all you need is about a half a cup to four cups a day to reap these benefits. So you're making a, a breakfast co uh, cookie. I I developed, I'm calling this You're my so exclusive, I'm so excited about these cookies. These are brain boosting breakfast coffee cookies. This is exclusive to okay. the Today Show. Just to the Today yeah. Show. I'm going to put them on Instagram and I'm going to put them on our website. So for the dry ingredients, it's um, whole grain flour, we have cocoa powder, some mm. cinnamon, and we have a little bit of uh, baking powder. And some salt. And some salt, kosher salt. Now I'm adding instant coffee, oh. boom, oh. right just, into the batter. We're gonna so mix. I thought that was connected to this, but no, this is just instant coffee. This is just instant okay. coffee. You could also use finely powdered regular coffee mm -hmm. as well, but it's easy to buy the instant. So you mix okay. this up. Yeah, What's so the wet ingredients are a lot of usual breakfast foods. I have Greek yogurt, I have eggs, I have mashed banana, and a little bit of honey. You mix oh, these two okay. things in, then you fold in your blueberries, because oh, all three superfoods are in here. That's Go amazing. taste a cookie, see what you think. Right. Right. And then a little bit of chocolate there. chips. Each cookie is only oh, 80 wow. calories and comes packed with protein and fiber so you could have three with a cup of coffee for breakfast. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Wait, Joy, three. thank three you cookies. so much. Three cookies for breakfast. For these recipes, go to today.com health and we'll be right back. Cheers. Oh, oh my goodness.
we're going to tell you about five foods to add to your diet to help improve memory, energy levels, and sleep. Dr. Taz Batia is an integrative wellness physician and host of the Superwoman Wellness Podcast. But this is for everybody. Dr. Yes. Taz, good morning. Good morning. So you're saying before we get to it that, that if you start incorporating these into your diet, you'll see results relatively quickly? The beauty about kind of getting your diet right is usually within three weeks, oh. you can see a change. And it can be as quiet as you have more sleep and you have more energy to like you're on and you're focused and ready to go. Wow. What is it about these foods that we're going to look at here? What is it about these particular foods and, and other items that give the brain that boost? Well, what, why we have picked these foods is because we call them superfoods. They just have a ton of nutrients for every serving. Okay. So they're su they're efficient, right? So if you're trying to get these nutrients in, this is an efficient way to do it to keep your brain and your energy superpowered. All right. Our first super ingredient is yes. magnesium. Where do we find that? So magnesium, I always call the miracle micronutrient. It helps us with sleep. It helps calm us down. It helps balance serotonin. Try that. It's Believe so it or not, dark chocolate is going to be oh, one of our direction. best sources. An ounce of it has about 64 milligrams of magnesium okay. in it. Legumes are great. They come in at about 70 milligrams. A tablespoon of flax, which you see right here, mm -hmm. at about 40. Avocado also has magnesium, but less than the dark chocolate. So you, <laughs> you have this recipe, these little balls. What are in those then? So it's a lot of cacao, which has a lot of the magnesium mm -hmm. and the antioxidants in it, almond butter for the healthy fats, flax seeds, mm -hmm. mix it up together, super easy, has a little bit of oat too. A little dark chocolate in there. A little dark there. chocolate in there, so it's, it's yummy, yummy right? Yeah. Yeah. And not too much calories no, either, Not too many it? calories, so no. we have a chocolate Let's craving, you go for Let's it. Let's talk collagen here, because yes. collagen, you say, is, it's actually naturally occurring in our bodies. We all have it. We've all got collagen. It's naturally occurring. We know it for skin and health, hair and overall health, but it actually helps support the gut lining, helping us to absorb the nutrients. So many people are eating healthy, but they're not absorbing what they're eating. Collagen comes in and helps us with that, helps the brain, helps energy. It's in a lot of naturally occurring proteins. So we've got salmon here, for example, and chicken. You know, these are things that are a great way to get salmon in. This looks like chicken this stock. Is, How would you use it? This is bone broth. Bone so broth. Some people oh. will just drink bone broth and get a great Roker, source Roker of collagen. Doesn't. Try a smig. Roker does Wash that out. If, if you're vegetarian, you can get some collagen from your vegetables as well. It's just that we get a lot more through our proteins and through our bone broth. Okay. I, I, these are cruciferous. Those are can cruciferous. you only get the collagen from cruciferous? Not necessarily. Okay. No, no, you can get it from other vegetables as well. It's just not as dense. All right, this is a new one on me. Choline. What is that? Why is it good? So choline, I feel like, doesn't get enough press, and I'm so glad we're talking about it today. So choline actually is a nutrient that comes in and coats all our nerves. So it helps us with learning, Never with memory, that. with hmm. focus. And we really want to get choline in our diet. So choline is naturally found in eggs. Eggs are one of the best sources. But you've got to eat the egg yolk. Okay. The yolk has the choline, has about 140 milligrams. We've got mushrooms and burgers here. Which one do you think has more choline? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. You guys win. Good yeah. job. So mushrooms actually have more choline. How than many a burger. eggs would you have to eat, or mushrooms? Like, what's a serving to get enough choline so any given day? So just this is the beauty of eggs. One full egg, including oh. the yolk, will okay. do it. You need a cup of mushrooms. You actually need two burgers to get the choline. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ooh, I love choline. Mushroom. Yeah. Mushrooms and eggs, I guess. There yeah. we go. This, this, is, burger. this is something. I've never heard of. Oh, ghee. I've heard of this. I've it's like butter or something? Ghee is uh, it's like butter. That's a great way to think about it. It's clarified butter. It's been used in Eastern systems of medicine for a really long time. And it's been used as a healing fat. Mm. And the reason is, is because ghee actually has less lactose, less casein. So if you've got somebody that's dairy intolerant, yeah. can't tolerate that stuff, they can usually tolerate ghee very well. But the secret superfood ingredient here is MCT, or medium chain triglycerides. That helps the brain. It helps the gut. It balances everything everything living down here in the mm. gut. And that is really the powerhouse, the source of our energy. So if we're not getting some of these healthy fats in, that's one of the biggest reasons I see brain and energy start to go How down. How do you get ghee in your diet? I'm not looking to yes, take a big old no, bite we don't want you, we, And we don't want you, you to do that. you put it on toast? You can put it on toast. Literally, all you need is about a quarter to a oh, half wait, of a teaspoon. Sure that, a tiny little bit. A tiny little teaspoon. You don't need okay. a lot. And you can spread it on something. You, it also has a higher smoke point, so you can bake and fry with it oh, as well. Okay. So you can use it as as butter. Exactly. This morning's guest, the lovely Janae Claiborne. 
All right. She is, and this is my turn. Okay. Uh, she is the blogger and mastermind behind Sweet meditating. Potato. So I was. I was very zen. Uh, where she, her mission is to make vegan food easily and approachable. And I love this, that it's going to be done with tacos. Well, there's a thing called Veganuary that has been a top of Google searches for the month. Veganuary? Uh, is that what it is? I don't know. Yeah. Veganuary? I've never heard of it. Veganuary. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's how far I am from Thank ever doing this. Thing. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, so you're going to share two meals for us that are very easy. They're easy to make. They're also good for you. They're packed with flavor. Janae, why are people ditching meat and dairy and, and going the, the vegan route? Well, first off, it's because it makes them feel so much better when you're eating vegan food, when especially eating wholesome vegan food. So, you know, things made up of cauliflower and all your greens, beans, whole grains and such. You're going to feel lighter. You're going to have more energy. Your digestion is going to work better. So people really want to take advantage of all of those amazing benefits this time of year, and hopefully they'll stick with it beyond January. What is on your v Veganuary menu today? <laughs> okay, so today we're making a couple of my most famous recipes. My cauliflower fried chicken. Yes, cauliflower fried chicken. So we're using a cauliflower. I want to show you how I cut it up into little florets that kind of, you know, they're going to resemble fried chicken. Like we have this finished dish right here. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm basically just using a regular fried chicken batter. So here I have some flour. I'm going to stir it up. I have um, nutritional yeast in here, which is a vegan little secret. We have Old Bay, smoked paprika, um, onion powder, all that stuff that you would usually use mm. for a fried chicken mm. batter. And then over here we have the wet. So we have some soy milk over here. You can use any non-dairy milk some mustard and some hot sauce, because this is gonna be a spicy, spicy fried chicken. Mm. So I just uh, turned that up together. So here's the thing. When you're gonna do this, you wanna double batter it. First, you do your, your wet. Mm. So dip, 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 put it into the dry. Use a different hand. We're not gonna cross this, right? Use a different hand for the dry. Stick it back oh, into the wet, dredge. all right? Mm. Double dredge that, Why okay? Why do we do and that? Then you do that because then you're going to have more flavor oh. on your, you know, the fried batter. It's going to be crunchier. Crushed. It's going to be more crunch, flavorful. Yeah. It's going to be so good. And you're just going to fry this for about four minutes, four to five minutes until it's nice and crispy mm. and like gold and brown like we have over here, basically. And it's super easy to do. It's just cauliflower. Yeah. It's delicious. Jenny, we'll we got about two, minutes, about two minutes left. We want to make sure we get to these tacos. Mm. Let me show you the tacos. Okay, Ooh, so these tacos good, yeah. are incredible. Yeah. These are lentil tacos, all right? So with a mango guacamole. So while that's frying over there, let me just show you. This is so easy. So the mango guacamole, it's just a regular guacamole mm -hmm. with mango added. And, you know, your lime, your cilantro, all that good stuff. Now, as far as the lentil tacos go, I have my tomatoes over here. All that is, it's so easy. You do some tomatoes, cook them until they're really nice and soft. And then you're going to add in your lentils. You're going to add in some chopped kale. Mm. You can use frozen kale or spinach or any other green you want. Mm. And then you're going to add in your spices. I like to measure mine out ahead of time. So I have cumin, chili powder, lots of salt. You cook that down. I know we don't have much time. So you cook that down. Yeah. And then you're going to have something like this, basically. Mm, nice good. tender lentils awesome. with Thank you. And it's so easy to make. It takes just a few minutes. Anybody can do it. And it's great for anyone, whether you're vegan or not. It's just a really nice, healthy, light, super flavorful and filling vegan meal. Well, Janae, you nailed it. There's a couple days left for Veganuary people out there. So <laughs> something to make tonight. Yes. We appreciate it. And if you do want to make it tonight, you go to today.com slash food for the rest page. Janae, yeah. thank, next you. Week, thank you. Next, week, next month thank is you guys. February. 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 Is that really? Oh, there you go. No, I just, no. So you need these the recipes again. again. Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker.
healthy, easy recipes from Gabby Dawkins, creator of What's Gabby Cooking? Gabby, good morning. Thanks for uh, helping us launch this thing. You are so welcome. Do you like the darkness outside in L.A.? It's <laughs> very early. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> It's an early one. Who doesn't want to wake up and, and, and make chili? What do, you, what, what do you got for us today? So we've been making all sorts of healthy recipes in January, and this is one of the most popular recipes on my website. It's a black bean sweet potato chili that even like a true meat lover would love. As you saw earlier, I just sauteed some onion and some mm. sweet potatoes mm. in like a large heavy bottom skillet. And I'm going to season it with garlic, salt, paprika, cayenne, and a little cumin, and just kind of toast that up. And then every Everything just goes into here. So we have black beans, we have quinoa, we have fire roasted tomatoes, and it's just gonna sit on the stove and kind of simmer for mm. with a little bit of stock. Um, you could use quinoa, you could use farro, you could use barley, you could use rice, and literally it's just kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing, and I'm obsessed with it. Could you swap out, out the black really beans, Gabby, if you don't like black beans, could you use a different kind of bean? Mm -hmm. You could use chickpeas, you could use kidney beans, any uh, red beans, like whatever kind of beans you have, it's meat? amazing. Could you, you ask to use yeah. meat? Ask it for Carson. Yep, ground beef. One. So, <laughs> yes, if you wanted to saute some, like, chicken or ground oh. turkey or put mm -hmm. shredded mm -hmm. chicken in mm -hmm. before, or it is no, like perfect and an extra way to add some protein. And Gabby, with, with most chilies, they're better even later. Is this mm -hmm. a good make ahead? Mm -hmm. This is one of the, so yes, this this I actually made yesterday, yeah. and it's better today than it was last night when I made it. The flavors have time to develop, and I'm just going to season it with, or garnish it with a little cheese, a little cilantro, some lime juice, and then if you want to get a little fancy, like you see on that photo, I like to add a little crema, which is just kind of like a watered-down sour cream to give it a little extra creaminess, mm. and it's perfection. Looks oh. yummy. What's, what's our second? Thank you got another dish for us? Yeah, so let's talk about vegetables because I feel like so many people don't know how to make vegetables properly. Mm. And the key to vegetables, in my opinion, is roasting them. So yes. as you can see, mm. we've got a bunch of cauliflower. I haven't overcrowded the pan and it's super caramelized. So I just popped it into an oven, 425 degrees, let everything roast up until it's nice and golden. And then to make matters like even better, mm. I make a homemade tahini sauce. Oh, so this oh, is yeah. a little tahini. Oh. I'm just gonna put a little bit of garlic in there, mm -hmm. a little bit of le Meyer lemon. I mean, dip I'm in LA, why in not? Mm. Yeah, you could dip your french fries in it. Some salt and pepper, stir it all up. And this, you could put it on cauliflower, you could put it on broccoli, you could, I mean, I'm blanking on other vegetables right now because we're live, but <laughs> truly, oh, look at that, carrots, you can put it on every vegetable Ooh. known to man, and it's a perfect way to make vegetables, you know, a little bit more delicious, especially for kids. Yeah, Gabby, speaking of vegetables and kids, you're self, admittedly, you ate like a seven-year-old until you were 17, right? <laughs> I have a nine-year-old, yeah. and, and ask, I'm asking this for every parent watching right now, because it's really concerning for Siri and I now that Etta literally only eats grilled cheeses and pasta, <laughs> and I wonder, like literally almost, and I'm wondering, like, when, is there anything we can do to help that along, or are we supposed to just let that happen? My parents let it happen, to be totally honest, and then I went to culinary school after college and I seem to be okay. But I will say, when you make vegetables like this and you get that caramelized flavor and you tell your kids it tastes like candy, like when I was a private chef, I used to tell the kids that, and they would clear the table. Mm. So I feel like, and getting them involved in the kitchen is really nice. My daughter's one, she can't cook yet, but I can't wait till I can make her chop things. <laughs> well, you're living proof that there's hope for us yeah. all, so yeah. thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gabby. I've I actually so. wondered that, you know, when your kids eat no vegetables, like what happens? They but turn into world renowned chefs exactly. like Gabby. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. It makes me there's, feel a lot there's, better. There's, yes. there's hope you. out there. There is hope. For Thank last you. Last time. I also never had seafood before I was 24. So wow. my culinary school teacher thought I was. There is hope. You're right. Fine. That's right. It's going to be just Eating fine. Eating Nutella every morning for 20 years is fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's right. Uh, All right. Gabby, thank you so much. Okay, here's a question. Do you have somewhere between two and 10 random pumpkins laying around your house right now? I have two. Well, okay. Do not throw them away. Cook with them instead. Here to show us how to make oh. a delicious roast pumpkin ramen. Doesn't that sound incredible? Sounds yummy. The author of Mission Vegan, Danny Bowen. Hi, Danny. Danny. Hey, good morning. How are okay, you? So pumpkin, good to see I feel you. like something. To, I feel like either you make pumpkin pie or you throw it away. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, you know, I love this trick. Is like this is the easiest dish. I love making this at home for my son. Okay. You know, it's a good way to get him to eat pumpkin that's not just pumpkin pie. Okay. And where it is that you like pumpkin seeds? I love pumpkin you love seeds. Pumpkin seeds. Okay. Yes. So I want to show you a trick tip. with how to clean. <laughs> To get, to get the seeds out. This is a smaller pumpkin. Yeah, it's like it's a, a kabocha. Is that one that you cook? Like
like, can you cook with all pumpkins? You can cook with most any pumpkin. Okay. Any like decorative gourd, you can okay. cook with it. Okay. Long, okay. Just depends on how long it's been sitting out. Good you know, call. Cut when it they, when they're caved in. Don't yeah, no. Yeah. When you but when Moldy. you cut it in half, you'll see these seeds yeah. here. A good, good trick to get the seeds out is to right. kind of like kind of make an outline around where yeah. it is here, uh -huh. and then just use a spoon and scoop them just right scoop out. Them right. Easy, oh, look, that's easier breezy. than I thought right? it was. So you're gonna scoop all the seeds out and get all that hair and all that business. Okay. And then what? And then so from here, what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. Is we're gonna season this, so I'd like to do yeah. a little bit of olive oil. Uh -huh. And this smells, is a good. By the way, it smells amazing in here. It does. Thank you. This is a great trick for roasting pumpkin. Season it with a little bit of olive oil and salt, and then leave it. Leave the skin on it. That's gonna create a little jacket in the oven, and it's gonna steam inside of this. Oh, right? so you just steam it in the oven for how long? So at 375, about 45 minutes. Oh, and you paint until it with it's that. like just tender. Okay. Ooh, and then look at this thing. I mean, I thought that was <laughs> dough earlier. Really what happens is it steams in this jacket, and it becomes like a custard. Feel how soft oh that is? Oh my gosh. And this recipe is amazing because what I do. Is yeah. I get a little bit of olive oil and garlic, mm -hmm. get it really nice and soft, and like get it fragrant. And do you throw, throw this it right in there. The with skin the on skin? this one, yeah. The skin on this pumpkin. Do you break it up or yeah, just go ahead, break it up there. Oh my yeah. gosh, that is smell. Oh. Okay. So this is the base for our ramen, and this is gonna create much like this is actually um, a lot of ramen have a lot of viscosity from a lot of bones and like yeah. this is all vegan, so the the pumpkin's gonna give a lot of body okay. flavor. So okay. that's all done. You season that. This is a little bit of mushroom seasoning or like a soup bouillon. If you have like oh. instant ramen, if okay. you have an instant ramen packet, you can throw that in there. Okay. A little that's bit of that, a little soft. bit of salt, okay. a little bit of soy sauce. Soy. Okay. And yeah. then water. You want to cover this with oh. water. Let that okay. just so that it kind of cook boils. away. Yeah. Look at that. And this can then once this comes to a boil. You know, let it simmer for about five minutes. And it's then good take to go. it off. That's okay. it. So I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite chili pastes. Uh, right now at the farmer's market, there's really amazing chilies still. Um, these have just been roasted. Are these spicy? Some of them are spicy. Okay. Do you like spicy? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> that was a kind the, of a maybe sure. you take the seeds sure. out or you leave them all I like, what I do is I roast them and sound of the same as the pumpkin. Olive oil, salt, roast them but until they're soft and then throw them under the char ah, and get them kind of burned, boiled up. So, then, so all the seeds, all the hot stuff stays everything in. Everything stays in. A little bit of vinegar. Mm -hmm. When you cook for your son, do you take some of the seeds out or no? So when my son, when I cook for my son, I I, I give him a little bit. You yeah, know, I, I like to like, he likes to like experiment introduce. with How old is he? He's almost nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm coming over to eat. I have a nine-year-old yeah. too. So this will go in there. You blend that till it's soft. Okay. And so for the actual ramen, really, really simple. You get it like this is our broth. It's Gosh. been cooked. Mm -hmm. You add some noodles in here. You add some spinach or some greens. Mm -hmm. Once the noodles are cooked and the greens oh have wilted, it looks Delicious. like this. Spicy. Do you want a little bit of spice or any spice or no? I think they did. They put spice in. No. I put. I didn't put any yet. But I, here's extra pumpkin seeds if you like. Mm. If you have pumpkin mm. seed oil, you can put pumpkin seed oil on there. If not, olive oil. Oh my God, that Isn't is that great? Danny, that's so yummy. I get why your yummy. kids would love this. I'm yeah. gonna take some home. Oh my God, that's so oh good. Gosh. And get spinach too. Yeah, yeah. delicious. I love it. Thank you, Danny, and mm -hmm. for this recipe and more. Go to today.com/food and check out Danny's book. It's got some great recipes. Mission Vegan. You can buy it wherever you buy your books or head to today.com/books. Danny, yeah. great Thank Danny, you. This is what I wanted. So yummy. Oh.
going well. Okay. Between Thanksgiving and Christmas, there's usually a lot of overindulging, so you may want to lighten things up. Okay, so why not go vegan at times? That's, that's the name of the new cookbook from New York Times bestselling author Jessica Seinfeld, and it's chock full of recipes that are so simple and delicious, you may not miss the meat. Jessica's here. You guys have a real connection, the well, two of you. we're sort of related, we're related. Yeah. but yeah. we're going to be related. Right. How? Well, her cat. Our, our cats are engaged. Well, her not, cat, Javier. What? Oh, look. Oh, wait. He's on the left. Javier's oh, on wait, the left. Oh, wait, y'all actually did an engagement photo? Well, that's wait. not Eleanor on the oh, right. Oh, but no. it looks like Eleanor. Well, no, COVID, yeah. No, actually, Eleanor looks more like Javier. Okay, I'm but, confused. Oh, Javier's cat is That's my cat, cat on the left. Okay. My cat, Javier, is marrying Eleanor. Barbara's Who's cat. Barbara's Your cat. Sister's my sister's cat. cat. Yeah, they're engaged. Uh, you know, I just want to say... Why is there a love between the two of them? They just aren't? Why not? Okay. Look at them. Okay. What do they Look have in them. common? Javier's on the right, Eleanor's on the left. How yes. did they meet? She's either. a little rough and tumble in yeah. that picture. Yeah, she really is. How, <laughs> did they, how did they meet? They met online. They met online. You know what? This is not going to work out well. Wait, but Jessica, honestly, we just we couldn't let you go without getting you a little... Little wedding oh dress God. for Eleanor and a little tuxedo oh. for Javier. Oh, so sweet. Okay. Oh well, this is Are a big announcement. Yeah, yes, this is I'm, a big is, announcement. And if y'all want weird. a venue for the wedding, <laughs> y'all yeah. can come here. Do you do weddings? Yeah, still? we do pet weddings. Remember That's weddings great. on the plaza? We've yes. never done a pet wedding. Let's do it. A cat <laughs> no, wedding. We have okay. to ask you is okay. Javier vegan? Um, no, okay. he's not vegan. Okay. Um, he's <laughs> vegan at times, but we're, we're working on him. He's the hardest one in the family. Right. What, what inspired this? Is it just because people like to be vegan for a little while, but they don't want to commit? No, I think they feel like they are going to fail. Oh, and oh, oh, I oh. hate that word failure around food. I think there should be no shame yeah. associated with food. Well, that's why we like that at times. This is just yes. for when you feel like stepping it up a little. And actually, Hoda thinks you wrote this book for her because she was vegan for two days. Oh. That, it was really great. I yeah. felt good during those yeah. two days. Well, that's so, the point. If you yeah. feel really See? great, you keep doing something. Okay, so Jessica. And I'm here jo to make it easy okay. for you. Sloppy Joe's? Sloppy Joe's. We have these for the dinner. Meat. Yeah. Okay. And that is also the point. Get people eating the foods they already like. Just make them vegan. Okay. okay. And so let's let's do this one really quick because okay. I think we took up a lot of time Sorry. in this segment. So well, yes. large Coffee chop here. here with our red pepper. We're gonna throw it in the food processor. Yum. Jenna, do you like to use a food uh, processor? Sure. Okay. Pulse that. Okay. Pulse, that, to, okay. pulse that a couple times. So it's the same size, it's easily just, topped. This look how beautiful. It beautiful. It's all, it's all here. Yep. Okay, sauteed. What do you add in there? This is onions. This what's this in is here that. is that. that is, no oil or anything. Yeah. Olive oil. Onion, garlic, and our peppers that okay. we just chopped. Okay. Now we're gonna put in our cauliflower. Oh, wow. Cauliflower. Yeah. So did we're gonna just, cook did you this. Pulse, pulse that yep. in the thing too. Yeah. Okay. So it's okay. all done in your food processor. We're gonna cook this put for six in. minutes. Yes. And this, what kind of beans are those? These are cannellini beans, yeah. but you can use chickpeas or you can use red kidney beans. And, and then, then we're going to make adding, our sauce, but oh. let's make it over here so we okay. have something to do in this okay. segment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. This is apple cider vinegar. I this didn't is... know you could actually cook with that. I just like swallow it kind of disgustingly. Oh, you do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, people say you're supposed to. For allergies. Know. Yeah. And Why what? don't you put the water in, Jenna? Okay. This is so <laughs> Am I doing okay? <laughs> you're doing great. Wait, what was all those spices you're dumping? Yes. <laughs> now you want to talk about it. Okay. This is a little cayenne pepper, chili powder, salt, pepper, yeah, okay. um, we put brown sugar, yeah. tomato oh, paste, sweet, water, yeah. apple cider vinegar, we're going to mix Whip that. You, put uh, it in here? Yeah. Do you want to mix this? Sure. They told me not to give you a knife. That was my <laughs> instruction. Did they? So. Maybe I'll take that wedding dress back. <laughs> the cat wedding could be off. Let's put okay, this so over you here. Swirl it around and then yeah. you just dump and it right dump on top that in of there. That. And here are our nice, what it pretty. Looks like? That is what oh, it looks beautiful. like. I mean, it is delicious. It's, so. It is actually delicious. We're coming over here to bring And this is our bun is. that's um, been toasted with some olive oil in a skillet. Is that good? Yes, mm. gorgeous. Let's okay. put some pickles on there. Is it yummy? Delicious. The pickles are the best part. Bread and butter pickles. What do you do? I don't. Not sweet. Right. Those are sweet I, and they're delicious. No. <laughs> okay, well, That's a great idea. Actually, okay. somebody on my Instagram said put some vegan cheddar cheese on that uh -huh. and then you're good. And I thought that was a great uh -huh. idea. And here you go. Okay, now, mm. does, is, is your family into these? My family's on really board. Gone. It's weird. Actually, my son last night, Julian, said, you don't even need to tell me anymore that things are vegan, because I think they're sick of getting surprised, because I'm like, that's vegan. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, OK. It's spicy and way, delicious. Now, what, what are these real quick? These are, uh -huh. if you have a person in your life who's like, I'm never, I will never eat vegan food, serve them these. What these are that? peanut butter bars. And they are so delicious. I made them last night. This has a graham cracker crust, crust okay. last night. I made them and with a chocolate wafer crust. And this doesn't have any butter crust. or anything? No, it has 
Um, coconut cream, what? peanut butter. Oh my God. Is that great? But how is that possible? Oh my God. I know. Mm -mm. Those are in my book, Vegan at Times. Are those that good? is the, a showstopper. That yep. is a bad, but so is this. I know, but oh. this. Mm. Anyway. I'm so happy. So we're not, we're just All right, we love eating. cats. We love vegan food. Yeah. We love oh my you. God, this Tune in to our cat wedding. Yes. Seriously. Details, <laughs> TBD. Yeah. Oh, wait, you weird. have to serve this as the cat cake. Yes. Okay. Right with like a little catnip. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> For these recipes, head to today.com slash food. What's wrong with you and kid? check out <laughs> Vegan mm. at Times. It is filled with recipes like this. All you have to do is Tell go to today.com slash shop. Tell me to stop. 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 Don't stop. Don't, Don't stop. Joanne Lee Molinaro, the author of the Korean Vegan Cookbook. Joanne made a career as a high-profile trial lawyer, but found another passion after she and her husband decided to go vegan, posting cooking videos online. Now she shares vegan-friendly Korean recipes inspired by her family with her 4 million followers. Joanne, wow. good morning. Good it morning. is so great to see you. Thank you for being here. Your cookbook is already a success. It's on the New York Times bestsellers list. So tell us what we can expect from the Korean Vegan. Well, good morning to all of you. I'm so excited to be here. And thank you for the kudos on the cookbook. The cookbook is ex it's basically an extension of the Korean Vegan Online, a bunch of Korean vegan recipes with stories sprinkled throughout about my family and what it was like growing up as a Korean American. What are the best memories you have about growing up, your experience that sort of inspired you to write this? Well, one of my favorite memories is waking up at around 11 o'clock at night, my mom frantically making these famous egg rolls for my father's potluck dinner, a holiday <laughs> potluck dinner. And she was sitting there frying all these egg rolls, and I wanted to eat some, but it was too late at night, and she wouldn't <laughs> let me have any. And so that is one of the reasons I love making these egg rolls every holiday. Oh, man, I'm looking at those photos. They're making me hungry. So, Joanne, what do you got planned for us today? I, I, I got to know. Uh, well, I, I've got the famous egg rolls. These are the egg rolls that my mom would make for every holiday potluck dinner, every Christmas, uh, you know, every Thanksgiving. You know, my teachers would be asking, hey, Joanne, does your mom make those egg rolls again this year? Because <laughs> she would always be giving my teachers these egg rolls. So that's what we're making. We're also going to make some um, kimchi fried rice, which is the perfect mm. accompaniment, in my opinion, to these egg rolls. Joanne, first of all, for the record, it's never too late for egg rolls. <laughs> but obviously, you've got a lot of veggies in there. So how do we make sure that they're cooked properly? OK, so we do have a lot of veggies in here. And that's one of the wonderful things about eating a more plant-based diet is because now you have an excuse to eat those vegetables that we were talking about earlier, especially with the new year. We have some celery. We also have some red onion. We have carrots. We have mushrooms. What we're going to do is we're actually going to give them a rough chop and add them to our pan right now with a little bit of oil. And the reason I like to do that is because I wanna give them a little bit of a cook before we deep fry them when we wrap them for our egg rolls. I'm just gonna start by throwing my mushrooms, my onions, and of course, some wonderful garlic. And as you can see, it's rough chopped. There's nothing that needs to be really chopped quite yet. 
what are some right. of the other egg roll stuffing ideas as you walk us through the vegetables? What are some other ideas that you could use? You know, I've kind of experimented with so many different things now, and I love to put in things like lentils and beans, which I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, my mom's going to be like, what are you talking about, Joy? You're not <laughs> putting beans into <laughs> egg rolls. But I'm always looking for ways of adding lean protein to sort of my main dishes to make them a little bit more filling and satisfying. And beans are fantastic. Lentils are great. Add different kinds of mushrooms. You know, your imagination is really the limit here. What's the secret uh, to actually sealing the egg roll up? I mean, to me, as a novice or, uh, in other words, horrible cook, that's what <laughs> makes me the most nervous about this. I doubt you're a horrible cook, but the, you know, the secret here, a lot of people think that you need egg wash, which is the traditional way of uh -huh. doing things. But one of the things that my mom has started experimenting with because her daughter has gone vegan is using water in place of things like egg wash. And when she first tried this, she was like, I don't think this is going to work, Joanne. <laughs> but believe it or not, it worked perfectly. And you are going to have no problem sealing these egg rolls with just a little bit of water. And Joanne, what else do you have in store for us? So in addition to sort of these egg rolls, like I mentioned in the beginning, one of my favorite things to eat in any meal basically is kimchi fried rice. I add kimchi to just about anything. We're gonna be adding kimchi to these egg rolls as well. Um, I'm just gonna throw some potatoes into our pan here, get those nice and hot. So we've got here this beautiful kimchi, which you know is a very iconic Korean ingredient. It's a fantastic prebiotic as well, so it's good for your gut health and all of those things. But the best thing about kimchi is that it adds intense, intense flavor to anything you're gonna make, whether it's your fried rice, whether it's your egg rolls, your dumplings, your stew. And so we're gonna have both kimchi in our egg rolls as well as in our fried rice today. So Joanne, I'm staring of course at the egg roll right now and thinking about if you make a big batch, can you reheat these? And if you do that, the microwave always kind of makes them soggy, right? What's the best way to try to reheat it if you wanna sort of extend the experience? Oh, Peter, so you hit it right on the nail. So the thing that my mom always gets really frustrated with, no, no, these egg rolls are soggy. So the best <laughs> way to ensure that you don't have that soggy situation if you do want to reheat them, because let's let's be clear here, there are very few times we're going to have leftovers because they're <laughs> so good. But in case you make like a thousand of them uh, and you do have some leftovers, the best way to do it is to refry them in your deep fryer. Now, if you don't want to fry them, let's say we're kind of an, an air fryer family, you can certainly stick it in your air fryer, give it a little spray of that oil, stick it in your air fryer or stick it in your convection oven. But in my opinion, the best way to have that real crunchy crispiness is to stick it in your deep fryer right before serving. Well, Joanne, you've all made right. us all very hungry this morning. If you could just package that all up, have it couriered here, we'll send you the address. <laughs> I'll take one. <laughs> it is or so great. We'll take 10. It is so good to be with you. And for these recipes, head to today.com slash food and be sure to follow Joanne on social media at The Korean Vegan and pick up a copy of her cookbook out now. You won't be alone. Four million followers are already doing just That's that. That's right. She's Incredible. This morning, best-selling cookbook author and chef, our friend Padma Lakshmi. That's right. Her latest cookbook is out right now, and it's called Tomatoes for Neela. And this morning, she's got some great ideas to share for healthy winter dishes. Padma, <clears throat> first of all, it's great to see you. And the ingredient we're starting with that we're focusing on is kale. It's like one of those superfoods. Yes, that's right. It is kale. I love kale. I try to throw it in every dish I have because it's a great hearty but healthy winter uh, green. You know, what I love about kale is that it's great raw, it's great wilted with dressing the next day. It's also wonderful cooked. It has a ton of vitamins, Hoda. It has vitamin A, it has vitamin C, folate, it has vitamin B, vitamin K, it has a ton of antioxidants. It also has omega-3 uh, fatty um, acids, calcium, potassium, you name it. Okay. And so wow ways you can use this hearty, hearty winter green. So I have two kinds of kale here. This is curly kale, mm -hmm. which you guys probably are familiar with. There's lots of uh, 
types of kale. And then I have this, which is called dragon kale. Dragon or kale. Kale. Uh, in Italian, it's called lacinato kale. Mm -hmm. And this is the kale that I like the best. You just want to take the center stem and strip that off and then just chop it. What I like to do is buy the kale whole, take, wash it, dry it on kitchen towels, take that center stem off and chop it up and then put it in a bag and leave it in my crisper so it's always ready oh. for me to throw into um, all my soups and salads. You know, sometimes those lettuces are great. Mm -hmm. If you don't finish your salad, you have to throw out the salad. Whereas if you have a salad made with kale, mm. instead of those lettuces, which are mostly water and are still great, but don't have the same nutrients, you can have that salad for two or three days. Hey, Padma, some people, I hear some people massage the kale. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you do that? Uh, I don't massage the kale. I just chop it fine. <laughs> you ain't fancy. All right, so, so what, are, what are we making? What I'm doing, we're going to bounce around with some recipes just because I'm cooking here. So I have sauteed some just plain yellow onion mm -hmm. with a little cumin seeds and some oil and two red chilies. You see that? Uh -huh. Those are sauteing. And to that, I'm going to add some minced ginger mm. and some minced garlic. And that is going into some lentils, also called dal, which we'll make in a minute. But I just want to get that going um, so it browns and cooks nicely. To that, I'm adding a little bit of ground turmeric. You see that? I feel like I'm doing one of those beauty Instagram videos. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm going to saute this and let that go. And while that's going, I'm going to show you this salad. Look at this beautiful Yum. salad. Ooh. The mozzarella? Chickpeas. Ready Chickpeas. on So uh, for you guys a while back on another holiday season, it's just simple. Pomegranate, pearl mozzarella, mm. the mint, some serrano. Mm. It's dressed so basically with just <laughs> olive oil, balsamic, and lime juice. I'm going to take that salad and I'm going to add a bunch of chopped kale to it. And this salad then becomes more hearty yeah. and it lasts much longer than any other salad would. And it's filling. Frankly, this would make a great lunch to take to the office or to school the next day. Um, my daughter, Krishna, takes this salad when she's got a field trip and she's the envy of all her mm. teachers. I What's the dressing that. on that? Yeah, and the dressing will wilt the um kale so that it'll be beautiful the next day. All the juices mm -hmm. from the mozzarella and the pomegranate season that kale with the dressing. And look how beautiful that is. Mm -hmm. don't, you love it? don't you love the kale because it, it even wilted or even chopped up like that, it holds up against yeah. the dressings and sauces. It, it stays robust and doesn't wilt away. Exactly. Now you can see how these onions and ginger and garlic are frying and breaking down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got about 10 or 15 seconds. I would add pancetta this, to yeah. that, but that's me. Yeah. So I'm just going to add some tomato to that. Uh -huh. And here I have some yellow lentils. Oh, that yeah. I love, love those. Salt. I'm adding kale to that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like, I want that. this. I want this for me breakfast. Too. A stew, which is yeah. basically But you could do chicken or beef, and I'm adding kale to that. Love it. There you go. Thank you, Pod. Pod no, we got to run. Yummy. We got to run. But all of these dishes are going to be on our website. Looks real good. Today.com slash food. And we're back with Today Food and Season Chef Alfred Portale. His illustrious career includes 35 years as the executive chef at New York's iconic Gotham Bar and Grill, where he earned a Michelin star and among other great accolades there. Now Chef Portale is at the helm of his own restaurant in Chelsea, Portale, an upscale, casual Italian restaurant. Chef, it's great to have you here. Nice to how's, be here. how's this chapter of your, this new chapter in your culinary uh, career? The restaurant is fantastic. You know, people go there, it's got great food, great wine list. It's, I feel like I'm hosting a, a dinner party every night. What made you want to leave Gotham after such a long reign? You know, I, I, I always wanted to do Italian and uh, here we are. So um, I have been a great time. I read your mom and your grandmother, you're from Buffalo, would cook Italian food for you growing up. That's right, that's but right. But how was it, it different? They used American ingredients? Um, well, to, to some extent, to yeah. some extent. In fact, this recipe uh, that we're making today is something my mom used to make on Fridays. Because oh, cool. growing up, we couldn't eat meat on Friday. Right, so. right, Lent. All right, so what are we making? Wow. Um, we're making a pesto, uh, an arugula pesto, so a little different. Okay. It starts with blanching. We blanch the herbs first. And now what that does is it, uh, it sets the color. So you get a nice, really bright, bright, looking pesto and smooth 
So we let these blanch. So it's not even really about cooking things off and stopping the cooking, it's just about preserving the color? And... Yeah, we're setting the color, exactly. Wow. And it'll give us a, a beautiful, beautifully colored pesto. And if you don't have arugula, can you substitute that? Absolutely. Uh, increase the other herbs, or um, I would use spinach, spinach something yeah. else. All right. Okay, so next, the ingredients. Uh, we could, could get yep. some... You, you can be little, in charge little, of little this. A little zesting? Yeah, in the blender I have some capers. So we'd put, that, we'd put the green in here though, right? Yeah, I've got them right here. So okay, we're gonna, perfect. we're gonna add that, just a little bit. That's good, that's got good. It. We add the blanched herbs. A touch of that. And I have uh, anchovy, garlic. We have our eating table over there, no, quiet, no, no. and that's a good sign. That means they're already eating this delicious okay, meal. Okay, so normally we would put the top on. I've got some extra virgin olive oil, and, okay. and you want to add this in a steady stream to emulsify. Wow, it's blending, okay. It saves some time, we're gonna yep, skip that enough. step. Yep. And here's our pasta. Um, what pasta, just, you want spaghetti? We're using spaghetti today, bucatini, angel hair, it's great. Bucatini. So, we, I'm not draining the pasta because I want some of this pasta water. Wow, oh. look at that, guys. That's okay. how you do it. That's the pro move go. right there. And why do we like the pasta water, chef? Why do we? Okay, add a little more pasta water. Remind everybody the importance of the pasta water, adding it. You like it spicy? Yes. Some Calabrian chili. <laughs> yep. And here's our pesto. This makes it creamy, I think, the yeah, pasta that water. Right? It just kind of keeps the... It helps emulsify the sauce. Uh-huh. Add some cheese. And it's that simple. Oh, a little bit of arugula. And we'll wilt that in. Yeah. Wow. You typically, chef, add pasta to the sauce or sauce to the pasta, just in general. <laughs> like do, do people, yeah, I mean, I see people just do what you do, where you put the pasta in here and then you just add the sauce into it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you always wanted to cook a little bit, in, to cook the, the pasta. Cook it in, in the, the sauce. sauce a so we bit. keep okay. the pasta al dente. Yeah. And then we finish it in the pan. So we that is a beautiful, light, summery. Let me take a bite of this. Guys, how is it? How do they make those tomatoes? Dilly? They're just like popping. Yeah. Oh, the tomatoes, you know, the, we can, the tomatoes are simply roasted in the oven. Oh. How long? About 20 minutes, 30 oh, minutes. Mm. What happens so is it, it concentrates the flavor. It's yeah. delicious. That's all you did to it. What do you think, Oda? It's you so know, yummy. Uh, it's I mean, great. Craig play. made this point. It's not too pesto-y, right. which is really good. And right. Chef, I don't know how you did that. I don't, I don't know what part in the process, but you can taste the lemon. You can taste the anchovy. Yeah. There's nothing overwhelming. It's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Balance. And uh, we're going to add a little olive. If you don't olives. like olives, mm. nice. put less in. But Pop here we go. Flavor. And then mm. we, we're going to finish with a little bit more cheese. This is how you do it. This is You want this experience. You find yourself in the Chelsea neighborhood of New York, okay. go to Portale and see our friend Chef here is going to make you. you a meal Thank just you. like this. Yummy. It is delicious, all right? Thank you. So do that. And if you can want to make this recipe, if you're at home, you go to today.com slash food. I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be making this one tonight. Yeah. Chef, thank you so much. Morning on Today Food, two amazing Italian meals you can make this week, you can make them tonight. Here with us today is Laura Vitale, cookbook author and host of Laura in the Kitchen. Laura, good morning. Good morning. Sometimes, you know, a nice big Italian meal feels like something you save for Sundays, but yeah. this is like 
a really quick, easy meal. It's so quick, it's so easy. It's actually two things that I can get my very picky daughter to eat. Oh. So I feel like it would be super family friendly. No, I'm all ears. Um, and Hidden it's spinach really always easy. goes a long way. Yeah, too. we're oh. going to start off with some chicken meatballs. Okay. And I make them really easy, but I have to make them flavorful because I think ground chicken can be so dry. Yes. So in a bowl, if you would, yes, add a little bit of garlic. A little garlic, okay. Yes, and a little garlic. A pinch of Italian seasoning. Oh, just a pinch. Just a right. pinch. I like to add some frozen chopped spinach. Make sure you mm. thaw and like squeeze out really all that liquid. It, out. Okay. it adds not only moisture, but it also okay. adds extra vitamins that I know my kid will eat exactly. because once it's covered in a in a yummy Parmesan sauce, mm. she won't know that it's right. in there. It's just delicious. Egg, Parmesan cheese, breadcrumbs, a little salt, pepper, and okay. you're gonna mix it all together. Mm -hmm. Um, can you over mix look? chicken like you can with beef? Does it make it tough? Not really. Okay. Not really. I've never found that to be an issue whatsoever. Great. You mix it together, and then at this point, if you want to, you can form your meatballs, which I like to use a scooper. A scooper to, to make sure they're all the same size. Yeah, make sure that they're all the same size. And I also don't like to get my hands dirty. Um, <laughs> and this is a great, actually, it's a great thing. You roll them up, and then you can actually freeze them like this, oh. so that you have they're them good ready. To go whenever you need them. If you do a double batch, so that when you have another late night dinner to put Ooh. together, you can Perfect. thaw them out. So when it comes time. time to cook them, do you? So then. I put them in the oven. I just okay. throw them in a hot oven 420 minutes and they're perfect. And okay. then you make the sauce by sweating out some shallots and garlic. Mm -hmm. Make those then shallots you, sweat. Yes. <laughs> then you add some tomatoes. Okay. Ooh, that is yummy. And then you'll do a little bit of wine, chicken stock, a little bit of cream. All of this? Or? Yes, all okay. of it. And then let that reduce until it's really nice and thick. And then when the sauce is ready, you add your meatballs back in until they are sort of warm through. Ooh. And it then that clean that too. is like it. it. Doesn't taste Heavy. No, it's mm. super. They're super light, and I attribute that to the spinach. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. I so attribute delicious. that to the spinach. Yeah, they're not mm. dense. They're right. really no, good. not at all. I need to get into the meat How about I this can't pasta? Wait. This pasta is oh, let's, right let's get, let's the make... pasta is next level, and so it's good. actually one of those recipes that I pulled oh, together wow, out delicious. of leftover things that I had in my fridge. Really? And all I yeah, I had some open sun-dried tomatoes, which I don't know what to do with them a whole lot because they're mm -hmm. not my favorite thing to eat as is. So I added them to some sweating shallots and garlic. We're sweating shallots. Why do you I like these shallots? I need to learn how to sweat shallots. shallots. Yeah. They're a bit more mild and tender and the pack usually has seven or eight, so I like to use them all oh, up. That's true. Could you <laughs> use onions or scallions? You can use it? onions, you can use shallots and you can use green onions, any alien really. Okay. Add your sun-dried tomatoes mm -hmm. along with a little bit of tomato sauce. That's why it has that taste. Yes, and then you do a little oregano, a little hot pepper oh, wow. flake, and then That's you'll so add. Easy. Then you'll add a little bit of the pasta oh, the water, water and oh. your rigatoni, mm. and then that pasta water you want it to get in there. Right. I'm gonna try this. And then that so rigatoni good. is just rich and delicious. And then the best way to serve it. Yeah, I saw you do something really cool with a burrata. Oh, that is yummy. Mm. And then yeah. as you eat it, you would obviously yeah. add this to an entire giant serving, not just right. one <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> Although I'm not judging. No. That is fine. A oh big my gosh. sprinkle of parm, a little additional hot pepper flakes for heat because I like things hot. And the burrata adds such a creaminess so to it. Good. Look, so we good. almost finished it. And it's <laughs> easy. And it's easy. Oh, wow. And if you don't have sun dried tomatoes, skip them. And you could use any pasta if you any want. Any pasta, long, short, whatever kind of pasta. Oh, good. Very oh, wow. forgiving. It's so good. I've never thought of just the fresh burrata as yeah. a sauce yeah. almost. It's it makes so its own good. sauce. It mm. makes it creamy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is delicious. The secret was sweating those shallots. Oh, yeah. That's a secret. A win. Uh, oh, wow. For Thank these recipes, you. it's today.com <laughs> slash food. We are back with a special Today Food for our Discover Black Heritage series. We are joined by one of our dear friends, the one, the only, Mr. Marcus Samuelson. He is the chef and owner behind several of New York's hottest restaurants, including a new one, Hav and Mar. It's a communal style spot that celebrates African roots in modern black cuisine. This morning, Chef Marcus is wrap, uh, wh whipping up one of his favorite dishes, yeah. lettuce wraps with mm. tamarind ginger roasted pork yeah. and coconut mm. spiced rice. Can I just tell you how I'm excited I am to cook with you? Mm. Black History <laughs> Month, but also cooking with you, Al. I'm just so excited that we're cooking together. It's been yeah. a while. We, you know, my yes. friend, we first met when you were at Aquavit in 1990. What's that? Child labor back then? <laughs> what, 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 Al? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're dating yourself. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm with hipsters. I'm with Chanel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. you know, I'm with the hipsters. I'm with the kids. Not with the seniors here. Do you know that I play soccer with her husband? Oh, yeah. Really? Uche. Yeah, 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 no. He was, he, was he wearing his, oh, no. his oh, Wakanda gosh, unitone? Yeah, the oh, Wakanda. Yeah. Anyway, so Havan Mar. Yes. Tell me about this restaurant. What Hav a great concept. Mar. 
Hav is a Swedish word and it means ocean. Mm -hmm. And mar is Ethiopian word and it means honey, so sweet water. Mm. A lot of focus on seafood, delicious food. But today, I was thinking about going back to your Bahamian roots. Oh, thank you. This is a dish that really has Caribbean influences. So we're okay. going to do slow roasted pork. Okay. Right? In the oven. In the oven okay. with tamarind glaze. Oh. Right? Now, what's tamarind? Tamarind is this super, super sort of, uh, it has these sour notes, right? A little umami? Like, yes, yeah, so you find all over the Caribbean. Uh -huh. So we're going to put tamarind here, mm -hmm. in here. Okay. Right? And then ginger. Right. Mm. And a little bit of garlic. A little bit of shallots. We're just mm -hmm. gonna let that simmer. And here comes the, the kicker: shrimp powder. Shrimp, shrimp powder. powder. I know. I've never heard of Super that. Super. That's the, that's where, where the umami comes from. Mm -hmm. Some honey and habanero. Do not touch it. This is spicy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you get that. You simmer that, that. We blend. Okay. And then we're gonna rub all of that on top of the pork. Mm -hmm. Boom. We're just gonna pour pour, it pour it on. all on top of the pork. It'll be on the pork. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and we're gonna slow, put that in the oven. Yep. Yeah, put long? in the oven. Long. It takes all day. Okay. But the slow and lower heat, eight hours. The lower you cook it, the better it's going to take. Eight hours. Okay. Yes. So now we're going to make the coconut rice. Coconut right? rice. Again, Ooh. Caribbean notes. Right? Yes. And that's the beauty with Black History Month. Right? You can be inspired by things from Africa. You can be inspired by things from the Caribbean. Coconut milk? Coconut milk. Of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Little turmeric. Mm -hmm. You know that Savannah and I used to cook together too, but she ditched me right now. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I don't know what happened. You know, like we I cooked together, we had a good thing going, and then we had a great thing and going. And yeah. in the middle of when we were cooking, she said, "I also cook with Bobby Flay." I was like, "What?" No, 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 no. No. I was like, never with Bobby Flay. Savannah will do the like that. Huh? Yeah. Oh, okay, no. So, so no, you get, no, no, no. Get... Marcus, they canceled my show. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. They got sick of me burning myself all the time. So you got the pork out. Yes. Yes. Now it's slow roasted. It's oh. delicious. Look at Look this. At oh. And you can slice it, of mm. course. You can just that rip it with a fork, right? just like this. Look at that. Or oh. look at that. Look how moist it oh. is, right? Oh. I got a little. So you're going to shred some of that? Shred it mm. right here. Look at that. Oh, oh man. Some oh, of that wait, I'll wait to yeah. try this. So okay. Chanel and I had this plan, right. which was supposed to be a surprise, but we have a table for you and uh -huh. your wife mm -hmm. at Havmar, and we're going to celebrate you, Al, I because, wait. We, you know, you deserve to be celebrated. That's right. Amen. I was very emotional today, cooking, knowing uh -huh. I cook with you. Uh -huh. And you know, we just we just Worth excited. It. So you'll you know? take the rice? Yes, the coconut rice. It's such a lovely man. Layers yeah. of flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. Yeah. So Listen, good. Then, when your daughter comes back from Paris, mm -hmm. your dad <laughs> can have a new recipe oh, yeah. <laughs> and show off. Look what I'm making. Exactly. Just a, just a little pork with tamarind. This go. is what I've been up to. And you pork. like to garnish it with a little yeah, parsley? Because we're fancy, you know, a little bit, a little bit of shallot, a mm. little bit of so that. Guys, what do you think? It I want more. I don't have any left. Wow. You know what I think? Listen. I think Marcus Samuelson is the most lovely, new oh. talented, oh. and oh. charming person. You get a table, and you get a table, and you get a table, and you get a table. Friday Friday table. Friday Friday. Oh. That's all is it. forgiven, Savannah. Yes, <laughs> all is forgiven. Just Marcus, it is truth. so good to see you. It's my always good to see you. Oh, thank you love so you. much. All right. So good. Hey, thank check you. out so this good. recipe at today.com slash food.
This morning, we are joined by two young women whose hearts are even bigger and warmer than the recipes they're cooking for us today. Moon Lin Tsai and Yin Chang are the founders of Heart of Dinner, a New York City nonprofit delivering warm meals to members of the Asian community who are isolated or elderly. You're, you're really going to get into the, the tradition of fish in Chinese culture. Yes. I mean, even the word for fish is yes. something special, right? Yes. Uh, yu is phonetically similar to a word that represents uh, prosperity Ooh. and abundance. So. That's everything great. has meaning and everything has so much thought behind it. It can also be intimidating, though. I've never actually cooked with a whole fish before. <laughs> well, don't worry. Very... She's here, so I'm a little intimidated <laughs> as well. So thank goodness. So it's very simple. You'll start off with the whole fish. You don't want to fillet. You want to keep it full for abundance. And then what you're going to do is just pat it dry first. Mm -hmm. And this will work with any whole white flesh fish. Mm -hmm. and, and it's got to get scaled, right? Got to get scaled and uh -huh. clean. Yeah, okay. patting it dry is really important so that oil doesn't fly all over the place. Oh. Okay. And right now I am julienning the ginger, and this is so delicious to add depth and flavor and complexity. Um, so then right now after we're done and you're gonna cut it into little matchstick size pieces, mm -hmm. we're gonna bring the fish over to the steamer here okay. as well. And a lot of times your fishmonger will clean it and gut it. Yes, right absolutely. Yeah. If you can ask them even to remove the center bone, that's uh -huh. great too. Yes. Okay. All righty. And then we're going to move. So that's just here. water in there. And yes. that's just steamed water. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then there it is. Now, goes. do you put uh, what goes in next? And then we're going to put a little bit of rice wine to cut the fish. Mm. Do you need the steamer to be able to really do this effectively? You do. You do. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Well, there's a, a trick. Fish. Well, I, I, you know, a lot of people don't have steamers like this out. <laughs> a quick trick that my mom used to do is to put it in the microwave for three minutes. Uh -huh. Really? Oh. Yeah. See? It works. Great. Great. Not everybody has the fancy, you know. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so that's the ginger. So it doesn't Stallion. take much. Yeah. And a little bit of soy sauce just to steam it with a little bit of flavor. Mm. And then off we're done. And how long does that take? It's about seven to ten minutes, depending okay. on the size of your fish. Okay. okay. You know, let's talk about so the next part here. And you always say, even bok choy, like there's so many things that have meaning, but let's try this really quickly. All right, Dylan, you want yours? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. Mm. Enjoy. It's funny, you girls were asking how. How we like eating fish at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I love it. This is this love. is no problem for me. Us too. Oh we do God, love so a good. simple breakfast. We usually also at home will sometimes good? have mackerel over oh. rice and it's so delicious. Yeah. Oh, oh wow! Protein in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Oh, All right. So let's bok talk choy. about bok choy. I don't oh gosh, the bok choy. So that's one of our favorites. Mm. Okay. So we want to start off with aromatics like ginger, some garlic, and completely optional if you want some fried shallots that we have over oh. here. Okay. And it adds a lot of aroma. It's so it delicious. smells good. Oh, tell me about it. Your oh, home God. is going to be filled up with delicious mm. smells. You want to saute that a little bit. Okay. And you just want to make sure that garlic does not burn. Right. And so you want to do it for about 30 seconds. We do that at home. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab some whole bok choy. It's this so is, good for you, too. Oh, it's mm. so healthy. Yeah. Talk about nutrition and all the good luck. So we grew up having this for Lunar New Year especially because what it represents is wishing your family long life, oh. longevity. And that's really important because okay. it's filial piety here where we respect our elderly very deeply. Oh, I love that. Yes, and that's an abundance. And, and what's the significance of the fruit flavor? Oh, gosh. Yeah. So that's her actual favorite. She I loves her love fruits. <laughs> fruit flavor. So mm. and I'm so happy that the oranges, they look like little yeah. nuggets of gold. Uh -huh. So it symbolizes wealth. The dragon fruit, dragon being oh, strength and power. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you also have the papaya that's also abundant and wealth. Mm. And then the pomelo to symbolize unity and wholeness as a family. Wow. Abundance, well, wealth, prosperity. You. I love yes. it. Happy New Year. Oh, happy, happy New Year. Year. Happy New Year. Yes. yes. And so thank good. you so much oh, for these recipes, you. which you need to try. Head to yeah. create.com slash food.
our guide this morning, the one and only Padma Lakshmi. We are making the healthiest dish possible. So I'm gonna make a sauce and it's a Balinese baked fish. I first had this dish when I was in Bali okay. over 20 years ago and it's so simple. And the reason I like it is because it's very low effort, okay. you'll see. We love that. It's very healthy, it's very high protein and it's easy to make. Okay. You know, people always ask me how I stay lean yes. after, you know, when I do all this eating on Top Chef, it's not easy, but it's eating like this okay. that helps after I finish. So we're gonna start with onions in the blender and to the onions, we're gonna add garlic, ginger, okay. a little bit of tamarind paste. Now tamarind, tamarind paste, paste is wonderful. You can get it at any good supermarket. It'll last in your pantry. It's gonna add like a, a, ta a tart and sweet tang to it. Okay. Also, I'm adding toasted sesame oil All right. and cumin powder. Cumin powder. And a little salt to taste. That is really it. Okay. And about a, two or three tablespoons of water. Okay. Go ahead. We'll mix that up. You're gonna mix that up. I'm not gonna do it because of sure. the noise. But this is but this what, what it, it looks, looks like. like. And what kind of fish are we using here? We're using red snapper, but honestly, you could use cod, you could use flounder. Any white fish. Any white fish. This is so easy. And, and they're already digging in over there. What's what's the verdict? How taste? is it? It's yummy. Got a lot of umami to it. Oh, it's you love the umami. And love then the umami. I'm, all I'm doing is pouring this. That's and it. this is going to go into an oven at 350 degrees for 20 or 25 minutes. And that's all. Foil? And then we'll, no foil. Foil. Okay. Foil. So you cook it covered. Cook it covered. Right. And then when it's done, I know it doesn't look very appetizing, but it's so <laughs> delicious. All you're going to do is take fresh mint uh -huh. oh, mint. and, and garnish okay. and a little bit of lemon juice. And, and this has literally like less than 250 calories a wow. serving. Wow. Yeah, and you're gonna pair it with protein. bok choy? I am. I so. find cooking bok choy intimidating. Why? I, I don't know, it's probably because <laughs> I'm not a very good and cook. so good. So you wanna get bok choy and you just wanna quarter it like this. Depending on the size, you can cut it smaller. Okay. And all we're gonna do is dump this bok choy and That's blanch it, it literally bok for 90 seconds. And why okay? do you blanch it? So that it cooks evenly and you don't get weird spots when you're sauteing it. Okay. But you don't want to cook it for that long. Like this is going to cook for literally 90 seconds, two minutes. And then you take it out and you, you immerse it, it in the cold. You don't even have to. Oh. I mean, look, if it's a weeknight and the kids are hungry and you okay. got to go, don't worry about immersing it's so it. You're good. not in a restaurant. It's, it's got fine. a little kick. So Yummy. this is what it looks like when it's blanched about 90 seconds. I have butter melting here. This is so easy as well. And again, all I'm doing is adding some Asian ingredients to it, which is the toasted sesame oil. What? See a theme emerging. Soy sauce. Well, it's going to go with that fish, right? Onions. Garlic. No onions, sorry. That was garlic. garlic. That was ginger and a little bit of red chili. There's your bite. It's There's really your bite. Good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you just saute this up. And I mean, I literally made it in real time. I made this whole meal yeah. in real time, except for the 20 minutes that the fish took. Right. That's yeah. how easy it is. Bob yeah. Lakshmi, thank you so much as always. Thank Congratulations. You. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is here to show us how to turn an easy sheet pan recipe into the ultimate reboot bowl. Good morning, Joy. Hey, Joy. Good morning, guys. Lindsay, it's so nice to be here with you. you the too. last time we were together, I think we were having a vegetarian feast oh, in Connecticut, yes, right? We were at the right. tavern. That's, that's right. right. Yes. That's right. So I'm going to show you how to transform the easiest one sheet recipe into an energizing reboot bowl that has literally layers and layers of yummy goodness. But the best part, it is very, very simple to put together. So I'm gonna start with the sheet, the sheet pan recipe. Here I have three heaping cups of broccoli. So the, the, the big uh, theme here is gonna be lots of plants. This is three of uh, sweet potato that I cubed, or you can ap absolutely use any kind of acorn or winter squash as well. And now I have more cruciferous vegetables, so loads of fiber, and that is our cauliflorets. Now I have one can of rinsed and drained, and very important, it's padded dry chickpeas because I'm adding in a lot of fiber and some protein now. A little bit of olive oil. 
I have about two to three tablespoons in here because I want all the seasonings to stick. Now, I like to over season. So I'm going to put in, th uh, this is two teaspoons of garlic powder and two teaspoons of onion powder. And I had some fresh rosemary in my fridge. So I chopped up and I have about two tablespoons here. But it's eater's choice. You can put in whatever herbs that you want. And you're just going to mix this up mm -hmm. to evenly distribute everything. You pour it onto your sheet pan. I missed it with a little bit of olive oil spray. And then I just put this, actually, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I, I forgot about my salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. But it goes in the oven, set at 425 on the middle rack, just for about 30 to 35 minutes. And I flip it halfway through. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because you are going to get these gorgeous char marks. Look at this. Oh. This just came out of the oven. Do you, can oh, you see great. this? Let that me say. Nice. So when you're building the yeah. bowl, Joy, what layer goes first? Okay. So now for the fun part. And you are the boss of your bowl because there's so many different directions that you can customize this bowl. So here's my bowl. Mm -hmm. And the first layer is going to be dark leafy greens. Mm -hmm. So it could be spinach, kale. It could be any lettuce that you want. Oh. The next is going to be a heaping mound of those delicious caramelized addictive veggies mm. that we roasted mm. then a little bit of fruit so i'm oh. using a pear because i don't think pear gets enough love guys and it actually has a little bit more fiber than apples oh, but you can that. also use an apple mm -hmm. you could also use pomegranate seeds or um even uh, dried cranberries yeah. or cherries anything goes and then the protein is your choice so wow. i put out a question on instagram earlier this morning and I asked my followers, what should I put on? Lentils, salmon, black beans, shrimp. I have chicken, I have tofu. I'm gonna tell you the tofu came in last place <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and go for the salmon this time. And last but not least, we have this mellow. Her the salmon to put in the leafy bowl. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a mellow but mouth-watering tahini dressing that I'm going to show you how to make because everybody needs this. We're not going to have time We're going to put that. that on the website. We'll put it on the website. But okay, thank you, you so much. It. That looks fantastic. Look, All right. Look at this. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a drizzle Beauty. because you got to oh, see this. And for this recipe, head to today.com. <laughs> right. to Today nutritionist Joy Bowers here joining us with a corn chowder and a spiced chai tea. Mm, Good let's morning, start cooking. Joy. Good morning. Oh, my people. Hey, guys. So today is all about warming the bones with okay. healthy foods and beverages. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to make is, like you mentioned, a cozy, creamy corn chowder. And I'm telling you, this is scrumptiously slurpable. Mm. I'm going to take you over to my stove. Okay. So here um, I have what I'm calling my nutrition confetti. All I've done is I sauteed some carrots, celery, and onions. It mm -hmm. kind of looks like confetti, doesn't carrots, it? Celery, onions. Okay. okay. Um, and, and now we build the soup. It's as easy as that. Because corn is not in season, I'm taking advantage of canned corn actually for a few reasons. One is because I get to use it. You notice I didn't drain it. The juice, I, yeah. I'm using the flavorful broth that normally oh. we just discard. Mm -hmm. I'm putting two cans in there. Then I'm putting in a full um, four cups of either a vegetable broth or a chicken broth. What did and you use there? I would, I'm using, uh, this is a chicken broth, and I'm using a reduced sodium because I'm controlling mm -hmm. the salt. Okay. So there we have that. And then just a little bit of cayenne because it really does give it a pop of flavor. Okay. And then last, one pound of small red potatoes. I leave the skin on for extra fiber and um, I cut them up into bite-sized pieces right. because I'm gonna put a lid on this. I'm gonna simmer it for about 15 minutes just until those potatoes get fork tender. Okay. I'm gonna put this over here and then the fun begins. I want a lot of body in this soup, so I use an immersion blender, but you can also do this in um, small batches in either a food processor or that, a regular yeah. blender. Okay. And see what I'm doing there? I'm just yeah. blending it so they get a lot of richness and body within that soup. And if anybody doesn't have a blender right. or an immersion blender, you can leave it chunky. It's totally mm. okay. It's so good. now, yeah, it's really good. You could stop right there, but right. we're not going to stop. Oh, right? no, so then not. to finish it off, more texture. 
I'm mm-hmm. adding in drained corn. So this time it's two cans of drained mm-hmm. corn. Because I saw all these and, like, whole corn kernels in there. I was wondering when. Yes. And before I actually pureed the whole thing, mm-hmm. I like to reserve some of the potatoes, so again, get, for mm-hmm. a little bit of texture and mm-hmm. like surprises as you slurp through. That's really good. And yeah. a dash of salt. And it makes a great big batch. And I like to Very garnish simple. it with Isn't a little really bit terrific? of dill. It's really good, Joy. How about the tea, Joy? Yeah, we'll try that. that. The chai tea? This is fantastic. The chai tea. So here we go. I mm. put four cups of water in here. I love chai because my kitchen smells so unbelievably right now. It really infuses it with such aroma. And in the four cups of water, my combination is some cinnamon sticks, ginger, a little bit of nutmeg, fennel, peppercorns, oh. cloves, and cardamom. Okay. And I give you a recipe for a balanced base, but really you could ramp up any of these spices if you like a stronger flavor. And so a- as those were um, uh, simmering in here for about 15 minutes, then you put in your tea. So I have four tea bags that I added in. They've been in here for just about five minutes. Mm-hmm. Stick this over here. And now we build it. I add in three to four cups of a milk. Truth be told, I tried this with an almond milk and it came out a little bit too thin. So I'm yeah. using a 2% reduced fat. Okay. And maybe an oat a milk. Little I was going to ask you about oat milk. Yeah. Oat milk would be fabulous. And this is a little bit of vanilla and a little bit of honey. And then I'm going to bring mm. you over mm. to my finished product. Come back with me okay. over here. I'm and sure it smells good, here, yeah. You can't I oh, strain it through a colander, <laughs> and here's the cool part. I feel like if you're going to be putting in so much effort, because it's much more involved than just steeping regular tea, mm-hmm. I make a great big batch, and then I stash it in the fridge, and whenever a craving calls, I just warm it in the microwave, Very and you nice. have about seven cups. All right, Joy, well, thank you much. We're, we are ready for the weekend. I know, thank cozy, you. yummy, yummy, yummy. It. Thank you, Joy. Joy Bauer is upgrading our lunchtime with two, not one, but two tasty sandwiches that she makes in a skillet. Hey, good morning, Joy. Hey, hey Joy. Joy. Hey. Good morning, guys. I think I'm about to become your new favorite lunch lady because we are <laughs> seriously creating next level sandwiches. And like you said, in the skillet. So the first sandwich is a fun spin on a traditional and beloved PB&J, mm-hmm. but I'm calling this one a grilled PB and fruit. So here I have hearty, seedy, whole grain bread. We're actually making two because I want to show you the versatility of the fruit. Mm -hmm. And I just put a tablespoon of peanut butter on all of the slices. So you want this peanut butter going on the bottom slice and the top slice. And then you become the Picasso of your decor, right? So I have all this fruit over here. The cool thing is when you don't use sugary jam and you use the whole fruit, you're getting a lot of texture, you're getting a lot of hardiness, and you're getting the vitamins, the minerals, the antioxidants that the fruit brings to the table. Um, You could stick with one fruit. A lot of people just like PB and bananas, or you could do what I've done. And when you see the great over here, I did slice them in half. I just want to show you because mm-hmm. otherwise they would be they a little around. bit too bulky. 
Exactly. So then what you do, I'll show you on one, you take your top slice mm -hmm. and you put it over your Sammy and you take olive oil spray and give it a nice liberal spray okay. on both Instead sides. Instead of butter. Instead of butter, exactly. And this goes in the skillet just for one minute on either side. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because you can't believe how easy it is. Oh, wow. Jill, I feel like you is, could do this. You could do this <laughs> and Joy, by the way, the production values, camera's moving, you got an overhead camera. It's a, uh, uh, unbelievable. He's never coming back to the studio that, to bring us any of this food. That oh, Ian Bauer is, is a superstar husband and photographer. Yeah. <laughs> now, and I keep saying, like, he needs a, a, a like a, what, what would we call it, a, a COVID Emmy or something like that. He has learned how to do all of this. Well, I'm, for I'm Ian, sending for him sure. that. And I think you need an Emmy, too, because you're actually going to show us how to make a sandwich that I never thought you can make healthier, a Monte Cristo. Mm. Oh my goodness. This has so many layers of scrumptiousness. So what I'm starting with here, so these, this is whole grain bread also, but for mm. this one, because yeah, it has a French toast melt in your mouth feel, mm -hmm. you want a softer bread. So it's a whole grain softer bread. I put mm. Dijon mustard on one slice and let the layering begin. So we have here, I'm using ham because that's classic, but truth be told, you I don't to love ham. Out. <laughs> I had some extra here. Now, normally they top the French toast with some powdered sugar. So instead for a little sweet something, I put in a crisp Fuji apple. Mm. Then we have our Swiss cheese on top. Take the second oh, piece of bread, so but because we're melting. making French toast, we have here an egg mixed with a little bit of vanilla extract oh, whoa. and a dash of milk. That looks this really. And how long does that go into the, the griddle? Skillet, about four minutes, I'm gonna grab it. About four minutes on each side, and you cannot Beautiful. believe this that is just yummy. like a masterpiece. Let me see if I can get a close yeah, up. I wanna grab through the screen, that, Joy. That is fantastic, Joy. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And for you these recipes it. and more, head to today.com slash food. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is ripping up a barbecue salmon bowl Ooh. packed with flavor and nutrients. Good morning to you. Hey, Joy. Good morning, guys. So nice to see you. You too. too. Well, before we dig in here, can you talk about some good superfoods that all of us can incorporate um, into our diets? Definitely. So I put together a list of five superfoods. I mean, these are some of the best of the best foods that everyone should be eating, but I specifically designed this list for women. And the okay. first one is spinach. Spinach is basically nature's multivitamin. When I tell you it has countless, 
countless vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and fiber. But interestingly enough, it has a unique combination of two potent antioxidants called lutein and zeaxanthin that help to promote sharp vision. And also, it's a great source of plant-based iron, which helps us to maintain our energy levels. The next on the list is salmon. I mean, this tops every single list. It has a lot of high quality protein. It also has all the essential amino acids. So that means it helps us to maintain our muscle mass. And as we get older, it keeps our metabolism revved. But of course, salmon is world famous for its omega-3 fats. And omega-3 fats are super important because first, they tame inflammation in the body. They also support heart health. They help to drive down triglycerides and they manage blood pressure. But they also help to regulate your mood. And one other thing I'm gonna say about salmon, I could talk about salmon all day. But we don't, we don't have all day, Joyce. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta move on here. So how are we gonna start combining all these things? Well, three other foods we have are beans, we have for skin health, our tomatoes, and last but not least, I'm touting almonds. All almond, all nuts are winners, but almonds have the added bonus of calcium. So okay. I'm going to take all of these foods and we're going to turn it into kind of like a boss lady bowl. This is okay. a barbecue salmon bowl that has everything. While so you're throwing I this all together, Joy, I still want to know what you were going to say about salmon. <laughs> Salmon has vitamin D, and vitamin okay. D helps to keep our immune system strong. There you go. And okay. also helps with bones, healthy bones and teeth. So okay. here we have all of our spinach, and I chopped this spinach up because it works better in the bowl. Okay. And now we take our award-winning salmon. That salmon and this salmon is salmon little... delicious. Is it just salt and, and pepper this... on there? Salt and pepper and extra virgin olive oil, that's mm. it. And you mash it right up. It's the easiest thing. And you could do this with leftover salmon as well. So you already know that this bowl is packed with the good stuff. Now I'm adding in my beans. Before, what I was going to say about beans, they have a great combination of plant-based protein and fiber, which steadies your blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. Now we have our tomatoes. Tomatoes have lycopene and vitamin C, which protects our skin from the sun's harmful rays. This is just some extras because we want to make this bowl extra delicious. We've got some corn, Colorful super healthy. Too. Look at the um, the pop of color from the red onion. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, actually, I'm going to squeeze on a little bit of lime juice. Mm -hmm. And you could add a little bit of cumin or salt and pepper if you want. And here comes the barbecue sauce because this is a Wait, we're barbecue, allowed to have barbecue salmon sauce? bowl. You can, and there's a lot of great brands that are lower in sugar, but you're only using about two to three tablespoons. Okay. And this is instead of dressing. Now it's almost complete, but there was one last superfood that I touted and that the was almonds. the almonds. Mm. So I'm gonna add in mm. a sprinkle of almonds for some crunch. crunch. And I love, whoops, I love scallions. And guys, this is a sauce that was amazing. And that's one serving? It's no. <laughs> one serving. No, no it's it one is. serving. That's one and serving? And it's packed with oh, we thought you were just... and fiber. That's amazing. Yeah. No, guys. Wow. I'll fill you up for a I while. Mean, yeah. This is uh, really yeah. good stuff. Joy Bauer is here with two dinner recipes that, that Joy, they, we're just using one pan, right? One pan. It's Forget officially about all those bowls. She no, she pan <laughs> Superfood Friday. And again, it is, there's so much to love about these recipes because like you said, Craig, they're easy to make, they're packed with nutrition, and they're totally delicious. And we're starting with what I'm calling a sheet pan harissa salmon with vegetables. And step one is to roast those vegetables. So in the spirit of convenience, I'm using baby carrots. They're already cut and washed for you. And here, some cauliflower mm. florets, nice. a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and a little bit of salt and pepper and that's it now i'm gonna mix this up i preset the oven for 450 these are hearty vegetables and i'm gonna lay them out on my baking sheet in a single file and Joy, how do you make sure you don't burn the vegetables when you're roasting at such high heat so I definitely keep a watch on them, but for these, I put them in for about 25 minutes, and I like to make sure that the carrots are fork tender. Again, mm -hmm. they're hearty, so they take a little bit of a little bit in that oven on high mm -hmm. heat, and I like that cauliflower to get oh, charred and slightly so burnt good. on top. It's like melt in your mm -hmm. mouth. It makes you scream for another bite. Now, <laughs> while these are in the oven, we're going to do the magic sauce. So what happens here is, in a bowl, I mix... Harissa is a chili paste. It's from 
It's Middle Eastern and it's North African, and it has olive oil and a whole lot of warm, wonderful spices. I added some sweet citrus orange juice to sort of make it pop, and a little bit of ground ginger. Oh. And I just mix this up. And again, guys, this is while the veggies are roasting in the oven. Now you take your salmon fillets and upside down, if you do have the skin on, you just sort of dunk it in, submerge it in that bowl, and let them sit and marinate and soak up all the mm. yummy sauce while the veggies are in. Then when the veggies come out, you nestle the salmon nestle. slices, mm. uh, nestle, this in between delicious. the veggies. Right, and you want to make sure that they're touching the heated pan. So get all four of those fillets in. Whoops, I did that upside down, Joy. I was going to say, <laughs> wait, which way are we putting? All right, so skin side no. down. Skin side down, or you could also buy fillets that don't have the skin, whichever mm -hmm. you no. prefer. Oh, and then the remaining sauce goes on top. And then this goes back in the oven again on 450. Keep the heat going for just 10 minutes Ooh. and then you put some herbs on top and you got that yourself a party that's wow. all there is to it now you got a cheesy one it. for us right okay so now we're going to change directions guys we are making a sheet pan baked feta sausage and veggies i needed mm. to jump on this trend everybody's talking about the baked feta yes. now and this time I'm using very different vegetables. So these kind of scream summer. I have beautiful, vibrant tomatoes. I have sweet kernels of corn. I use canned corn. Mm -hmm. It works with frozen too. But corn. if you have fresh corn, of course. And we have some uh, zucchini, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. This time I'm adding in ground cumin and some crushed red pepper flakes, some lime slices, mm. and a little bit of salt. So this also will get all stirred up. It's gonna go on your baking sheet. This goes in the oven. These are a little bit more delicate, these vegetables. So the oven is set at 425 just for 20 minutes. Then you take it out and you're gonna put in pre-cooked sliced poultry sausage. Again, nestle it right in <laughs> with the vegetables. And then sticks of feta. You're gonna, mm. there, there goes my sausage. And there's all types of pre-cooked varieties at the market. Mm -hmm. And I buy the block feta cut it into strips. It never melts no. in the oven, but it sort of becomes softer and spreadable. Mm. And guys, I'm telling you, you take this out, you give it a squeeze with fresh lime juice oh, and fantastic. some herbs. And if you could get a bite with all three, the feta, the vegetables, and mm. the sausage, that you looks are amazing. Mm. Well, you know, Joy, halloumi so cheese we're... would be probably great with that, too. Mm. Wow, oh, that would be super. Oh, it's, a, it's a Greek grilling cheese. Oh. Okay. Joy, thank you. Joy, that was awesome. You thank you it. so much. Have a great weekend, Joy. Oh, I want all bye of bye, guys. Folks, for those recipes, it's very simple. Today.com slash food. Good pal today nutritionist joy bauer back with two easy delicious ways to dress up a simple piece of toast mm. Mm. happy new year everyone today i am toasting a healthier 2021 with two scrumptious spins on toast first an addictive chocolate peanut butter spread the secret ingredient is this 
peanut powder. And you can find this in uh, the grocery store or you could order it online. And it is packed with protein. Next, cocoa powder, which is filled with brain-boosting flavonoids, some sugar, and a pinch of salt. And then I'm going to add six to eight tablespoons of water. And this is going to mix together to create the creamiest, dreamiest chocolate peanut butter spread. Just keep stirring and look at this, guys. It transforms into a delicious, lick the spoon, addictive spread. And now we are ready to build our toast. Putting a nice, generous amount of my chocolate peanut butter spread right on the toast. I'm gonna top it with potassium packed bananas. And really, you could put whatever fruit you want on top. And of course, the bananas have potassium, they have fiber. And on this slice, I'm also gonna add some vitamin C rich strawberries for extra flavor and extra nutrition. And the best part, guys, there is so much chocolate peanut butter sauce left over for dipping. <laughs> and now for some savory satisfaction. Caprese toast. It's a classic combo that is completely customizable. And I'm starting with the bottom base of mashed avocado. And avocado is great because it's loaded with heart healthy fat, it's got potassium, and it's got a lot of fiber too. So I'm just mashing this down as our first layer. And you probably know what comes next. Lycopene-rich tomatoes. They also have vitamin C, which boosts the immune system. And I'm putting on mozzarella, which adds some calcium. And last but not least, just some torn basil leaves, which makes the kitchen smell so good. This is one layered tower of deliciousness. But one more thing. I like to drizzle on a balsamic glaze right over the top. And if you can't find balsamic glaze, you could also take regular balsamic vinegar and you can reduce it in a small saucepan over a low heat for about 10, 20 minutes and it will thicken right up. And that's what I call a toast to a healthy 2021. Mm. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today All Day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah. who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice yeah, things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do a weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, oh. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. There is new evidence this morning that the so-called Mediterranean diet, it can sharply reduce your chances of developing dementia, even if you have a genetic risk for it. NBC News medical contributor Dr. Natalie Azar here, is here to tell us about the new study and that could have us eating healthier. What encouraging news. Yeah. I mean, when anything can fight back against dementia and Alzheimer's, but this is a diet that a lot of people have been on or are on. Absolutely, Hoda. It is definitely another vote for the Mediterranean diet. So this study looked at over 60,000 individuals who were middle-aged um, and followed them for about nine years. Ooh. And there were close to 900 cases 